out of some fucked up shit that happened or because out of anger because of what it is they go into those behaviors at the end result that people are getting hurt and you have a disregard for people's feelings over yours whether it's because you cannot have those feelings or because you put in just uh, you put yourself in a position that i'm not supposed to have those feelings and you cut those off the intention is different absolutely you're right but the end result is the same. What do you mean when you say the end result? You mean like the person being hurt or the people the being pace, hurt? The person being hurt and also the uh, uh, what you in, are engaging in. The, 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 the things that you're engaging in are the same. The intentions are not the same. The reason why you're engaging in those actions are not the same. But the end result is you are engaging in that, right? Right, like, right. Let, 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 if I call you like a murderer, the reason why you murdered are going to be the intentions are going to be different right you're still going to be labeled a murderer if you murder out of self-defense or uh, you murder out no. just just go let me rephrase that the action is going to be the same right you murder the someone different, the label is yeah the label is different. and then it, it, it matters because the labor doesn't just infer intent mm -hmm. but also infers treatment that's so for why example I agree with everything that you just said in regards mm -hmm. to what the actions and the outcomes mm -hmm. are, but I think separating the labels is extremely important and uh -huh. not associating them is also extremely important uh -huh. because we treat them differently. Mm -hmm. If someone is sociopathic, then you want to give them a completely different different treatment method than if someone has just had some bad experiences and just needs some therapy or some good experiences to turn it around, mm -hmm. right? There's a difference between somebody who's fundamentally not born with certain circuits and someone who's been broken. And, and I'm so, going to go back to what I said. What I said was, and we could go back on the same for that, I said, got extra there's some here. sociopathic behaviors, right? It doesn't mean that it's necessarily the same, and there's some difference between a sociopath and that. And what is, is the same is the actions, not the intention. And oftentimes, the intention's going to... Go ahead. I want to ask you, what's your intention when you're... Um, Aligning the two. I'm actually curious. Like, what is the reason why you are saying like these are similar? They're similar because of the actions that are taken into, in, in order to do that. The disregard for the, the disregard for people's feeling and uh, the the lack of empathy for other people mm -hmm. is going to be the same. Now, the intention is going to be very different, and that's what's going to differ. That's going to what the, what's going to differ into the labeling. I think you misunderstand my question. My question is not like what is similar. Like, why are you making that? similarity why are you when we're looking at this behavior and saying this is bad this person is mistreating other people why are you drawing the parallel to sociopathy That's what because I'm when you whenever you have a label like that uh, 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 this um, a disorder like that you need to you need to scratch off many uh, labels in order to categorize someone as a, so, a sociopath right and you can have certain tendencies without being a sociopath but you have sociopathic tendencies her she does but i wouldn't necessarily label her that because i'm not a professional and i haven't done uh the 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 the, the proper mm -hmm. set to, 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 to label that so I'm, i could say that it's the same direction but it's not necessarily the same thing that's why i'm saying that what she's doing is as that but not necessarily that Let's say you have schizophrenic tendencies. It doesn't mean that you are that. No. You're going to do some things that are very similar to, but you cannot be labeled that. You're going to be something else. If we do more tests and everything and stuff, you're going to be labeled something else, <laughs> right? So there's something, whenever we talk about some, someone that is, um, what's the word? Someone that suffers so and everything and stuff. A, uh, narcissist? Yeah, narcissist. Some people are going to have narcissistic tendencies. Right, they're not. Nar being a narcissist is actually a thing. It's a, a mental thing, right? That you have, you have to have labels and stuff like that. And there's some. I, I was with you until you brought up narcissism. That I'm like, oh, I think I'm against you. Again. I was with you, and like you completely changed my mind. And then once you brought my, mind, I actually fucking hate it when people say this person has narcissistic tendencies. And the only reason I hate it is because I think it's created a culture in our society where people start attributing mental health things, even though it's not what the original person intended. People now start just saying narcissist. And, 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 and I, I agree. I, I actually agree with you with what you're saying. I just think as a result of using that kind of language, everybody just throws mental health and I, everywhere. I, I, and, so I, and now I'm super I, careful yeah, to ever say I, it I, or to actually give that. I, back to I, and I agree with you because yeah, yeah. people took that shit and oh, heard yeah. it somewhere oh, yeah. and they throw it like cheese yeah. out of fucking pizza factory. You in understand America. what I'm saying? And they just throw. He's a narcissist. He's not. But they don't really comprehend what it is to actually be narcissist. And that's what. And that's what I, I was trying to say. Yeah, I is get you. To, to be to actually be that it's an actual mental disorder, and, it's, and you have to check a lot of fucking lists before you're actually labeled that. And not if all my exes are narcissistic, only three percent of the world is. 
So you can't always be that, and you can't be, but you can have to help use that people dependency thing, and the reason why you trigger is people just fucking use that, and they fling it like kale in California. Like somebody's showing from like close parts, oh, this bitch is bipolar. No, she's just going through like a severe amount of depression, and it's fucking up her home. Like, so important, so happy that they start to mean nothing and they turn into fucking words to the What's bad about it is that when you deal with somebody who actually suffers from these diagnoses, yeah. you have a hard time acknowledging or accepting their reality yeah. and how severe it is. Because most people who are diagnosed and are actually like, treating it are very measured in their behavior, but they want to find good strategies to be able to make it all closer to But we're not creating a culture where people are like walking away from mental health or like shitting on the labels and I understand why you're shitting on it because everyone's just throwing that shit all like cheese but then again that is another discussion and not the discussion we're having now you're saying that I'm not right you said that you you lo I lost you no. because I come on, because I use that that's another discussion because people are using it what I was wanting to say is that people are going to have and, and I'm talking about if we're talking about medical terms I agree. In medical terms, yeah, but but I do agree that people just. I think we just have to stop shit. using those words unless it's actually. You know why? You know what? Because motherfuckers want to know that they know what it is. Oh, this is that. It is that. They want to be able to pinpoint what things are. Really I quickly. agree with everything you said. I just disagree with you using it. That's all. I actually agree. Everything you said made perfect and sense. You know what the thing and I is, just, I, I, I don't I'm not the. I don't, I, don't know, I don't even disagree with you using it. I think you used it correctly. Yeah, no, I'm not the one that's wrong. It means it's not me. Yeah, it's the bitches that hurt you. Huh? <laughs> The fuck? I just, <laughs> it's not. It's the bitches that call you narcissistic. It's not me. It's not me. Don't put this shit on me. Hey, 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 you know what? You nailed that shit. You nailed that shit. <laughs> you get that. <laughs> I've been hurt. It's not me. It's the bitches that call you that Bro, without a reason. You know crazy Fucking drunk. No, 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 I'm traumatized. I'm talking about that, okay? Because they hurt me, okay? And this is always going to be his pet peeve. You know, you go through life. And you try to be a good motherfucking person. You try to do right by people. Tell me how to take this girl out. I said, listen, I make a meal. Just a meal. You know what I'm saying? Let me cook for you. It's first date. Hey, there was a conversation. Hey, what happened? Five. All right, I made her a nice meal. Mm -hmm. yeah, what I cooked up some fish. Fish. Had some horseradish. Mm -hmm. Had some good side dishes. Horseradish. Okay, it was nice. Fancy. I like cooking for us. It's fun for me. I enjoy it. She hit me up right last minute. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm cooking that. Why don't you come by with me? We have a conversation. She leaves. We don't sit together. We don't make out nothing. It was just a cool conversation. Afterwards, I text her. I'm like, hey, it was cool. But I was like, you know, this is a couple days after I text her. I'm like, hey, it was cool, but I don't think I ever made it because I want to be bald. And what happened? This girl called me a fuckboy, a narcissist, or whatever. I'm like, why? Because you made me fish dinner. Come on. Yeah, who would do that and then just walk away like that? Enemy heavy spotted. It's like, yo, I would understand if I like snatched and just threw her to the curb or something. Or I, that's it. If you didn't get your way, so I'm like I'm mentally deficient. Hey, hold it. I say, hey, you know what? Have a good day. Sorry to work out. I left that down. We haven't spoken. It's cool, but it's just, it just it peeves me that we couldn't just leave things happen. I think, I think for her, she just got her hopes up. Enemy off. medic spotted. Bro, you need to chill. Just because I was Enemy like, infiltrator spotted. I did the very minute. Hey. Just because in your hands, you may feel you like nothing. That ain't my responsibility. Ah. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be honest. I've got ammo for you. Trigger that, but that's a good. All right. Come down there. Let me know. The little things I'm like. Give it your all. You said that? Protect. I'm getting things like that. You said I don't like your shoes. Why are you cursing my mouth? I don't like your shoes. <laughs> uh, All these eyes on hostile light assault troopers. Okay. Um, yeah, when I watched this video first, it was just stunned. Spotted hostile infiltrator. Spotted a hostile infiltrator. I'll get you fixed up. Enemy medic spotted. Enemy light assault area. Enemy Max. Enemy Max. You gotta be a different kind of brother to be a sister. You gotta be a different kind of brother to be a sister. A stripper. Fresh, is that you? Is that you, Fresh?
<laughs> Yo, so listen. God damn, bro. Hey, hey listen, we're gonna play this clip so they ever catch you. Yeah! They're gonna think that shit all out of context and fucking play your ass. Let's go, you gotta stick with the time. <laughs> You were the one burning. You were the one burning. Let me heal you. I'll get you fixed up. Enemy medic spotted. Take some ammunition. Scratch one enemy soldier. Visual on a hostile light assault troop. She should do all the car shit. And if she didn't do all the car shit, that would be insane. That would be stupid. And if the only reason that you she doesn't do the car shit, for example, which I think she said that she does. If the only reason that she didn't do the car shit was because the guy was like, well, I'm the man, so I must do this role. That's stupid. That's stupid. That's just your pride and your fifis getting away. The By the way, that's me crazy. And when you get into a relationship, I think what's mine is yours and what's yours is mine. Maybe I'm wrong, but there's one pot now. Sorry, that one was boiling for a Red while. Red fails the Lucas for tea. The Lucas? Ah. No? Mm -hmm. We were all just as... Oh, yeah, that, that's it. When I first heard this conversation, I was always confused because I'm like, don't you guys have a joint bank account? Doesn't it go into one? Well, that would be ideal, right? Yeah, that's what yeah. I would think. That's right. But apparently people have joint and then they have their yeah, own little... Yeah, that's what I found out later, but like, mm -hmm. growing up, everyone I knew always just had a joint bank account. But does that mean you've got one foot out the door then? Uh, Lucas Rich Deep Bank for the Amer uh, American economist Robert Lucas work on macroeconomic policy making argues that it is naive to try to predict the effects of a change in economic policy entirely on the basis of relationships of various sort of Oh, you're basically saying follow the principle model. Yeah. That you like be, have a principle that guides you and then be re reactive to the situations that emerge. And if you don't, right, this is why, for example, Nick will uh, Nick gets super butt mad when companies try to be proactive with social engineering. Right? There's a good principle to have. The principle of my super ego community is to foster healthy community that isn't toxic as fuck, but also isn't baby shit. That is the sheer goal of everything. I want deep, healthy, real relationships, and I am not going to enable people. And I'm also not going to allow people to be nasty trolls. We don't do that shit. Anti-social. Oh, All of the area. policies and Watch rules that you back. generate are mostly reactive. It's one. like situations emerge in the community and we go, okay, this is toxic in a way that we didn't expect. How do we want to manage it? That if we just tried to preemptively plan for, would be awful. And most people try to come up with preemptive rules beforehand. Like, this is the way it should be done. And it's like, who the fuck knows what your situation, your economy, and your relationship's gonna hold, right? You might have your relationship perfectly worked out before you get married, and then your significant other gets in a really bad car crash, and now they're a paraplegic. Everything has to change. Are you just gonna say he's not a man anymore because he can't do like mowing the lawn or be the major breadwinner? Of course not. You just have to shift the dynamic. In that case, probably he's gonna be responsible for a lot more of the domestic economy and he's probably gonna be doing a lot of emotional investing after a while, right? Supporting the woman and kind of fulfilling like a bit of a support role in her career. That's based, that's completely fine. 
Well, I'm wondering, do? in those relationships where you have the joint but you also got your little side monies, mm-hmm. are it's, you really kind of fully inv- yeah. Yeah. Are you fully mm-hmm. invested in your relationship yeah. or is that your money for a rainy day? Yeah. Like, for example, I've been told you have the joint for all your main bills, but then I have my... That's not actually what the red pill content says, misrepresenting this way. This, this is what the red pill content says. Like, I know, I've debated tons of red pill content creators now. This is what they are saying. If you're getting a different, like, version of it for yourself that's more practical, based. I am glad that when you listen to the red pill, you pull away the principle and not the law. That's good for you, Pete. That's based. But I have debated these people. I've debated, like, fresh and fit. I have debated some of the largest content creators in the red pill. This is what they are saying. This is what they are saying. I need to do my hair, to do my nails, to do my, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But why can't I take that from the main part? Mm-hmm. But I guess you, just, you just like pay bills, pay, pay each other. That's what I do. Like, like I tend to pay a little bit more rent because I order my. Do you think we, as a society, want to get to the point where it's 50 50 men and women both being bread porters? I, no, I would say no. Like, how arbitrary? Why 50 50? Why? What if my husband is four times better of a parent than I am? Then, in that way, probably, since we have a fair bit of financial stuff, if I'm really good at making money and he's an incredible parent, probably. 80% potentially of the parenting should maybe be done by him and 20% done by me while I invest maybe 80% of my energy into making income because that's what I'm really good at. It shouldn't really be 50-50. It shouldn't be like these pre-arbitrated numbers. It should be couples should aim to maximize strengths and minimize weaknesses and negotiate what that looks like in their relationship. That's what they should do. Nick does almost all of the cooking unless I'm feeling inspired, like I cooked the curry, right? But Nick does 90% of the cooking, right? I do most of the cleaning in the house. I do a lot of it. Uh, this facility now belongs to the NC. That just works for us. He's a really, really good cook. And I have a higher standard of cleanliness that I like to maintain. And if I'm not the one cleaning, right, I'll be asking him. If he can't cook that day, that's fine. I'll step in and help out, right? We're a team. We're a team. And we want to tackle this world together. Partner, mm-hmm. so she'll just send me like I think our rent's like five grand. She'll send me like one or two thousand dollars, depending on what our agreement is, and then we'll just pay rent like that. And then everybody gets their own money and they do their own thing. Mm-hmm. But if you want to do like a vacation or a special thing, then depending on who's got the most money, who earns more. Again, it's, it should be a team. You, like that's you want to do things together. So like, that's what I would think. Like, wasn't it? But why wouldn't you just have one bank account? If the, problem, the problem with one bank account is we have to be really careful about mm-hmm. is it's easy to lose track of spending, and the last thing you want is for money to oh, get in the way. It's easier to track it. Yeah, well, it's, it's just like it's a thing where like nobody might mean anything bad, but maybe oh, maybe. Ellie, Ellie, you're here. I'm not gonna ask you publicly right now, but at some point, oh can I ask you questions about your friend Pearl? Cause I just, I, I can't with this girl anymore. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, but I know that she's your friend and I have enough like appreciation for you that I I need to find a way to see her complexly because I, I'm struggling, Ali. I am struggling, okay? Be, I'll, I'll be certain I'll say the woman. Maybe the woman loses track of how much like hair, nails, many But not right now. I'm not asking you to comment things, like, publicly. What the hell? I'm missing like you know five hundred dollars. Like mm-hmm. what's going on here? And the woman's not even thinking like, oh, I'm spending all this money. She's like, oh, I got you know this material spending. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's the thing you gotta be careful of. I, I think joint bank accounts can work. You gotta be really, really careful tracking like the spending so somebody doesn't like build resentment. Mm-hmm. 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 You, might, you might as well just not do it. You think? I, I mean, I, <laughs> I don't think I should. I just think it sounds like too much of a cluster. Yeah. You wouldn't do it in your relationship? No. Really? Why not? Because of what you just said. I don't want that confusion, man. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, my my balance just decreasing because of hair, nails, bags, like collective balance decreasing. Huh? It's the collective balance. Decreasing. Nah, but like it still doesn't work. I just think it's confusion. We have to keep receipts, track of everything. Like, nah. I don't know. This is weird to me. So Nick and I, as far as we have separate bank accounts, it, it and all the, our money is our money. So Nick will be like, hey, can you send me like a thousand dollars? I need to pay rent. I'll just send him like a thousand bucks. Uh, I regularly let him. Nick does most of the financial stuff. He always pretty much knows what I have in my bank account. He does most of like the bills and stuff like that. Whereas like I, I make a large portion of the income right now. Uh, I don't know if I'm making more than that. It depends on the month. <laughs> Um, right, but like it's our money, right? When we talk about like him going skiing, I don't expect him to pay by himself. Like if he's like down two hundred dollars, but he wants to go skiing, like with his friends, just give him two hundred. It's our money. It's not my two hundred dollars. I'm just, of course, like of course, just like if like I wanted to go do some sort of event with my friends and I was down a little bit, he would send me like the money that I needed. Um, I don't know. I think I don't know what to think about the way couples do with their money, and it's such a like tenuous topic that I don't. I don't know a complex way to give advice because people are so cagey about money. I just find it really strange, but also like Nick and I have a really different relationship with money. Like neither of us care at all about money. We want enough to survive on. Enemy vehicle we think money spot. is valuable, obviously, as far as like living. But beyond that, like money's just money. I don't. I don't want to lose my entire relationship over money. That seems really silly to me. If he's being irresponsible with money, or I am, we'll just have a conversation about it. Like we're a team. 
I think if, if both parties are making a lot of money, I think it's okay because you guys are rich or whatever. Yeah, but when yeah, you're yeah. like paycheck, yeah. man, if, if you're like, you know, three or four days out from payday and your account is broke and you want to go out and get, you know, just like some kind of food and then you go and check in the last four charges where something your girl did, yeah. you're, I don't care what kind of man you are, you're going to be pissed <laughs> off. Even, like, even if you spend more, you're going to be pissed off because you're going to see, like, oh, it's going to be tense. Yeah. It's going to be tense. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's not because of like, this is like, this is destiny rich person thing. Nick and I are like mostly paycheck to paycheck. We live really, really tight. To be honest, I'd be annoyed with Nick, but not because he spent my money. I'd be annoyed because I'm like, that was a really unwise purchase when we're tight. And the way, by the way, Nick and I navigate money when we're tight by just talking about everything. I'm like, hey, I need to make this purchase. It's $80. Are you okay with that? And he'll just let me know if we're okay with that. He'll do the same with me. Be like, hey, I'm going to make these purchases. It's so-and-so. Are you comfortable with that? And I'll just like let him know um i feel like so much of this is like e like i don't know maybe nick and i just like lucked into like a really easy system between us um but it's just like never really been a struggle for us and we've lived paycheck to paycheck most of our marriage um oh, no. this feels like this feels like destiny giving like rich privilege it's like it's so easy when you're rich and i'm like i'm sure it is but also like it's i don't know if it's as complicated when you're poor the issue is that it's more stressful right so like there's more emotions imbued into it you know if you're rich and your wife spends like too much money on nails it's fine the facility have money, is secure. Right? if you're poor it's a bigger deal but that's because of the stressor like the negotiation itself is actually kind of the same in my view at least so down. who do you guys think benefited more from the women's sexual liberation movement or the sexual liberation movement ryan did get back to i would say men men and it's annoying because in any scenario men still always benefit even before women <laughs> got their sexual liberation men still benefited now they've got their sexual liberation men are still benefiting why do you think so i mean why do, why do you think men benefit i'm just curious the reason i think men benefit is because now men don't have to do a lot now to get sex so literally go on a dating app a woman's coming even now women don't even get their ears paid anymore but like, i'll drive to you because i need some d now what is, what is done now is creating unrealistic expectations for relationships so now as a woman you want a man to wine and dine you and six to nine you <laughs> <laughs> but i feel like now it's like Any men don't need spot. to do that anymore because you can just get sex somewhere else is that because so, i'm liberated or because the, the traditional values uh, i think liberation in the promiscuity manner that's right. what I'm, I'm speaking upon obviously I, like I'm, i would say to, a, to an extent i'm sexually liberated because trader. of the fact that I, I feel like I can have sex with whoever I want, but this is a person that I want to be with. It's not just somebody that I saw on the street and because he's fine, mm -hmm. I'm gonna let him put something inside me. No, it's because I respect this man. I want to see a future with him. You know, it's somebody I actually see myself with. But I think a lot of women now, it's just, I'm horny. You know what? Let me give it to any man. And I feel like that is cheap. Give it to just any man, bruv. A lot of women oh, do. Sorry, I'm bruv. I, I apologize. Right, bruv. You can't hurt me. You can't hurt me now. Sorry. How many bodies have you done? Because I'll watch my back now because I called you, bruv. Do you know what I mean? But I think, like, a lot of times, like, you're saying, yeah, you're liberated and, and all this, but it's not, like, women are not just going around throwing it to just any guy out there because there's loads of guys that are not getting any box. And you don't always forget that every single time no, we have these I conversations. Hate this point. I don't no, but it's true. No, no, you don't no, even no. register those guys. Because, yeah, we yeah, always quote the 40% of men that are not getting sex, right? Yeah, you don't if care about you are it. in that category, I'm really sorry, but society already mm. helps you. Like, men, <laughs> you can get sex what? on a palata. You can get a prostitute. <laughs> Do you know, actually, what okay. people never actually say, they say 40% of men oh, report to not be having sex. Mm. But what they don't... Oh, are we going to stumble into the... Uh, sex is not just about sex because if you just wanted sex, you could get a prostitute. Uh, you could go for some, like, extremely unattractive girl report is they're not not having sex because of women it's mm. because they don't feel confident in themselves mm -hmm. so actually yeah. i actually saw the report it was saying things like i've had a lot of they report things like i've had a lot of chances but because i didn't feel like i was going to mm. do it right and they said the reason that they feel this insecurity is because of social media and you know in All social media is really because if i have a small willy then i'm not taking it out but yeah, i feel like yeah. even if you want to talk can i just wait 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 small penises yes that's what I'm trying to understand yeah. what you're saying. Just be confident. These guys them. have women that are yeah. down. They're ready to sleep with yeah. them. Okay, okay, wait. So these 40 percent. Let me just. I, yeah. I just want to make this sure. This is what all. they said. Okay, okay. I read the you're, you're telling me these 40 percent of men have guys or girls, girls, not guys, girls, ready to sleep with them, and they're just saying, you know what? I don't feel good about myself. I'm not going to. No. No, I'm not saying what, so many women want to have sex with them. Okay. I'm saying these same men reported that they've been in situations where they could have had sex, uh -huh. but they didn't feel confident in themselves okay. to say, you know what? I can do this. Right. But and you know where they. Yeah, but it might be a self-report cap. Like, it might just be guys being like, I mean, I might be a virgin, but I could not be. Right? Like, I don't know. I don't know how true that is based on, like, the numbers. I'd have to see the report. I'd be super curious to know um, how they did the self-reports to see if, like, it seems like it bears any, like, actual, like, <laughs> real utility. But I don't know about all this. Security actually comes from other men. Men go out talking about their game. Okay. Oh, I've got this. You know, I can pull any girl. It makes other men actually feel insecure in themselves. When actually, in reality, women will have sex with any man as long as you fulfill her needs. It doesn't have to be sexual. No. It can be emotional need. It can Speak be for no. yourself. I, I personally want it. No. I don't have sex with any man. No shot. You can no, per find personally me. any man. There's so many men that would like, even me growing up, that absolutely like 
met me at a social meet, we were great friends. There's no shot I would have had sex with them. No shot. Get oh, come on. No, but, no, but if, this guy, if this guy made you feel like a queen, he made I'm you... sorry, I'm a tall girl. I'm a tall girl. I'm, I'm six foot, right? Uh, it doesn't matter how good a 5'5 five, five guy makes me feel. It's oh, not. It's not. Oh, 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 you guys heard it first. Pearl is a, Pearl is a height queen. Okay, I'm oh, sorry. No. I'm not trying to look at it. It's just true. If I was shorter, it'd be different. But I'm tall. Like, but that's cute. You could just like... I know. Just, just pick it up. Okay, you guys can do that. That's fine. I'm not... But the thing is... Are you single? Are you single? Yeah. Then what input do you have on any of those? What do you... Isn't one of your big rows that like women have standards that are too high and then I've been really blah, 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 blah? Now you're looking for a guy that's what? 6'1 at least? No, 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 Look at, look at, look at. Five, five? Destiny, five, five. No, Come on. Five, 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 that's five, that's, that's like, what I said. That's like 50 standard deviations. That's what I said. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry, you can wait, cut wait, us wait, off. Boy, bro. Boy, bro. Boy, bro. I think you need to be careful. Okay. Five, five. That's what I said. I said no guy that is five, five. Sorry. I know. You do this thing. You do this thing when people are talking. We're supposed to speak about everybody. But then every time you give an example, you go to like the eighth standard deviation away from the norm. Yeah. How many guys are five, five? It's like less than one percent of men, okay? Yeah, look at it. Five, seven, you know. I like my show king. What? What was that response? Yeah, it's true. Five seven. So you think you think? <laughs> think about the to, go back, to, go, to go back to the question. To go back to the question. <laughs> to go back to the question. You think it benefited men? What do you think, Destiny? Uh, I think there's pros and cons to everybody. That's gonna be the same for everything. It's nice for women because women can have more sex without necessarily getting pregnant and having kids. Women have a little bit more independence, so they can explore sexually without being tied down to one man that they have to marry. For men, there is more availability of sex. I know there was that one forty percent number, but I think that was uh, quoted. I want to say in twenty twenty one. It was like uh, when the pandemic was crazy and everything. I think that fell. I don't know what it fell to. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, like sex is more available now than it was in the past for most people. Which is, uh, but there's pros and cons, right? There's gonna be more competition for sex. There's gonna be more competition for relationships. Back 30, 40, 50 years ago, all a man had to do was work a job, and he's basically like guaranteed a yeah. wife because women couldn't work. Um, yeah, I think it's important to recognize our pros and cons to everything. We also don't know, like, what was the rate back in the 1960s of, like, young men under the age of 20 who were sexless? I'm going to guess it was higher. I, can we even find that stat? Hold on. Let's see. Um, I doubt it. 1960s rate of virginity among men. Back in the good old days. Do we have it? J store. What do we got here? Ba -ba 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 -ba. One of the most interesting studies of the decade involved an ethical approach to an evaluation of premarital sex. The study resulted in the perception. Blah, 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 blah. Strides forward. Blah, blah, blah. What are these images? Let's see if there's any. There's some graphs here. Young men driving to meet women in sex. Share of women to meet the same. So 18 to 30 to 40, no sex in the past. This is still post sexual revolution. I really want to see. Then 75% of Americans thought that premarital sex was acceptable. A threefold increase in the 1950s. In 1971, 35% said that they thought that marriage was obsolete. Swingers clubs, blah, blah, blah. Do we don't even know. We didn't even know how, how much sex. Like, were men just getting married and having sex? Were they just dying? We don't even know. She doesn't even know! Can I point something out? A lot of the time you guys talk about this 80-20 ratio, um, where like, women are all gunning for the same men, and like, those studies that you um, reference, they're all based on dating apps, like OkCupid, 
and Tinder. Spotted and I just want to say, like, dating in the real world mm -hmm. is far in different to our choice on Tinder. Like, uh, there could be a perfect man on uh, Hinge, and I would see lives in Dagenham. Nah, 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 nah. nah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. That is true. That's that's true. That's that's true. Like, uh, that is true. I'm crazy. On, I'm crazy on him as because we're yeah. looking for everyone. But if someone is in front of me that that I get along with and I can learn to yeah. love, yeah. then all this nonsense of marketization and all this politics, yourself, it's absolutely. It's the point. The point is, the point is, we swipe around dating apps what five percent of the time. What do you mean? Yeah, but that's wait, wait, wait. So, so even if we we triple it, quadruple it, that's still only twenty percent. We we can double it, make it forty percent. It's five to one, men to women on these apps. Of course, women are going to be highly selective. Highly. Women are highly selective in real life as well. Absolutely. Not. not as much as men. Oh if you not as much as men. No, 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 no. Can I ask you a question? Do you, do you think men, who's pickier, men or women? When it comes to what? When it comes to for relationships. For relationships? Yeah, let's say, let's I think men, men tend to gatekeep relationships more. For sex, women yeah. tend to gatekeep yeah. sex do you think, more. You think men are equally... It's true. Picky. When it comes to relationships or sex? It, let's say relationships. Well, it's important because you guys mix them up a lot. I'm not mixing them up. I'm not mixing them up. Sure, okay. For relationships, I think men can gatekeep more than women do. No, I'm asking if you think they're equally picky with the women that they want to be in relationships with as women are to men. Um... Are men as so, picky so as were, women? So, so, so for you, if no, I would say no. Men are not as picky as women, but they do gatekeep more. That's what I would say. I don't know what he's gonna say. If you were gonna, if you were gonna, I mean, you're already married, right? And I'm, I'm looking for a husband, and you're looking for a wife. Who's pickier, typically? By and large, I'm not, not like I'm just using. I, I think it's, example. I think it's, I think it's roughly equal. Really? That's yes. so interesting. Wow. I don't know if that's true. I definitely think women are going to be a little bit more picky, even for relationships. Um, but I would agree that men are gatekeeping relationships more. Absolutely, right? A lot of women, um, a lot of women uh, settle for casual sexual relationships with hopes that they're like basically like my pussy be so good that he wants to be with me, right? Like a lot of women settle for the casualness because they know that they probably won't get a guy to commit long term, right? To the point now where it's it's so social norm that you don't commit to a long-term relationship, that for women, it's become a point that if a guy agrees to a long-term relationship too early, that's a flag in and of itself, which is like crazy how much the like the zeitgeist around this has changed. Um, but I would say definitely women are more picky as far as like who they get into a relationship with, um, but men are absolutely the ones, for the most part, keeping the relationship from shifting from casual to like uh, monogamous or like at least committed. It's interesting, but the reason why is because you guys get all your information from dating, from dating apps where the numbers are super skewed. Yeah. But if you go into any school, all the boys are dating all the girls. If you go into any workplace, <laughs> yeah. if you go into, any, true, workplace, if you go into wow. any workplace, all the boys are dating all the girls. Yeah. When there are environments where men and women are together, Ooh. look at the YouTube world and Every YouTuber is fucking every YouTuber. YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Well, the reality is that most people aren't dating. If you actually go into high school, probably like 10% of people are even dating. It's very rare that they're dating. If anything, they're like hooking up and flirting around and having like these light flirtatious relationships. They might be kissing at parties, but they're not dating usually. Like dating and even in high school, even if you go into like a coworker or like a work site and you got a bunch of men and women, yes, they're gonna fuck. But still, it's probably not most of them. Most people are just going to bust. This is why you like, you'll have like shows like um, Love Island or a bunch of like dating shows where you put a whole bunch of hot, attractive singles together. The people who actually end up in like a long-term relationship, like any semblance of a relationship, even on the show itself, is decently low. They'll kind of arbitrarily force themselves into a relationship. They'll be like, yeah, this is like my guy. But you can tell by their dynamic. Like there's no way that they're really that loyal to each other. They definitely don't care. They're not really that interested. It's just like on the sake of a dating show, you don't want to be like that one fuck who's like single by the end, right? Um, even in dating shows, the number of couples who actually are successful after a dating show, and I know you might be like, that's a skewed perspective because it's a dating show. You're right. But at least they're going into it with the intention of trying to find somebody, right? So if they're coming out and like, w like literally it'll be like one couple per season, maybe two that work out. Love is Blind is a great example of this. Literally everyone's going into the show to find a marriage partner, like a long-term partner. Number of them will couple up. How many of them actually get to the like saying yes on Love is Blind? Because in Love is Blind, if you don't know, they're in pods. They don't meet each other until they propose. Then they propose, they meet in person. And then they have to make it to their vows like 90 days later or something like that. Most of the couples say no at the vows. Very few make it past the vows and very few make it past like a year, right? Very, like most people just aren't coupling up. They're just not, right? To actually find a long-term committed partner is fucking hard. And here's the crazy shit, okay? This is the advice that I was given when I was super young. That was the only good advice I ever got about relationships was 
you are going to feel like it's never going to happen until it does. And then when it does, it's going to go so fast, right? Your entire world will change in like four months and you'll forget what it was even kind of like to be single. You're like, isn't it weird that five months ago I was like, I'm gonna be single forever. And then you just meet somebody and then it's just different. This is typically how relationships go. Uh, Alex, you're getting timed out. You're annoying me today. You're just being nasty for no reason. Take a break. Sit in the timeout chair. Oh, the problem is you guys are only looking at like, well, look at Tinder where it's five men for no, one woman. I would actually agree on college campus. Alexi, you're, you're the motherfucker who's fucking mean to everyone. Constantly. Very insensitive towards other people's like needs and wants. You're like mocking people openly. And then you like wonder why you're lonely. Make it make sense, bro. Make one plus one equal three. I don't know how you're doing it. Drives me crazy. Sure. I, I, I appreciate you, Alex. I'm glad that you're in the community, but fucking hell. Chill on being a toxic test spawn sometimes, okay? I would say it's similar on college campuses. There's like a select group of men that tend to do very well. No, hold on. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. Wait, you, okay, mm -hmm. what you just said is a highlight of why I think you're not either engaging okay. well. No, 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 wait, because you said men do very well. No, no, wait, 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 can I just, I said a select group of men. You said a select so group of men. So for example, like athletes. No. Okay. One athlete is not dating five women, a select mm -hmm. group of men. Mm -hmm. They might have sex, but that's why I say it's important to distinguish right. sex between sure. relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, an elite group of men can f a lot of women. See, whenever Pearl gets like w backed into a corner, she goes, mm-hmm, 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 yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would say it's similar on college campuses. There's like a select group of men that tend to do very well. No, hold on. Yeah. Wait, no, no, no. Wait, you, okay, mm -hmm. what you just said is a highlight of why I think you're not either mm -hmm. engaging okay. well. No, 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 wait, because you said men do very well. No, no, uh, wait, wait, no, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, can I just, I said a select group of men. You said a select group of men. So for example, like athletes. No. Okay. One athlete is not dating five women, a select mm -hmm. group of men. Mm -hmm. They might have sex, but that's why I say it's important to distinguish right. sex between sure. relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, an elite group of men can f a lot of women, sure. Mm -hmm. An elite group of women can, can, I, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Can I ask you a question? Like, okay, I'm not, I'm not saying in terms <laughs> They just won't let them speak. Relationships. I'm saying in the initial encounters where men come together with women, we're not even talking about relationships now. Yeah, YouTube will just sometimes just like dump into this live chat really quickly all at once. There we go! <laughs> We just th that initial moment when they meet, who's usually going to be more pickier? Who's who's going to be more willing to like settle with whatever comes their way, whatever you know they catch that night or what whoever they meet in, in their real life? Yeah, who's going to be settle. more who's going to be more picky? picky Men for or sex? Or no, no, sex. No, I think no, no, no. Listen, listen, listen. Before the sex or the relationship has come, yeah, you first have to meet that person, and you subconsciously you know in your mind, not even subconsciously, you know in your mind if I would sleep with that person or I would give them a. Yes, women are going to be more picky as well as well, like who they're even willing to have sex with. Yes. Absolutely. Which is why if she's willing to have sex with you, she's probably also willing to date you because they kind of are using the same gamut. Now, I think that that's a really bad strategy by women where they will say the guy I'm willing to have short term sex with is also the guy I want to date. The problem is he don't want to date you. He's got two different strategies going on. Most men are interested and open to lots of casual sex and it doesn't mean that much to them and they're definitely not going to commit. And then when they're looking for basically like somebody that they're going to like wife up or commit to, it's often a bit of a different standard that they're holding to, right? Because men are just like, in general, you guys are just like horny sluts. You just want to fuck everything that moves and stick your dick in all the holes, okay? Chance. You already know that in your mind when you look at them, bro. Like, so what I'm saying, to, oh, sorry, I shouldn't have called you, bro. You can call me yeah. right <laughs> But what I'm saying is that in, in that initial moment when you first- This poor guy, he's like so gaslighted. He's like, okay, apparently bro is offensive here, so I gotta be careful. <laughs> Let's come into contact with the, the opposite sex here. Who is usually more picky? Is it going to be men or women? That's what I'm yeah, asking. When you're I'm not asking the rela sure. relationship down the road. Sure. When you think of sex, men are going to be less picky than women, of course. Men will fuck in almost anything. Yeah. yeah, of course. Okay. You, don't, you don't think that's where it starts, like wanting to sleep? Well, that's where it kind of starts, with, yeah. Wanting to sleep with the person. You don't think? No, because you, as you... I don't understand how Pearl can say this and then in the next breath say things like sex means less to men. That's why open relation, ones that are open relationships are different. That's why it's different for men because they can have sex and have it not be meaningful. And then... And then they'll say shit like this. Well, how the fuck do you hold these two worldviews together? Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm together. saying is that in, in that initial moment, when you first come into contact with the, the opposite sex, yeah, who is usually more picky? Is it going to be men or women? That's what I'm yeah, asking. When you're I'm not asking the rela sure. relationship down the road. Sure. When you think of sex, men are going to be less picky than women, of course. Men will fuck almost anything. Yeah. yeah, of course. You, okay. don't, you don't think that's where it starts, like wanting to sleep? But that's where it kind of starts, with, yeah. Wanting to sleep with the person. You don't think that's where it starts? The no! Not for men! Obviously! That's what you think! You think it's different! You think what men are willing to have sex with and what men are willing to, like, marry are different! Which, to be honest, is true! For the most part! Not for all men, obviously. Caveats. But it's just true! 
because from no, why you guys don't no, 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 no. Sorry, can I just um, say something? So in terms of sex and relationship, it's so different because men it, they would pick anyone to to have sex with because men just have a high sex drive. Mm. But when it comes to relationship, I believe men are a lot more picky. They'll say they don't want a, a woman that has too much body count. They don't want a woman, a woman with kids. Uh, a woman with kids. No, no, There's I, so I'm much standards that women have to. Women, the standard that we set for ourselves is literally: Does he treat me well? Is he gonna be? Like even the fact that Pearl is trying to like teach women how to be like a wife. Like I'm glad that she's partnering up with at least Ali about this because at least Ali is a wife. Like it's like, okay, I'm not saying you must experience something to be informed. This is why when people are like, well, what do you know about parenting? Are you a parent? And I'm like, she I don't care. There's critical. so much science on parenting. I, I don't give a fuck that you're a parent. Your experience doesn't make you an expert on it, right? So there are people who are in relationships who by no means should you ever take relationship advice. Because even if it's worked out for them, they haven't really thought about why it works out, right? The issue with Pearl is like, if you're talking about like how to be a good wife, how to like partner up, where, where, where's the guy Shield that you're attracting? Where's this Critical. high value male? Like, where is it? I don't get it. Be a good father. Yeah, but Does before you get- And she doesn't have, like, you can have world views and critiques on relationships and not be in a relationship. But in this worldview specifically, we're going to make fun of women for talking about, like, dating advice when you don't know anything. I just, and, like, talk about, like, low-value women and, and, like, what men want. It's like, is it working out for you? Because, like, why would I ever take advice from somebody who it seems to not be working out very successfully for? Get to that point, there's a there's a yes or no. Before you get Generate to that point, of, I would like to get in a relationship with this guy. You already that guy would have to qualify some requirements, some pref and Just to be clear, I hope she does find a great relationship. I hope Pearl finds a great guy that she connects with, she has a really good relationship, and that she's happy for the rest of her life. That's what I hope for for her. Obviously, I just, I just, I don't know how she's gonna like say Shield any shit about women. Critical. I, I, I don't know. Differences in the first place, and that's you don't what have I'm to have sex to do that. You can I never speak. Said you have you have can sex. speak. I never said you have to have sex. Yeah, but women will speak to anyone. Well, as, and, it and, have and to... yes, and yes, and women will speak to guys, and they'll be banging the guy that they really like. Yeah, bang it. So you can bang anyone. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and, they will, and they will want relationships from that guy. No, 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 one or two, mm. maybe. Mm. But if you go and you ask a girl, the last five or ten guys you bang, how many of them would you date? They'd say like, well, three of them I did date, you know. And for mm. the most part, like at least half of them I probably consider dating, right? Yeah. That's what I mean when I say generally, like men will gatekeep the relationship part a little bit. Definitely. And no, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. exactly what I'm saying exactly. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I agreed. I said I wasn't arguing. So you're all agreeing. You, know, you just kept talking. Uh. You wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, oh you were saying I was something. agreeing with you. No, you were. No, I say initially, Generator before they even destroyed. you're starting to go out on dates and you're considering a relationship, you need to. That person has to qualify certain requirements, and usually it's a looks test. The looks test will really determine how far or how much um, allowance or how many how many chances you're going to give to this guy. Not really, as well. Not, no, no, no. How no. Can you, because... True mystery, pumpkin. Desi's calling you out inadvertently. You guys are like the last ten women I fucked. Um. Do AI waifus count? <laughs> well, let's be real. So you accept the advances from every guy? Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Every guy that approaches you, 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 you accept their advances? I'm not saying I like I accept it. Just to be clear, I don't care about You've body count. I think if you haven't had sex with 10 people, that's fine. Okay, if you have, kudos to Every you, single yes. advance. I just hope every partner that you've selected has been a good choice uh, for both of you. I'm just saying, women are very realistic with their options. Maybe like, they know that they are not Let me finish. No, no, no. Wait, let me finish. Yeah, we can say, oh, yeah, I want a six foot guy, but they know there's not that many there's six foot guys. Many. When it comes to reality, yeah. they look at the dating pool, it's the dunya out here. Like, bro, <laughs> there are frogs everywhere. Yeah. You actually, women actually stop and think, yeah. you know what, I don't want to be single for the rest of my life. Yeah. I want yeah. to be married before 30. And what age do they start thinking about? To be fair, a lot when they're older. So when they're out of their prime years. But men never. Men always think they can get the baddest shit. You've got to be rude. I'm, listen, I'm not trying to be rude. rude. I'm not trying to be rude, but at the end of the day, your prime years are your twenties, bro. But what is the prime? Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. Man, reality, it hits them in the face because they're not going to get that girl, but the girl can still sleep with that guy. Okay, hold on. Why are you? You're so male brain in all your answers. You're only looking at the sex. Most women know they could. Most guys know they want. That's why women don't chase sex. They don't need to. Including thirty-year-olds, by the way. Most thirty-year-old women can also bang most men. Like. Like the fact that women are settling down, like people try to be like, it's a marker because she doesn't have options anymore. It's like, nah, it's just she had all these options. She's like, yeah, this shit ain't that important. I still Generator feel kind of empty and independent. I don't really value it. I'm going to like look for a different dating strategy, right? Like most 30 year old women can still have lots of sex, right? Think about it right now. If you're Generator a dude and you're under prepared. the age of 30, if you met a girl, decent and cute, and you found out that she was over 30, would you fuck her? Probably. The answer is probably, right? Third year olds still have tons of options for sex as well. They just realize that they're like more important things. 
and it's it's sad it's sad that people need to like go through this whole journey of having like empty sex especially like it's sad in the cases of people where they walk away feeling like more shitty about themselves they have a worse relationship with their sexuality and they have like overall a worse sense of self that's tragic that's a failing of our society but like ugh. okay i'll slow down i know you guys said destiny at 1.5 is too fast okay i'll put them in normal speed most guys are really brained in all your answers. You're mm. only looking at the sex. Yeah. Most women know they could. F most guys are really one. That's yeah. why women don't chase sex. Nah. They don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a difference. There's always that number. Sex. That's mm. why I get mad. You guys talk about hypergamy. Hypergamy. They, like a, an average whatever do not, woman do not, knows. Do you not think? Do you not think? Hold on, you show because you'll make like three different. I'm not points. making the point. I'm Is reinforcing so, my first do you point. Not, do you oh, not God. think women date up? No. You, you, you no. Wow. Wow. No. Not at all. Not now. Not hold now. On. Again, wow. hold on. When you like, say date, date up, it's, this is a data answer. When you say no. date up, you're only looking at it from the male perspective. When you say date up, yeah. you go, oh. True. Almost all of the red pill talking points are so fucking male centric. But they, they value everything on just what dudes care about. They're like, yeah, but women can get lots of sex. And it's like, cool. Women aren't looking for that. That's not what they're interested in. It doesn't oh, matter. Well, but, you're you're measuring women's success by a metric that is meaningless to them. It doesn't matter. Just like when you say like, like women try to measure men by things that you'd be like, I don't give a shit about that. I don't care. It's the same shit. They date up because the men is earning more, more money. Win. But then you'll say things like men value like, younger women. And in that case, men date up because they tend to date younger or they tend to date more attractive men. Exactly. We all value different things in the yeah. dating yeah. market. Everybody yeah. dates in about the exchange, where In the yeah. exchange of that, that man that he's got all the money and resources. Loner box, thanks for the raid. Hi, hello everyone. Hello, Loner box. You had the killer Sunday meme. You won, you won the Sunday trials. You won it. How'd the WIC panel go? I was... Tuning, I was planning to tune in and then I did it. I apologize. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, 94 of you. Hello, hello, hello. I don't know how long ago we got raided. Was it like 30 minutes ago? Because that would be awkward. No, no, no. It was now. It was right now. I'm just not seeing you guys. There we are. There we are. Hello. Hello, raiders. Hello, raiders. Raiding. Raiders be raiding. Raiders do be raiding. How did you guys like Kidology? Was that your guys' first time chatting with Kidology? Uh, because isn't she just just so lovely? She was lovely, great. Aerodite DK's money, hello me make stability markers? What? What? Uh hello, hello. She was Sag? She is great. She seems nice. I don't think I agree with her politically. That's fair. You don't have to agree with people politically to appreciate them. She's very, very nuanced. Any topic that you try to guess where she'll fall, she'll, she might not fall in the direction you'd expect. She has a neat accent. Yeah, she does. She does have a very interesting... I really like the South African, like, British blended accent. I think it's really cool sounding, uh, which is what her accent is. In general, I think blended accents are just really, really cool. She seems to have the naivety of someone new to the space. Well, I've noticed that a lot of... So, live streaming is a whole other beast compared to something like uh, video essaying, which is all she dominantly does. Because in video essaying, I don't think you make nearly as much of a community. You don't interact with other str like video essayists nearly as much. When you do, it's like separated by like weeks to months at a time, right? It's an incredibly like isolated thing. And so the main form of like community engagement and interaction that you actually have to deal with is like your comment section, right? And I just think that's like a very different experience. And therefore, like the fast pace of like live streaming is like a whole other ball game, which is why it's really interesting. You'll see video essayists who are like brilliant video essays writers they write compelling articles and critiques and stuff like that and then you put them in a live debate and they just shrivel because it's like a whole other skill to take your ideas that sound really good when you write them out by yourself and have them tested against somebody else who disagrees that's a whole other experience that i think everyone should experience. quantity is not quality when it comes to sex for women and men who graduated past high school yes Yes, mature people in general. Yes, I agree. Yeah, there's. it's a very interesting thing in the manosphere because in many ways the manosphere is like this incredibly boyish, childish space, right? They have an extremely childish perception of sexuality where it's just like, want to get my dick wet. I want a nut. And it's just like, 
Okay. <laughs> I understand that, right? It's like it's like listening to a 12-year-old talk about wanting to fall in love for the first time. You're like, I just want to be in love. And you're like, sure. And they're like, I just want somebody who holds my hand and th tells me I'm pretty. And you're like, you know, those are nice elements to love. But oh boy, you have a lot to learn about the experience of being in love with somebody because that is, uh, that is the very, very tippy tippy job, right? A lot of times when the red pill talks about like sex, for example, this is why I say the red pill doesn't care about sex. They care about the Enemy validation of sex. Because the red pillars don't talk about things like how to make her climax faster, how to be really, really good at giving head, how to like be extremely like uh, sexually long lasting, right? Outside of like medication, like how to be a good, sexy sexual partner, how to have good sex. They don't talk about it. They just talk about how to have sex. And it's like, I should say anyone can have sex because Clearly the issue in the red pill is not anyone can have sex. That's the problem that they're dealing with. So I, I get it. Getting in the door is the first step, right? Just like the 12 year old getting to the point where a girl agrees to be her gr his girlfriend for the first time is the first step. The problem is that like, it's the, once that step's mastered, like that's the first stepping stone. There's a million other things that come after that that matter so much more, right? You gotta figure out how to nut super quick, how to not nut super quickly. You have to figure out how to ask her for like sexual things and how to care about her sexual pleasures. You have to think about like what things are going to be appropriate to introduce into my sex life with this partner at Hostile. what times? How do I negotiate trying out new kinky Enemy stuff? How do I let my partner know that I don't like this? How do I tell my girlfriend she's using too much teeth in a way that doesn't make her hate herself and feel super embarrassed and insecure? How do I do all of these things? How do I navigate the fact that I have a higher sex drive than my partner? How do I navigate the fact that like her vagina hurts every single time we fuck? What's going wrong there? What are the issues? And it's like, they don't talk about this because in many ways the red pill is, this is why I call it a shallow of masculinity. It's incredibly immature. It's just a bunch of little boys dreaming about getting their dicks wet a lot of the time. And the problem is that it's like, damn, I get it. Like that's getting in the door being a person who you see everyone else just getting in the door and you can't even get up to the door fucking sucks it's awful and i empathize with that so much not because i've experienced it obviously but because of the well to some extent i have but they don't care about like my struggles as a woman like finding a, a dating partner they don't care about that right i empathize with that if you see everyone going through the door right getting having sex and you're not even there that sucks the issue is it's just the first thing there's so much more that matters beyond that. Okay. Madam, 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 thank you. They want a low body count so they don't have to worry about competing with other men who know how to fuck better than them. <laughs> they may also use it as a heuristic for purity and stuff. It's just like weird because purity is also associated with like youthfulness and like youthfulness is, I don't know, there's some weird thoughts that I have about like men desiring youthfulness. It's like there's an element where I understand it for like fertility ranges that's probably decently biological. But then beyond that, if you take that too far, it's like how much youthfulness are we talking about here? Because we don't want too many markers of youthfulness or that gets really fucking weird. As a dude in a relationship, it feels useless to me. Like legitimate relationship advice about how to do mundane, mundane shit would be awesome. Yeah, like this is what Nick and I want to do. How do you negotiate chores around the house with your partner? That's tough. That's actually awful. Because let's be honest, not a lot of people like vacuuming and mopping. It sucks. It's boring. Nobody likes to like mow. How do you negotiate that in a way that's fair, right? Does it have to be 50-50 in the house? I would say it doesn't. The issue is that all of the economy to some extent needs to be fair so that both partners feel like grateful, but also feel like they're doing a decent amount in the house. All we talk about is the first step. That's what she's saying. Yes, thank you, Magic Dragon. You turned my massive rant into a nice, concise statement. I appreciate you. My room is clean. Nice job. Well done. All that to offer the woman, and the woman's basically, she's young, good looking. Do you think that's an even exchange of value? Well, they, I don't want to fully dismiss the body count stuff because there's, there's something there, which is what like all of, like Christians are obsessed with this. It's just like Christians are at least consistent in that low body count matters for both men and women. Low body count in many ways to people represents a heuristic that suggests some level of self value and self, um, self control. The issue is that 
somebody can have both of those things and not have a low body count. That's the problem with heuristics. Is that it's like, it does map on a little bit. It is correlated with these things. The issue is that virginity is also correlated with other things, like being prepubescent. Probably, if I looked at correlates of virginity, being prepubescent probably correlates more strongly with virginity than self-control. I'm just gonna guess that's the case, right? And so it's like, I understand where I it's coming from because I agree that finding a partner that has self-value and self-control is good, right? You want a partner who doesn't just impulse buy, who isn't doesn't have proclivities towards like major addiction, right? You want that in a partner, both do, right? The issue is that like, this is again the red pill getting confused with the law versus the principle. The principle behind virginity for like all of history was, should have been and is self-control and self-value. And in fairness, in history as well, prevention against like serious STIs and stuff like that. The issue is now we can overcome a lot of these things like STIs and pregnancy. And so the, the self-control and self-value are still valuable principles. The problem is that virginity isn't the best marker of that anymore, right? Mental health is a better marker of this. But that's boring. And what is mental health? How do you even know, right? Yes, because the man is chasing what he wants, the woman's chasing what she wants. So, yeah. do you, so is and he dating down? No, it's not dating down. They're it's both different they're dating, level. They're different. It's, it's, you want the prime, innit? You want that looking, young body, that high No, no, yeah, that's, 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 you, that's your prime. Because you guys, you guys will say what? this. You guys will say this. You'll say, men don't care about a woman's accomplishments. And then you'll say, well, a guy is dating a woman that's young and, and super hot. Mm. And you're like, well, he's dating down. No, 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 it's not dating mm. down. Because you just said they don't care about the woman's exactly. accomplishments. Do you know why it's dating down? Do you want to know why it's dating down? Because in that exchange, yeah, the man is probably offering resources and protection. Yeah, but he doesn't care about that. He doesn't want it, according to you. provision. That is long lasting that's forever what whereas what that woman is offering is her youth and her beauty then why are you selecting on it if you don't care about youth and beauty don't select on it if you want a woman who isn't just taking resources and needing protection select for that but men aren't across the board almost universally especially in your circle which is fine you're allowed to select for whatever the fuck you want in your partners but then walk that out to the implications which will disappear the wall so is undefeated. Is That's no, but I'm just saying it's. I'm saying it's not as even. You're saying it's an even exchange, but it's not because he's offering something that is forever, and she's offering something that will disappear. In like what? Well, in the case of forever, she's. You're probably in part picking her because she's young, and there's a higher chance of her having your kids. Do you not think your kids are forever? What? Seven, ten what years, love and companionship and commitment. Yeah. No, but that's not the point. That's, 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 that's not the point we're talking about. The, that's not what we're talking in, about right but now. But in that scenario, at that point, that's what he values. values. At that point, How he do values. You know? Red pill. Mental health is a red pill argument against multiple partners. They just call it baggage trauma or alpha widow. The issue is that that's a really bad heuristic. Mental health correlates not very well with body count, but correlates really highly, for example, with like childhood trauma. There's so many other factors that the red pill could use to help men gauge which partners they would be interested in long term. There are way better correlates. Virginity is just not the most useful one. It's probably one of the least useful heuristics or correlates. It's just it's just bad thinking. That's just what it is at the end of the day. It's it is unironically the exact same logic as women selecting men over six feet. So t it, it maps on to some extent with things like success and money and good genes and good nutrition and IQ to some extent, but it's a pretty bad heuristic. It's pretty bad overall. What is value in? Men are saying on the base I'm not, level. No, 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 no.
We've liberated the facility. I'm not talking about love. I'm so, talking about in terms of what men value. They don't value a woman that makes a lot of money. Okay, you said okay. that yourself. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. in that moment in time, they value younger women. Okay. So he's not dating down because yeah, in his but, eyes, that's what yeah, gives but me... You're not thinking, but that's what the yeah, value is. You're not is. thinking in, in the whole scope of it. Okay, yes, I agree with you. And I said it. Yes, men will value youth and fertility and all of them things. But these are all things that disappear. Yeah, but what, that, off, no, that's the no, man. No, 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 what, no. You're not. You're that's not. You're the not man, even no, that's the man. No, no. So, no okay, okay, finish, finish. You're not listening, finish. bro. What he's offering does not disappear. It doesn't go. It doesn't go nowhere. Yeah, but you that's not the that. women's so fault. You do, that's not the women's fault. It's not At the end fault. of the day, the <laughs> men choose. The men choose what they value, right? If they wow. value younger women, and that's what they want at that moment, it doesn't matter if it expires in a couple not, years. I'm just that's what they value. Okay. Just yeah. And then he'll value listen, a mother of a, 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 a woman that is stable Thanks. and can give his children all that they need. His his needs exactly. probably change. Mm. Everything and in this, then it aligns. Sorry. Everything in this life is fleeting. Mm. You Everything. don't own all your material. Yes, mm. you have resources now. <laughs> listen, okay. but that can disappear. If uh, the unironic conclusion of this is like it is possible that let's let's just take a man as word and say like maybe men are giving more in the relationship they are dating down in the fact that like men give more long term according to the things that each other value so then men are just selecting stupidly is that like is that what we're saying basically is that the thing the main thing that men are selecting for is just kind of dumb I, I so it's like okay maybe maybe women just are always dating up according to this paradigm. But then that's just because men are being stupid. They're just selecting for unimportant things. Pia. I just don't think it's that simple, but. More likely look to at be. The, look at the economy now. Look at the, hyper, hyper inflation can happen one day. Suddenly all this is gone. Yeah, but you're now saying maybe. You're, you're saying maybe. You're talking about maybe. You're talking about maybe. You're talking about, you're about maybe. You're, you're talking about maybe. You're not listening. You're just over talking me. You're not listening. I know what you're saying. So what am I saying? That I'll be here is inevitable that it will. 100%, 100%. And I'm saying. No, they the did guy not. that's on the podcast. Mm -mm. Why do you like him? No, he's a fucking retard. Oh, oh. I thought you were gonna give him a nice shout out. No, he's an idiot. Uh, yes, that's true. No, doesn't say. Oh yeah, fair enough. Why? Why would I say anything? I don't know. I've just been railing on him, so I was hoping he would come up and say nice words. <laughs> I mean, he's, looks like he's got good, good physique. Yeah. He looks, he's got a cool aesthetic. Yeah. But it's, I don't know what this idea is like. What the man's bringing to the table, yeah? That's much more important. That's forever. Oh, does that mean, does that mean a fucking Bugatti isn't important? Because it doesn't last forever? It's got mileage? True. It's going to break down? Oh, fuck that. Man. It's like, how long can I last as a It's so weird. It's like, he's, he's basically making fun of men right now. It's like, oh, these yeah, men. He's basically just like, men pick stupid things. All these like, men, <laughs> yeah. They don't care about nothing about you. They got one of these broad, beautiful. <laughs> what, what happens? The ball comes bam. They got nothing. Like, For Raiders, just to get I'm an money. engineer. I'll repair you. Don't worry. <laughs> well, that's not even. Thanks. Oh, that's even only kind of. It's like, British. Like, he's Caribbean. The guy, this guy is Caribbean. Oh, is he? Okay, okay. Sounds just like British. Sounds like. He doesn't sound British. Sounds British to me. He sounds like British Jamaican, but okay. That's I mean, even if, if I, I even if I wasn't London. Caribbean, anyone can speak patois. Yeah, this is fine. Bro. I just, I don't know. I just, that it annoyed me so much. It's like, bro, do you realize? Eyes on a hostile transport vehicle. A vet right now. You're saying that men care about Chevy spotted. Lightning spotted. Let's speak for that, sorry. Eyes on a hostile lightning tank spot. Very, very just saw very silly. Aren't some of these guys interested in sexually inexperienced women also because they're likely, uh, they're likely inexperienced in relationships and therefore don't recognize red plays easier to manipulate? Um, yeah. Men don't care about sex. But no, that's not what they're saying. They're saying that they're aren't part of the reason why the red pill men are going to be interested in like young. Because uh, they're inexperienced and therefore won't recognize like manipulation uh, or bug flags from this thing. Like they're easier to like okay, mold, I guess basically. The point is, like, men don't care if women are sexually inexperienced, because men don't care about these stuff. I mean, okay. No, I, like, I mean, like, unironically, like, I don't think 
I don't think many people care about sex. But especially like that. I'll get you fixed up. <laughs> That's not true. A lot of them have. They just they care about the validation from sex. Hostile match in the area. I don't know if you can I'm talking about, oh, nothing you don't own, nothing what? in this world, and what, what if I'm, this happens, okay. it's what if you're talking but about. I understand, okay? okay. What I'm getting at is... Is that just because certain possessions we have made us okay does not mean our value as a human being diminishes. What is important is us as individuals having a partnership and love, like all this. Of course, all you can say all that. Of course, you want to say that, bro. One person you got to diminish in the value, bro. Let me ask you something. You see, guys, and I'm saying, I feel like. So what do you want? Do you want women to never grow old? No, no, no. What's the solution? Stop, 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 guys. Okay, wait, wait, wait. We have to go one at a time because when you're talking over each other, it's just it's hard to hear on the audio. Okay. Well, I just wait. I didn't say talk yet. I didn't say talk yet. I'm gonna give you a chance to go. I just wonder what your. I think your. You've got a very juvenile standard of beauty. Because your beauty. Of course you're gonna say that. No, and I'm saying that because I can I can give you oh, let's look at celebrities. Nia Why? Long Nia Long twenty is just as beautiful mm. as she Why would we look at celebrities? What do you mean? Because that's where a lot of beauty standards both arise from and is like reflected upon. What do you mean why would we look at celebrities? No, you're right. We should just look at really, really average women and go, that's the beauty. Like what what does that even mean? He's at fifty, you're not in the market. What are you talking what about? You're not a man. You're just, you're, you should, maybe you should ask men because they're it's men that's going to date her, men that's going to marry her, men that will impregnate her. Are you so maybe you should ask men for all men. Bro, but I'm a man, you're babe. not. I'm in a better position I, than you. I'm not sure, you know, because as I said, you're talking from what? a very juvenile. Yeah, she's saying you're a boy. Oh, she went there. She said, I don't know if you're a man. You might just be a boy. Unmatured wow. perspective of okay, what okay, beauty okay, is. Okay, in your beauty standards. In your opinion. You don't even beauty standards. You haven't asked me. I have a question for you. So there's some girl, I don't know who that is. What's her name? Nia Long. Nia Long. And she's just as beautiful at 20 or at 50 as she is at 20. I believe so. Okay. <laughs> Delusion. I mean, I disagree with her. I, it, when it comes to beauty standards, like beauty standards are savage. They're savage, um, particularly for women, right? Like as women age, they are necessarily viewed as less attractive and therefore less valuable. Like absolutely. Beauty standards shift and, and whatnot. But right now, particularly, hyperfemininity is very, very in, particularly with men. Um, that is like just a reality and pretty much universally some element of like markers of like youthfulness, like young, uh, kind of like full skin, healthy, healthy tonicity, right? No, lack of wrinkles is quite attractive to, seems to be broadband everyone. Okay, <laughs> I'll you, I'll How old are you? How old are you? I'm Googler. How old are you? No, no, she's beautiful. No, 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 I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not, I don't know how you're. I don't know how you're. You're really aging. You're really aging. I'm going to ask you a question. How old you are? Because youth does not mean beauty. People actually grow into beauty as well. I don't really know what to do. I was ugly younger. I have grown into, I don't know what you're on. You're not listening this What do you think about that, Destiny? What do you think? Uh, people date for different things at different ages. This is like a really kind of silly conversation. Like an older guy might value a woman because she's young and beautiful, but as you start dating, hopefully you start to appreciate other things and then the relationship goes from yeah. that. If you want a what family- about, can, can you ask the looks thing? Like, do you think most women look better at 50 or the same age? Yeah. Yeah. Probably not, but people at 50 are dating for different things, okay. right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't say most women. Well, they should be, but unfortunately, a lot of men they do want younger women. It is quite sad, and I think it's quite sickening that if someone that's like fifty. Actually, 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 I have a question. Do you think it's equally sad and sickening that women want successful men? I'm or talking men? to the mic. Is it sad and sickening that I like? I men? would. I mean, when I say sickening, I mean like a fifty-year-old wanting to date a twenty-something-year-old. Like, mm -hmm. dude, man, you've been through generations. Mm -hmm. Why do you find a twenty-something-year-old attractive? Mm -hmm. You've been through life. To me, I'm not going to lie. That is a bit. If you if you want a younger, is in like ten years younger. That's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, she's experienced. She's been through a lot. But when you're going like as far as twenty-something. To me, that's crazy, and you need to have conversations with yourself. I'm not going to lie. But in terms of wanting money, mm -hmm. I, I don't even I don't even encourage women to go for a man for money. Even that I don't encourage because I, I do think that's it's all very fictitious. To me, I think women should just go for things that makes them happy rather than like materialistic things. But unfortunately, some women do like that, so I can't really tell people I what to like and not like. If you have the same energy, the other yeah, yeah, I do. I, I find it. I feel like you should go out there as a woman. You, we are so blessed with feminism. Mm -hmm. This is why, oh, honestly, I don't know why people speak down on feminism. We can make our own money. Bro, in Africa, in certain countries, Bloody women can't do that. So to me, it's just such a blessing that women can do that. And in Western countries, I don't know why women don't want it. Why are you still looking for a man to take care of you? But if that's what you like... Because they want a soft life. Yeah, but you can give yourself the soft life. Don't tell women, me. Women no, can go into managerial roles. You can work hard, get your money up. Treat they yourself. They don't want to. They don't want to, though. Well, it seems like they do, because they are more than they ever have in all of history, right? Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, men want the social validation from sex. Women want the social validation from True. Um, yeah, validation and security, right? For a man, if he has even like two body counts, he feels he's gonna feel way more secure 
than if he had zero, right? Same with a woman. If she's like has a relationship or has at least had a relationship once in the past, she's gonna feel way more secure. Eyes on the PS like, okay, I am good enough that at least somebody wanted me for a period of time. In a lot of ways, sex does for men what relationships do for women. I would agree with that to a large degree. Now, I think also, vice versa, I think sex does something good for women. Blah blah blah. I'm, I don't need to carry it. I'm fucking tired. Definitely. Yeah, but there's a lot of them that still want a man that's making way more money than them, and a lot. Of so, uh, what I'm saying is specifically, sex does for men what relationships do for women, as far as like social senses of security, like to the peers, specifically. I'm not saying that men don't value or benefit from relationships, or that women don't value or benefit from sex, obviously. As a lot of women that are, yeah, they're making all this money, they still want a guy that's going to be taking on financial burden. Yeah, that's true, but those numbers are changing. I think it was like, it was like 38%, I think in like 2017 or 2015, like for people that wanted, uh, for women still wanting men to out or no, but that number slowly come down over time. It'll probably adjust as more people make more money. You have to wait for society to adjust to yeah. what is new. I don't have to wait for nothing, bro. I'm living my right. movie. All right, you do your thing, but we're going to wait. In fact, uh, a really interesting it's study rolling. that uh, Costello just showed that. recently that's kind of weak, but it is directional, suggesting that if men come into a relationship expecting to be equal or like making less than the women, it doesn't really bother or affect their relationship. But if men come into a relationship expecting to be the breadwinner, but then are not, it has massive impacts on the relationship. Because in a lot of ways, people's psychological experience has a lot more to do with their expectations and what they perceive to be ideal than what they are actually experiencing. This is why you can have similar levels of like, happiness and well-being from some people who have like mud homes, as long as they have like their basics met, like they've got food and stuff like that, but they have like very minimal technology, they don't have good like medicine or anything like that, they'll still have high levels of well-being, again, assuming that they have like food and water. Uh, the moment food and water and shelter go, well-being obviously plummets. They'll have like similar, if not higher well-being than somebody who has like significantly more, uh, somebody who is considered like impoverished, but in Canada. So they have a home, they have like a technology, they have a phone, they have food, um, they have their rent covered, but like they can see that they are at a disparity to everyone else. It's all about perception. It's all about what you're expecting and what you perceive to be correct that impacts the level of like your ex psychological experience. And the problem for me with the red pill specifically, like these type of talking points, it's not even the red pill. It's more like the trad Connie movement within the red pill. That's kind of starting to take over all of the red pill. The red pill used to just be like pickup artists and like, like normal dudes are like, oh, I want to have sex. And now it's like trad Connie red pill. The problem with the Tridcon Red Pill is it's like reinforcing these worldviews into these young men that are going to make them likely much more miserable in their relationships, which is sad. Yeah, you I, mean, I don't patient. care what you, you do. I don't care what you do. Alright, that's fine. But you have to be realistic. I am realistic. And I, feel like the world I haven't is, said anything that's unrealistic. The world is moving in the direction that you're asking. So like all this complaining and... Complaining about what I complained about. Oh, how oh, women want to date men that are making more. I never, I never people, said that as a complaint. I was just stating but, the obvious. But I'm yeah. saying... But that, you're saying it's a complaint. No, no, no. I'm saying that it's already changing. So you're going to adjust no, what no, you no, said? No, no, no. Listen, I'm saying that it's already changing. Okay, but I wasn't complaining though. So. Okay, well, that's fine then. But I'm just saying. I don't, I don't know why you thought I was complaining. I, I, I feel like okay, okay, women okay. can't win. If they want a man that makes a lot of money, you're a gold digger. If you want a man that's average or whatever, she's not, she's not, um, what? like actually, thinking oh. high enough. She, she should respect that. herself. Oh, actually, there was a video that went viral. Wait, it was actually Kendra G. Wait, wait, but Kendra we were just, like, every time a girl says she needs high, high standards, literally, girls are. Men get depressed if they get fired. Yeah, but that's because of the social expectations that men should be holding jobs and being breadwinners, right? For example, like Nick was out of work during COVID because he was a personal trainer and unsurprisingly gyms weren't open and he wasn't miserable because he wasn't working because he knew that the expectation changed he wasn't upset about it and he was making he was making the COVID uh like temporary relief so he's getting paid like uh about a little bit less than what he would have been making if he was working so he's like making decent income there was basically nothing for him to do and he wasn't miserable because of that um because it's all about expectation. Like men get depressed when they get cut out of work because men have been socialized from the very beginning that their only value is tied to the dollars that they're bringing into a household. Because men don't matter unless they also have a dollar sign behind them. And that's a tragedy, right? That isn't right. I want a world where that is different, where men are valued for other things beyond the GDP that they Shield generator So when critical. men get depressed when they like, can't work. I agree with you that that is descriptively true. What I'm talking about is a prescription for the future and saying that's true not because there's some biological thing in men that if they're not working they're depressed. I don't think there's any evidence for that. What it really is is a perception that they that who they are right now is not mapping on to the ideal version of themselves that they would like to be. And society has told them an ideal man is a man who is working and productive and bringing in money. Let's cheer her on. 
No, 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 no. Any man would be depressed from that one. No. Dionysus. Dionysus, just, uh, you know, diagnosing my, my husband for me. Thank you for that. Yes, he was depressed. I know. I know these things. I know all things. I know much of man psychology. I could tell you he was depressed and has all cap. Well, enjoy talking to my husband in the chat. Dionysus. No, when I, like I think what? there was actually a video that went viral recently where it was on Kendra G's uh, Instagram live, mm -hmm. and it was this woman. She said, I "What are the societal pressures on women? Um, motherhood is a really big one. Motherhood is again working is good, working is valuable. People find purpose from it. Just like motherhood is good, it's valuable, and there's purpose in it. The issue is that a lot of women also tie, for example, their sense of value to their beauty and their capacity. To Clear out of that area. And this is why a lot of women." Even women who you don't want children, area. if they find out later that they're infertile, it can be really mind fucking for them. Because even though they don't want it, now there's something that is a piece of paper saying you're actually less valuable as a woman because you couldn't even if you wanted to, right? This is why older women, as they age, we see a really big spike in depression and anxiety. In part, probably because of like things Watch like menopausal hormones. But in on top of that, is a loss of societal value of beauty. Erudite, time for challenging RP content because the ideas of what the RP says to me just seems too easy, and I believe it's not really what men slash women want. So welcome. We can still win this date broke men i do not care i love broke men and she said all a man needs to have is two thousand pound like two thousand dollars a month that's all he needs to earn and in the comments people were saying oh you don't even respect yourself you should well, aim they, they women there is no biological component to wanting to work you are diagnosing Woo! i just lost it. hold on you are diagnosing all men based on your man ironic also as long as women hide as long as women value high earners men will societally value working though i agree this may be changing a There's a lot here. Right? Okay. I am not diagnosing all men. I am diagnosing people. I am telling you there is no biological part of your body or your brain that cannot get happiness unless you are doing work. There isn't that, right? There is gold pursuit. But gold pursuit is not the same thing as working, right? Increasing your GDP is not biological. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. I am diagnosing all of humanity, and I'm not diagnosing it myself. I am telling you that there is no empirical evidence that your happiness is biologically tied to your GDP or your production rate. It is tied to things like markers, like um, the Maslow shit, right? Home, security, food, water, social network, and to some extent, a sense of purpose. But purpose can be achieved outside of work, right? Purpose can be achieved in a multitude of ways. And to be honest, there are a ton of people who have achieved high levels of purpose that are still miserable. Because what makes people happy isn't necessarily the same as it makes them fulfilled long term. It's going to be slightly different. Both of these things matter. I'm not diagnosing men based on men. I am telling you that people don't need to be happy. People need social networks and they need to contribute to a community typically to be happy. Can't win! Goal pursuit requires work, which is where the satisfaction comes from. Now you're just shifting the goalpost to mean work to mean different things. I didn't say productivity and working towards goals isn't valuable. I'm talking about work like GDP, obviously, because I've said GDP and money fucking like 19 times. You like shifting the goalpost doesn't make you win magically, it just makes you look stupid. Uh, I, I, just, I just think on the internet everyone's gonna complain. Yeah, like, like, like everybody does like, that. Like, like, say like women will always have each other, but men do it too. You'll mm. see like a, a forum full of like, no offense, but like super fat, really nerdy loser guys who are like shitting on women who are like a million times more attractive than any woman they'll ever talk to. Mm -hmm. Right? That's where like the pointy elbows mean comes right, from, right? right? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. even I heard, that happened to me on Saucecast. I forgot what number I said when they said like the salary, but they were like shitting on me. For, it was like it wasn't even low either. It was like I don't know, fifty-five. In the number US. for what? Like they asked me what salary I would date, and all the girls were like, "Oh no, you need to make it higher." But I was like, "Oh." That's what I mean. Yeah, but I just, there will always be someone that complains. Yeah, right, but like, so that's just do whatever makes I, you happy. That's just life, though. Like people complain, especially if you're like you're gonna be on the internet. Yeah, you, you can know? do. Yeah, like, you can. You can do whatever makes you happy. But if you lose, don't complain in it. Because there's a lot of women that complain. Fair, that's a fair game. Don't yeah, complain. Yeah. I have, but I think men. And no one has to give you. No one has to give you sympathy. 
Because when I when I do my reaction videos to these chicks, these, not, I'm saying chicks, grown women, grown, overgrown women that flipping, they're crying over Chad and Tyrone. Oh, you left me, blah, blah, blah. I always say I have no sympathy for you because you're an adult it. and you make choices. And I think that everyone has to be accountable for their choices. Simples. But do you say the same thing when yes. a, a, and wait, I talk crap about guys too. When yes. a man, a man goes for a woman that only wants him for money, yes. do you say you make that? You yeah, that you should understand. If you're, if you're getting into a situation with a woman who is only there for your money, like for instance, your example of the guy that's 50 years old getting with a 21 year old girl, obviously that he's not, <laughs> you're not her first choice, I will bro. say the red pill is decently consistent in being like uncaring about like things like this. They're not consistent about things like what you're responsible for. Um, but as far as like not caring about this stuff, I'm not surprised that you would say like, yeah, I don't care if guys get like seduced by gold diggers. Like they don't care about that shit. Like, do you get what I'm saying? So, like, yeah, you should understand the situation you're in, understand the dynamic. That, bro, she's there because you have money and she's young, hot girl. Now, if, you, if you're if you a 50-year-old man and think, oh, she really loves me because she, she helped me bust nuts, you're an idiot. Mm. And that's it. But the thing is, I think guys are more inclined to just deal with reality, whereas women, you know, you lot are brought up with the whole Disney, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty rhetoric that kind of messes so. you lot up. And you, you think, oh, yeah, the first Chad and Tyrone I meet, uh, like, out of school, whatever, we're going to have some kind of relationship and he's hot. No, no, no bro, no. no get I don't think so. I and mean, then it's, when you get to, like, 30 years old, now you want a nice guy, now you want a good guy, he doesn't have to be tall, he doesn't have to be rich, I just want a guy that's going to be there and loyal. Come on, bro. See, I don't Destiny, think so. I think so. Sorry. Go on. No, go Destiny, on. I have a question for you. Why do you think that college went... Staying at home isn't an option, man. The original comment was about women versus men being stay at home. I'm only commenting on there's no biological component to work providing happiness. Yeah, but your you comment was that I was area. diagnosing area men immediately. based on my man's experience. And I'm telling you, that's not what I was doing. I was now generalizing it. I wasn't saying because Nick was happy. I gave an anecdote as evidence for it. But I was making a general claim, broadband. A, like, essentially, to some degree, an empirical claim. College educated women initiate divorce 90% of the time. Uh, well, I don't know, what do the stats say? Isn't it that usually people aren't happy in their relationships? Um, oh man, you can <laughs> never hear him when you sped up, hey? Okay, now we have to go back because now they're going to engage. God, that's going to be the end, Lloyd. Question for you Why do you think that college, wo college educated women initiate divorce 90% of the time? Uh, well, I don't know, what do the stats say? Isn't it that usually people aren't happy in their relationships? Visual on enemy air transport. Um, it, it depends what study you look at. I've looked at like um, what? sometimes it's financial. Some times I've it's... seen infidelity. I think mm -hmm. is a high one. I've seen people are just generally not happy with the relationship. You have a constable, um, the visual on a hostile mm -hmm. light assault troop. That's nice, I was just curious anecdotally. I don't know very many divorcees with college degrees, so I can't really, really? say no. Oh, okay. Why do you? Mm -hmm. What do they say? I mean, I don't enemy light assault in the area. <laughs> I don't ask them for the behind the scenes of their divorces. Do you feel like, do you asking that question, you feel like something in college makes women... Um, I have a funny. visual of No, I, I mean, liberated. I feel like women just have a hard time. I mean, I think it kind of goes back to like women out earning men have a hard time respecting the men they're with. That's not true. That's not true. It kind of goes back to like women out earning men have a hard time respecting the men they're with. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. I actually read into <laughs> yeah. I actually read into that data. It's so not true. I read into that data and it explained why. Mm -hmm. So a lot of time the women reported that mm -hmm. they had way too much responsibility in the marriage. Mm -hmm. So they were expected to be no, in charge in of the household area. duties mm -hmm. and still work a job. Mm -hmm. And they add to Oh come on, what percent of modern women actually cook? It was, exactly. it was, wait, 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 that is, that is. Uh, what? Most, most, because most adults cook. If you have kids, all hands on deck. What do you mean? How many? What an insane question. I'm sorry. Touch grass. If you don't think the answer, how many modern women are cooking? Fucking most of them. How many modern men are cooking? Most of them even if they're coupled up. Because nowadays, they've both got full-time jobs, their kids have like 16 events to go to, they're in like baseball and swimming and soccer and horse riding and ballet and tap dance. So it's like, it's all hands on deck, it's whoever's home earliest that day to like throw shit in the oven, fire it up and go. Like the reality is like most. In Nick and I's dynamic, I said, he does most of the cooking. Even in our dynamic where we've agreed that Nick is the cook, I still cook. I still cook regularly because sometimes he feels sick. Sometimes he's super exhausted. Sometimes I'm motivated to cook. I would like to cook a delicious soup, you know? Most modern women cook. What is this question?
Is she asking how many modern women who are from like the upper class cook? Well, probably lower because they're probably ordering out most of the time. But that's also because the dudes are doing the same shit. Oh. Oh man, what an insane question. The whole pop was a few thousand, but the separation were like few. All right. Rate of divorce. Actually, let's go. Reasons for divorce. 1993. That's a little old. 83. Okay, let's let's go since. Let's try since 2016. Iran. Turkey, evolutionary perspective, reasons that could. This is it effects on children? Reasons and consequences. Let's try, let's try that perhaps. 20% of, wait, wait. 20 wait, wait. of the men, it, when both parents are working, mm -hmm. only 20% actually reported to doing household duties. Mm -hmm. That's scary mm -hmm. when you're both working. I mean, I'm just saying the shit's automated nowadays. I mean, you have a washing machine, a dishwasher. Yeah, well, so sure, you, you can say, but, even at that, but as, like, much as, it's on, as much as it's come automated, on. men still don't do it. Uh, yeah, it's still yeah. Don't do they it. They still don't do it. Uh, that's so, it. That's the issue is that the, one of the big problems with households. What's the reason for divorce? One of, it absolutely is a reason. Chores? When you oh, get when you get older and you manage a household on your own, Pearl, you'll see how mm -hmm. fucking annoying it is when you're mm -hmm. working and then you come home and yeah. everything is fucked up and horrible and nobody's fucking cleaning anything. Yeah, that is a totally valid reason for divorce. Of course. To yeah. Chores to break up a home, a oh, family. Have kid. you lit Oh my gosh, this is this is naive as well. Like anyone who has ever done divorce counseling, who's worked with divorce couples or married couples, will tell you that the daily economy is one of the most important things to figure out in your relationship. It is more important than anything. And here's the issue. Most people won't cite the daily economy as why they broke up. They're gonna cite things like fell out of love, lost interest, going a different way, right? Or some sort of like financial stress. Like they'll point to some more novel major marker. But the daily economy, if you can't figure out how to make the household work together in a way that you don't fight, that means every single day there is something that either is making you bitter towards your partner or you're fighting about every day and that will kill your marriage daily economy i can't underscore it enough is fundamental to making your relationship work if you can't live in a house together you're never going to work out if you can't figure out a mutual level of cleanliness that you can both agree to and maintain together that's not going to work out. That means doing the work and maintaining the mental load to remember to do the work, right? This will be good that's as new. both of what's going on in the daily economy. Because when women are complaining about men not keeping up with the daily economy, a lot of men will contribute in the household. But there's also a whole piece which is remembering to keep the household together. That almost exclusively women have to do. This will and be a good lot as of new. women who complain about this are complaining. They're not put like they're talking about the fact that like when a woman is doing a chore a lot of time because this is not because of a biological thing this is the way that we're often socialized right that. if i'm doing the dishes i'm gonna walk I with the dishes that. and i notice for example that the towel that's there has been there for three days because i've got like a little bit of a mental list there so i'm gonna that take the towel and i'm going to throw it in the like wash bin for all the dirty towels but i notice as i'm doing that that the towel bin is full so i'm gonna go finish so I'm like, mm, okay, well, I'm I may as well run a load and while I'm doing the dishes. Stop doing the dishes. Take the bin downstairs, start a load, come back upstairs, start doing the dishes, right? Need to this is like all of the mental load stuff that. that women are just socialized to do on average, right? Yeah, I'm not saying that men can't do it. Or I fix that scrap it's just like there is an assumption in society still that women do the bulk of the domestic Spot work, and, and a large portion of that is organizing. Right? This is why for everyone. a lot of times the women who are doing things like noting when groceries are out, oh, we're almost out of ketchup. That. Should go make sure I go buy that. I can do all that. Doing all these little mental things. Oh, I'm just noticing that I'm getting low on lemon juice. Add that to this. 
but they're constantly doing 16 things at once because they're holding the mental load of the domestic crime as well, which is super tiring, particularly when you have kids and your partner isn't willing to share in it, particularly if you're both doing the same amount of financial accounts. Right? It's it is tragic that that's just killing relationships, but that's because the daily fight matters so much. You have to figure out your domestic economy, which means if you are spending $500 a week to get a maid in your house to help clean, because maybe one of you is just like not inclined or you're both too busy, whatever it is, I don't even care what your reason is. You, you just want it. If getting that maid is the we difference between divorce or not, get the maid, but figure out how to make the daily economy work. It is fundamental to a relationship. Is it a filter ball ball ball? Ball? Isn't it? How many breakups slash divorces do you think happen because neither partner can decide what they're gonna prepare for dinner? Is this a thing? It's probably not so much like preparing dinner, it's more like the workload and the mental load of not just preparing dinner, but all of the mental load. But I don't think it's like just preparing dinner. They might blame it on that, but the reality is like, well, even when you ask people what caused the end of your marriage, they're gonna oftentimes, even if they're being asked like a big support, they give you pretty simple answers because we don't really think about it, right? People don't think about like being like, well, it was pretty annoying that every single day for the last 10 years I had to remind him to like, you know, bring his dish to the sink. And I agree that it's a tragic thing that that is the end of the relationship. But the problem is that if it's a daily fight, it can happen. If it is consistent where you're consistently having to have that burden upon yourself, you keep telling him, please, can you clean up? Like, it's so funny because, like, lifelong friends from, like, grade school to high school will dorm in college and then hate each other forever over, like, bad dorm roommates. And that's not even a relationship. So, yeah, of course I think stuff like this is perfectly valid. I think I think splitting up splitting up, splitting up, up duties in the household is, like, one of the most important parts of, like, a relationship. Because it's where you're spending most of the time together. This is why I say, people get triggered when I say, I don't think you're even dating until you live together. Because until you live together, you don't really know who the other person's like. And once you start living together and you see what the household duties are like, then you get a feel for what the relationship is. I mean, I just I just think that, like, I don't know, I feel like that can be worked out. Chores? Like, hold on, wait, do you understand your, wait, wait, hold on, wait, you're not saying anything. Are you do this intentionally where you're like, I don't know about that. We're telling you, I'm telling you that. I mean, that's, your, I mean, I'm, you're giving your opinion, I'm giving I'm not giving an opinion, I'm saying that in a household, this is not an opinion, this is, I'm, I'm putting it forward as fact. In a house. And he's roasting her. Delineation. He's so sick of it. Of chores is one of the most most important things. That if somebody's constantly destroying the bathroom, leaving clothes everywhere, leaving dirty food in the sink, they can't clean their, their dishes or whatever, like these things will will destroy anything over time. Yeah, but that's what, that's what she said. She said, I'm sure we can work it out. That's well, the obviously that's can't, the, that's because they're not, they're not, they're not working they're not out. Working that's out. Bro, 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 there may be, maybe these women that are making all this money that, you know, they're making so much money working, and they don't want to do the house chores. Maybe they should go and get an older guy with more money so they can go and employ a maid. What? And a fork. What? Yeah. What? What is the hostile infiltrator? Just so you know, what's the hostile infiltrator in the air? Hostile light assault troops to spot. Hostile light assault troops to spot. Well, if maybe, if you want like a better domestic economy, you should divorce your husband and find a better partner. That's what women are trying to do. Like, according to what? Oh my only been god. In one relationship and only slept with one person. Isn't it weird to give advice on this kind of stuff when you're inexperienced? I haven't only dated one person. Where does that come from? I've only been married to one person. And yes, my body count is one with only that person. But I've dated multiple people. I've had like, this isn't my only long-term relationship. I just didn't have sex. <laughs> what? <Rest and> mark? <laughs> okay. You guys Maybe you should do anything, that. Man. How's that? Okay, but then, no, but you got to put. No, you what? Listen to what you just said. They're leaving the guys that make less money because they're expected to make money and. So they should just leave the guys. Got extra ammunition. No, what they need. Here's the thing. It's on men and women. It's not just men are bad because they don't help the domestic economy. 
it's also in part because like women are not good at communicating what their wants and needs are, and maybe like, especially like palatable. Like a lot of times, women will bottle their frustration about the domestic economy to the fact that by the time they're talking to their partner about the domestic issues, they'll be like super, super like upset about it, and, like, so, like, or like rude, like, and stress, and like, they'll get that tone that's like not conducive to a good conversation. Like, oh, like I'm so fucking mad at you. Like just pay off your shit, right? So that's on women, like, and it, it's just to be clear, it's increasingly less men, right? But it's it's a it's a tag team effort, right? A woman can't resent a man for not helping her. If she doesn't give voice to these things, because he can't find her, that's not fair either. Just like if I'm he says, well, you're the woman, you. you should do most of it. Well, that's not really fair necessarily either. What you guys need to do is negotiate something that works. Now, if for whatever reason, she is refusing to negotiate with you, that's a problem in and of here. itself. But it's not a problem because like just women are like this or just men are like this. It's a problem of negotiation. And our society is horrible at negotiation. We're terrible at it. Clearly, clearly, look at the way we engage in sex. Like we're terrible at negotiation. That tone, we all know that. You the house, and you were saying how hard. Right, that's on women. It's on women for not giving voice to these issues. It's on women for not having boundaries. Right, if you tell a guy if you don't clean this up, we're gonna have like problems. Set up like an actual established boundary, which is like if you don't clean this up, I will not be cleaning it for you. I am going to be leaving it in your in your workspace. Right, do that. Pick it up and put it in there. Right, that's probably not the best strategy. I would say try to negotiate it but if you've got like a male partner who just refuses to negotiate with you as well like that's a flag that might mean something if you have a female partner who refuses to negotiate with you on things like the domestic economy that's a problem both of you should be working really hard to try to just try it what it is because you're at home and you're doing all these it's also fair to say a lot of women often have like a lot of people it's usually the more cleanly person gender. there's going to be one person who is way more clean than the other the person who's way more clean probably needs to ease up on some of their standards to meet the other person halfway. Just like the other person who's not very uh, not as clean needs to up their standards a little bit and try to stay on top of themselves to maintain a level of cleanliness that they personally don't care about. And the person who's cleaner, when they know that their partner is trying really hard to maintain a standard that they know that their partner doesn't care about, they should be grateful that their partner is doing that because the partner is not doing it for themselves. They don't care about the cleanliness, they're doing it for you, right? This is Nick and I. I have a much higher standard of cleanliness than Nick, which means anytime Nick is attempting to improve the cleanliness of her house, I am grateful because I know he doesn't care about it as much because he doesn't need it as clean as I do. Okay then, don't be with a guy that le makes less money. Find a guy that right? makes... So we have a problem where on one hand, like men don't really even, a lot of times, aren't really socialized in things like mental load and domestic economy. On the other hand, women are not very good at communicating what their needs are or establishing boundaries. And neither of you know how to negotiate around it. She just gets Fire, resentful and mad and she probably like, stores it up over time. And sometimes it's a men. So usually whatever partner is more clean is usually the one that we're actually talking about here. Right? The cleaner partner gets mad and resentful and the other partner gets annoyed that they're mad at them all the time. Because they're like, what the fuck, dude? I'm just living. Chill. It's more money and then you don't have to do chores because you employ the maid and the cook. Okay, so but then like you said, but then young guys, young guys can't complain then that girls won't date their own age because they, because guys can't do house chores. They get to be like, oh, sorry, you know, you're 25 years old. You have to be single till you're 35 and learn how to do the dishes. Like, and only top 5% of men can even afford that. To be like, oh, I'm just asking, I'm just asking you. I'm just asking you because you're going, you're making this point about the- Why did Nick catch a stray about his cleanliness? Gotta keep him on his toes. Keep her sex life alive. <laughs> I'm totally good. These women that make so much money. Nick will tell you firsthand. I need a like He's just gonna say it in a different way, which is that I am way more ornery than I should be, right? It's gonna be from his perspective. He's like, it's not, it's not a stray. He's like, this bitch way too wild. She's wild and out about her cleanliness. Okay, chill. Me, and then they make, they make so much money. I'm speaking to the mic. I'm speaking to the mic. They work. Okay. So having a full time job, mm -hmm. on average, men or women are yeah, going to into what they're, they're in the work. <laughs> Nick doesn't want money. Do I mean, I think I've offered it. If he wants something, he can have it anytime. But I think usually he doesn't. 
workforce. Mm-hmm. So obviously they're making money. I'm not saying they're high earners. All I'm saying is they're working. That's it. Okay. So the, the the solution is men should understand that their women are also working. Mm. So how can I help knowing that we're doing the same job? Mm. How can I make her life easy? Because she's making my life easy by doing the chores. Well, Pearl so, said that, but Pearl said that I'm sure there's a way you could work it out so that the house chores can be, you know, easy and good for everybody. It should wait, do okay, the house I, chores. Wait, wait, let me ask a question. Do you think... <laughs> so do you wait, think the man should do all the house chores because it makes less money? Not wait, all. Most Half. of them, most of them. Yes, most Half of them. Of it. All right, cool. Okay, do you, why do you think they're getting divorced? Do you think divorce is fun? That the, Because they're college educated and they hate men? They're just like, oh, I'm just going to divorce because I, I hate all men. Like, why I, do you think they're getting divorced? I think women divorce for no reason all the time. Well, okay, no that's, 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 yeah. that's absolutely yeah, honestly, part of it. You just need to talk honestly, to more people then. Because I, that's not I true. I talk to people you don't, you don't four talk, days a week yeah, for no, a year. Yeah, oh if you think that people just want to divorce. Four days a week for a On the street. Red pill community. That's the Esther, If I'm being good faith to Pearl, when she's saying they get divorced for no reason, what she's saying is unimportant reasons. People get divorced for reasons that aren't good reasons to get divorced. That's what she's really trying to say. Esther, you've never seen my street interviews then. I've done so many street interviews. I talk to random strangers on the street all the time. And you, and you find women that get divorced like, oh, you know, I just wanted to get divorced. I mean, yeah. the reasons they Can I tell dumb. you the reasons? Like, like, <laughs> because <laughs> dumb, dumb. Because you're dumb. Oh my god, you're actually a child. What do you think love is? You're just like romantically going away to Venice like every year and that's I mean, like, I, like, no, a relationship requires a lot of deliberate work. I mean, and things yeah, like, I, hold on, hold on. Things like chores are where relationships start to break down and it'll steamroll into bigger things. Like a guy not doing chores ever might be a guy that you don't want to fuck anymore. And then you not having sex ever might be you guys just don't get along anymore. And then like three months into it, you fucking hate each other. You don't know why. And you're not sleeping together. Even. You're not having any sex. You don't do anything together. And it starts over small shit. But anybody that's been in any relationship long term, I don't know how old you guys are. Sorry, I know he's so Run. hard to hear when he's at 1.5. Are, but if you've been in real relationships long term, these little things will pile up and fucking kill you. Sure. They're like the worst things. Relationships are not like this puppy, like romantic yeah. love constantly. It's doing the small things every single day to make sure the relationships work. Yep. Okay. But you're, you're just like LOL chores. Like, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like, I, mean, it makes... I just think that, you, like, why do you have to let it get to that point? I feel like Ask the guys that are doing the. Oh. The problem is that people are bad at people are bad at negotiation and they're even worse at knowing themselves, right? When the women are getting mad, or it's usually the women, but it's the cleaner person. When the cleaner person, let's call them for the sake, Jordan, gender neutral. Is it with a Y? Is it with an A? We'll never know, okay? Jordan, very clean. And they are incredibly frustrated because every day they come home, their partner's home before them, and their partner, I need another gender neutral name. Uh... Riley? <laughs> Riley? Riley's kind of used for both. Devin, their partner. So Jordan and Devin, okay? Jordan comes home every day, and Devin is there before them, and there's dishes in the sink. Uh, there's mud that's been tracked in a little bit because the boots have been cleaned up, and Devin's jacket is thrown over like a, a, a counter or like a chair, right? And Jordan comes home, and every day, Jordan's like, fuck, I'm tired. I don't want to have to fucking clean up somebody's shit. The problem is that Jordan thinks that, cleans up Devin's shit, and then goes in and sees Devin, kind of annoyed. Devin's like, what's wrong? And they don't really want to say anything because Jordan realizes that it's kind of ridiculous to be mad at them just over the jacket. Or maybe they do say something like, your fucking jacket was out again. And Devin's like, what the heck, dude? It's not that big of a deal. Like, it's just a jacket. If you just asked me, I would have put it away. And Jordan goes, ugh. And Jordan doesn't have, Jordan hasn't introspected enough to go, I don't want to have to ask you. That's the point. I don't want to have to ask. We need to agree to some level of standards so that when I'm coming home, I'm not being confronted by a mess. And what Devin doesn't realize is Devin needs to give voice to, I'm willing to meet you part of the way, for sure. But I need you to give me way more grace because I don't care about this cleanliness shit like you do. I, I don't care if I came home and your jacket was on, over the chair, I wouldn't even notice. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. And I wouldn't be frustrated. So I, you're right. Maybe I should try harder. But I wish, I wish you would give me a little bit more grace and realize that I don't try. But neither of them, Devin and Jordan, don't give voice to any of this shit because they don't even know. Jordan just knows that she's annoyed and Devin just knows that they're annoyed because Jordan is being annoying and bugging them. And that's all they know. That's most relationships. And then that goes on for years and jordan starts to resent Devin and find Devin unattractive and then jordan doesn't want to sleep with Devin, right and it builds up over time because they've lost respect for Devin and they can't rely on Devin, right and Devin, this whole time is like jordan is such a fucking asshole just chill just stop being angry all the time like it's not none of these things are a big deal but they build and they build and they build and they build and they don't know how to communicate it and if you've never been in a relationship 
You don't know this. You might not know this. But if you've been in a relationship and you've spent time thinking about this, this is wrong. This is this is real. And like Pearl's response to just chores just tells me that she doesn't know much about relationships, that she has an incredibly childish experience of relationships. Because if fucking Devin, I know. Is it with an I? Is it with an O? Is it with a Y? We'll never know. Oh. You gotta ask questions, but before you ask the partner questions, ask yourself questions. Jordan needs to take time away and figure out what is actually upsetting them. What is it? What specifically? Because Devin's right. A single jacket over a chair isn't actually that big of a deal. But a jacket over the chair every day, plus every other thing that Devin leaves out, is kind of a big deal. Because it's a big mess after a week. And Jordan has to do most of the work. And Jordan's one noticing it the whole time. And having to remind Devin to do all these things, right? Jordan has to do the work to be like, oh, fuck. It's not just Devin not doing it. It's that I have to remind Devin all the time. I don't, I don't, this is why women, this is what women mean, for example, when they say, I don't want to have to be his babysitter or his mom. She's often not just talking about cleaning up after him. She's often thinking about, I don't want to have to be reminding him to clean up. Because the reality is that most guys, if you ask them to clean up after themselves, just will. Like most guys aren't assholes. Where if you go like, hey, can you just clean up your shit? But they're going to be like, no, that's a woman's job. Most guys just will. I meant to send this earlier, but here's an interesting study on gender differences for age preferences. Not letting me attach, so I'll just send on Discord. Thank you. Check out. Does that make sense? Anyone have Jordan's Insta? Death by a thousand cuts. Absolutely. Free Devin. Absolutely. And to be honest, if you're listening to this, you either dislike Jordan or Devin more. There's one of them that annoys you. That means you're the opposite partner in the relationship. So if you identify with Devin and you think Jordan's being like a bitch or an asshole, that means in your relationships, a lot of the time, you're probably gonna need to pick up the standard. And you're gonna have to realize that part of your partner's frustration is having to remind you to clean up, especially if you both agree to a minimum standard of cleanliness. Which by the way, if you're a cleaner person, you need to make sure that it's like basically the level standard that you can be okay with and reminding yourself all the time that that's the standard that you agreed to and to chill. Because you're right, a week's worth of dirty dishes and, and dirt and building up is gross and it does need to be taken care of however it sometimes can't wait today right it sometimes just can't. yes pearl has lived with both roommates and a boyfriend she's from money and has a yeah i mean some people are lucky and they just meet a partner where they're like cleanliness levels like their domestic economy like in interest and like desire are perfectly matched and god bless you folks you know what a lottery ticket. Chores! Yeah. Ask them! Exactly! What are they gonna put them exactly! Ask them! What's it mean if I don't like both sides? It means that you probably want a partner who introspects. You're probably annoyed at that point at the area. lack of introspection. Where you're like, this whole fight could have been avoided if Jordan had just realized what was actually making them Hostile annoyed, and Devin had just realized what, Devin, what Jordan was actually asking for, and like, had been willing to like, do that. Why are you think it's controversial related. to say that I think chores is a crazy reason to get divorced and break up a home and put your kid at every statistical disadvantage that you possibly could? No, chores? because it's not just chores. chores. Like, I just think that's a stupid reason. If you reason. can't do chores, you probably I can't did. pick your kid up on time. You probably aren't paying attention to the needs of your fucking wife. Okay, you probably then, aren't keeping other parts like if you can't do chores, everything else in life is probably falling apart. you should have picked a better guy. Cool. Well, and then you know what? Then you divorce. Then you divorce. Once you have kids, it's not about you anymore. I mean, I don't really, if you someone, no. if someone wants to get divorced, fine, but like, I just think once you have kids, it's not about you. Wait, that's a non-point. That's just a different point, Pearl. Now you're just saying other things, right? Now you're saying, okay, well, maybe if it's just them two, that, that divorce is fine, but it's not okay if you have kids. Okay, well, sure, but that's a different topic. Now you're talking about whether divorce is justified in that situation when there are dependents involved in the coupling. Like, that's just a whole other conversation. You're an important one. Can I just you say, can we stop using this excuse of just pick a better guy? 
as a as an answer every time women aren't happy about situation. Mm -hmm. Can we just hold men accountable and just say, please, can you help your woman out? If they if, okay, wait, 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 I'll, okay, I'll help you. They don't have they, a lot you, of you options. Can, you can help women. with chores. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow. Um, but but no one was arguing that though. No right. one was saying that I, the men shouldn't like, do I chores or do what he needs to do in the home. No one was arguing that. My whole argument. Stupid enough not to divorce over it. That's you saying that men don't need to. Yeah, I think. Aster, really? Aster, my whole. I think the issue is. So here's the thing I've noticed. This is going to be unrelated. A lot of people get interrupted often. And I've noticed. So sometimes in these types of dynamics, everyone's getting interrupted constantly, right? However, what if you've noticed, as Destiny has said more and more and more, and it's clear that he knows what the fuck he's talking about and that he has novel insights to bring to the table, people are going out of their way increasingly to quiet up and make space for what Destiny is saying. A lot of people who get like really, like I'm not saying Pearl is frustrated right now with being interrupted, I just, it made me think of this. A lot of people get frustrated all the time because they get interrupted. As a Pish major, do you ever shrink your partner? Uh, no, not really. Shrink my partner? No. Like, I mean, sometimes, like, we'll talk about, like, the fuck is so quiet? We should boy, try this thing for anxiety fuck. or, like, blah, blah, blah. But not really. I mean, as far as, like, mental stuff, like, Nick is. <sighs> Nick is solid. He's a solid Giga Chad on that stuff. Um, so not that really. That was enough for you. <laughs> the neurotic one is me, yeah. baby. Um, yeah. interrupting, though. Yeah. A lot of people who get frustrated because they get interrupted a lot, I feel really bad for them. But sometimes I want to like sit them down and I want to be like, how do I really nicely tell you that you're getting interrupted because we've listened to you enough times that we that we know almost every time you're not going to say anything anyone wants to hear. You're not going to contribute. You're not going to say anything novel. And in fact, there's a high chance you're going to derail us, right? Or send us back like 20 steps. And so a lot of people, like this will come up in the Discord a lot where like somebody will get really frustrated because they're getting interrupted all the time. And I'm like, oh man, I feel bad because you are getting interrupted all the time. Like you really are. But also, like, I, you never say anything that I want to listen to. And that doesn't mean interrupting you is appropriate. But also, like, how do I navigate a dynamic where you're just constantly saying nothing? And so, like, when I watch Pearl, I've been trying to figure out why her panelists don't, like, quiet down when she's talking. Part of it is her soft voice. But I think another part of it is she's often saying nothing. Nothing nobody wants to hear. Like, when she gets into debate and, like, bring up things, she's almost never really contributing to the conversation. Because when she asks a question, when she goes, hold on, I want to ask you guys this, people quiet down almost immediately because they want to hear it, which suggests to some degree, they know she's talking. They just don't care. They're just not interested. And like, I, I don't know what to do about that. I feel really bad for people who are like in that boat, but yeah. Destiny doesn't know what he's talking about when talking about relationships. He abandoned his child and mother and is in an open relationship and is bisexual. Alex, do not talk. Do not make those criticisms. You are not standing on a higher pier, my friend. Just a different one. The whole argument is that I think divorce is stupid over chores. I think that's stupid. I feel like you've never lived with someone that... Like she hasn't, like that's the only... That's, that's the, the only, only way you don't understand yeah, this. You've never, lived you've never lived with somebody that is like, you come home so tired, you know you've cleaned the house, you're ready to just sleep in your bed and the house is a pigsty. There's, it's funny. So did you, so did you, you know, know, was you in a relationship with a bum then? Oh, you've done it. So you sound like you've done it. Have you been in that situation? I'm not talking to, I'm not gonna go into that detail. No, but you're you're talking about like Pearl hasn't done it. I've, so obviously, if you're if you're talking from that standpoint, it sounds like you have experience. That's all I'm I asking. Do. <laughs> I don't want to get into like my personal stuff. Yeah, but like, aren't you saying personal stuff? And she's like, yeah, but I don't I don't want to go further into my personal stuff. <laughs> oh, so you've done it then? No. Okay, so you're basically in the same position. No, you shouldn't really be I, talking I just, because just you're say, in the same position. What it? Interested in talking about her personal relationship. Ugh. I, I, think, I think it's really, I think it's really funny. I think it's really funny that when we have these conversations, we say "lol just chores, lol just chores." But can you steal man in this instance, please? The implication is sexist men refuse to do housework. Most men do housework. They also work longer hours and more physical jobs. Can you jobs. steal man men in this instance, please? The implication is sexist men refuse to do housework. Most men do housework. They also work longer hours and work more physical jobs. Just feels like the logic is men are lazy. Well, okay. 
you guys want my crazy insight that Nick and I had in our relationship. So <clears throat> I will probably always do more work, like financial work. And I do more of the domestic chores. So you might say, that's an incredibly imbalance. It's kind of boring Nick just when nobody's laying talking in the laurels of luxury, tough. never having to do anything. No, because a really important economy that I think all relationships neglect and women are not often right, willing to give voice to later. is the emotional. I'll start out a conversation and with, yeah. Nine so in times America, out of ten, in a heterosexual in relationship, Ohio, the man oftentimes is inputting I mean, more uh, emotionally than the woman is. Now, you might be like, what, do mean, what the fuck do you mean? Men are emotionally you, shallow, you know, blah, 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 blah. What I mean is, when somebody is shit, feeling right? anxious, when they're feeling scared, they when they're needing comfort, burn, when they're needing support, like, nine times out of ten, it's the woman asking for it. I'm not saying that he performs exceptionally every single time. I'm not saying that. And, of course, there are dynamics where that is different, where it's the woman emotionally investing nine times out of ten. Right? In the movie, a lot of times, though, a whole Ohio, element of, of economy that people neglect to talk about fact, is the emotional economy, right? and actually in What the are the emotional dynamics? So I'm not just talking about That's talking crazy. about your feelings, but also, for example, offering Where's support and regulation for the floor. other person. So if your partner's oh, yeah. upset, and That's even if you heart. fail... You come up and you try to sit beside them and, and rub their back to make them feel better. That's investing country, emotionally, which is great, by the way. Based thing to do. Well, Very healthy. However, what we realize in Nick and I's dynamic is emotionally, I need a lot. Oh, dude, come on. A lot more than Nick does. Because Nick's pretty solid on his own. Um, Nick illusion, needs actively not. not having things. That's the best way for me to oh, give back to Nick, is just to not ask for things. To just give him space on his own, right? And so, a lot of times, men... Grab these especially like a modern the man on the lawn a good modern man often stop. spends a lot of time Feeling in his no relationship evil. trying that's to figure out specifically the emotional vulnerability no piece because that's what women are asking for and they mean it they mean it because that is an area that men can really give to their partners in. Got rid of so a lot of men ministers. actually invest a ton uh, of time in trying to figure Arthur. out how to emotionally basically the like, yes. be there yeah, for her. Bitch, like, that, what that does that look like female. practically? Because it's not just him talking had, about his feelings. Most of the time, it's him responding properly hey, to her talking about her feelings. Did, and did you hear about the a lot of men have to learn this. A lot of times, it's not just problem solving for her. A lot of times, it's just like rubbing her back and being like, yeah, that sucks. I'm sorry. You know, if you heard about the shitty boss, man, I just want to punch your boss for it. Even just that is emotional investment, which is based and good to do, that a lot of men are increasingly doing. I, know they had people that were doing, I don't uh, think that like men are just lazy. On the, the problem is that we haven't even had a word for something like also. mental load, right? We don't really talk about that. Funny. I'm going to suspect That's in so all of this, in the financial uh, labor and all this stuff, there's a mental load piece detached as well, right? So in the case though. of I mean, the financial, for struggling in, F22 would have in to most be relationships, huge. men are doing a little like bit more on average. Every time they there's one partner typically thing. working more than yeah. the other, but both well, are usually working. So both are putting in labor, and usually the person who's doing less of the financial labor is making up for it to some extent with the domestic labor. The question is, who has the mental load of the financial economy? Which one of the partners is thinking about tax season, is thinking about whether or not their bills are covered this month, is yeah, realizing that if their bills aren't covered, they're going to need to take extra hours at work. The mental load almost always is on the man financially. Almost all of the financial load. It certainly is in our relationship. Absolutely, right? And I gave that over to him, right? So when we're talking about all of these things, there's a whole element that's being missed a lot in the conversation, which is the mental load of the economy. Women are the ones, by the way, for the most part, that have come up with the concept of mental load, of explaining why in the domestic economy they're dissatisfied with men. And it's because men aren't carrying the mental load of the domestics. The issue is that we need to remember is that when this imbalance exists in other domains, like for example, in the case of financial economy, men are carrying almost all of the mental load. They're the ones thinking about the bills and the budgets and whether they're gonna make it more often. And when push comes to shove, if you're not going to make it that month, who is most likely to just assume that they're working extra hours that one that month it's going to be the man they're not going to make enough he'll just assume okay i've got to i've got to work extra hours it's not even a question most of the time in the coupling that the man is going to do more work the woman also will assume that if they're not making it that the guy is going to pick up more work most of the time right that's the mental load piece and so it's 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 shallow to say like men are just lazy
And it's shallow to say women are just like money grubbing and selfish. <sighs> the issue is both are kind of true and both are really wrong at the same time. All right. Facts and tags. How's that for steel manning the other side? We good? Thank you. Thank you for the uh, super chat. Why doesn't Destiny ever bring any of that up? It just seems like his takes here are not nuanced at all. I can't speak for Destiny. Um, I don't know if he's thought about mental load either, to be honest. I'd be curious to know if he's even considered that concept at all. I think he's looking exclusively at labor hours, like literally physical input of labor. And I don't think he's talked about emotional labor at all. I feel like this has become a changing dynamic in heterosexual relationships. As a nurse before cancer diagnosis, I was the one to pick up the extra hours. Interesting. Feel yeah, like I'm not saying for all couples. That's why I said pop, nine times out of 10, it's assumed. Probably it's assumed that the so person making more money or the person, because there's gonna be some change. Like for example, if one person has a job where they can't pick up extra hours, then it's gonna be the other person picking up extra hours, like obviously. Or if it's a situation where one person's already working 60 hours a week and the per other person's working like 30, the 60 hour per week is probably not gonna pick up the hours because it's much more realistic for the 30 hour week to do so anyways, because going from 60 to 70 is like, that's an insane work week, right? Convince her that you're a philosopher king before you get married and then talk to her about your issues interpersonally. And when it comes to like emotional labor, I don't know if there's actually a clear way that this gender lead, like this, this gender labor or mental load falls out because there are absolutely dynamics where the women holds almost all the mental load where she's always checking on the guy and trying to make sure that he's happy and doing most of the emotional labor, supporting, encouraging, all that stuff. That is very common, but I also have increasingly been seeing relationships where the roles are entirely reversed, where the guy is doing most of the like mental load of like, oh, I don't upset her. How is she doing okay? Is she okay? Is she feeling all right? And also doing most of the emotional labor. When are you going back to fresh and fit? Have you considered teaming up with Aaron and Pixie? Uh, I haven't considered, I'm not super, I like Aaron and Pixie, but I'm not like close to them. So I don't know if it would make a ton of sense for us to like team up. Um, and I don't know if they agree with me. So it'd be hard for us to team up because I'm concerned that if I went in with like, Aaron and Pixie, we'd be disagreeing more often than we're agreeing. Um, so that would be a really bad team up if we're like constantly dismantling each other. Um, when am I going back? Uh, I gotta afford a plane ticket to Miami before I go back. So. You should read my semi meme post. I see you, Jake Sully. Maybe the actual thing to take away is that we need a better accounting of the work being done in other domains. Sometimes I think, ooh, that got jumped. Uh, sometimes I think people don't even think about these other domains when they get locked into a particular framing. They almost never do. Like this was an issue Nick and I had, is that I was like, but I'm doing all the house chores. I'm way cleaner than you. I'm cleaning up more often. And I didn't say this out loud, but I'm thinking about it more than you are, which means I'm reminding you, right? Which is annoying for me. And he didn't really have the voice until like later where he was like, I get that. But like when it comes to like the emotional economy, like I'm investing way more. You're the one who needs cheering up, who needs support, who needs to like talk about your bosses and stuff. I'm a stress case. Like it just, it is what it is, right? Um, that was an element that we'd never considered. I haven't really heard of anyone talk about that. The main thing you'll ever hear anyone talk about like the emotional economy will be like some like trad Connie Christian guy who he's like, yeah, women are crazy emotional, right? <laughs> and it's just like, good job. Well done. Un unsophisticated interpretation of relationship. Thank you. But then when I go on any Red Pill podcast and I say, what is a perfect wife? What's a perfect woman? The only thing that the men say are women that do chores. I want a woman that takes care of the house, that cooks me a clean meal, that makes sure that my home is in order. Those are chores. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. Do you mean library? Yes, that's a really good point. My wife is doing all the financial paperwork and most of the baby caring, but I'm still in university and working part time. That's, that's another dynamic that people don't talk about is the economies are always in flux, right? Nick has been feeling super sick for a while like say he has been if nick's been feeling super sick for a while it's reasonable to presume that i'm gonna do most of the chores and i'm gonna do the cooking because he's in bed right when i'm sick he does basically all the same he's doing all the chores he's the main one working and i'm the one like being taken care of almost exclusively right so these things like come and go right if somebody's in a long-term thing like they're finishing up their masters in their dissertation it's pretty reasonable to be like hey 
just negotiate it. The next three months, there's a reality, I'm probably not gonna be able to keep up with all the chores and, and work that I've been doing around the house. How do we negotiate this so you don't hate me by Could the Could you end? give a quick example on something you disagree on? Are you not a socialist, feminist, dem? Um, the something I disagree on with uh, Pixie and Aaron. I'm not a socialist. Uh, like I'm not. I'm not a socialist. I'm a. Which one is it? I always confuse Dem Sock and Sock Dem. Um. Doesn't matter. Uh, on the Fresh and Fit panel specifically, I disagreed with. I disagreed with the directions that they took the conversation a bunch. So she said things like they said things like women are better able at handling stress. And I'm like, I know what Pixie's saying here. She's talking about the fact that like women have better support networks and therefore on average, when you come to like major stressful crises, women tend to fare better overall long-term because women have better social networks and supports. They already have emotional systems we set up. Back up for the the whereas men tend oh. to. <clears throat> that is not the amount of groundwork you have to lay in a fresh yeah. and fit debate to convince people, even a modicum, that women are better at handling stress is not worth it because it's not that important of a point at all, right? What? And so I think the issue is that with Aaron and Pixie, at least on their fresh and fit Sucks performance, like fucking, the angles you know, of attack that they went fucking, for, I would be AMS like, to, I would literally be like, no, like, no, please. Hell. You're like, you don't realize this, but you're strong arming us, strong arming us into like the worst position to have to argue from. Like, don't attack women can handle stress more. Say, women are not more lazy. Cause that's what they try to say. Don't be like, women aren't more lazy. It's just, they're, uh, a lot of their a lot of their labor aren't valued by dollar signs, right? Women are great caretakers, right they there. take good care of kids. And, and you know, the classic there. mom type, where she's no cooking and cleaning and raising four children. She's got a baby on her hip and she's she's Both sweeping and mopping. And she's driving a kid to the, to the thing and fuck. she's getting supper yeah. ready on time and supper's like on the stove by the time husband comes home. Like, women aren't lazy. They just prioritize different things, which is fine, right? That's the argument to take. King, there's other relationships than just men and women. I've lived with other people and I know what I'm talking about. Okay. So there's just because it's normal. But we're talking about something specific though. Now nah, we're talking about the chaos. Oh yes, yeah, somebody reminded me that they defended the pay gap too. And I would not, I would not go into that. Cause there's, again, Pixie was angling towards the nuance of which, which the domestic economies. I'm just, I'm just living now. Pixie went into the argument of basically that like we value women centric labor less like nursing and education which is true we pay it way less right which is true and an interesting thing but they started out by just saying what do you mean the pay gap isn't real and it's just like so is this if you just broadband group? defend the pay gap you're losing the entire audience right what you have to do is be like well the pay gap in the way that they meant it in 2016 isn't real no, but no, what no, is no. real is for example women select careers that are different than men and those careers equally valuable to others a policeman is just as important as a nurse hey. the issue is that we'll pay policemen more right especially i don't i don't know if that's the case in the states actually i, I would suspect that police are probably paid less than nurses but in canada um a lot of nurses depending on the province will start lower than policemen not in my province specifically, because we pay our nurses top dollar, but. First time pooping. <laughs> it's your first time ever pooping? Are you okay? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's probably, yeah, but like, I like them Almost just certainly fine. looking like it's going to be us in here. Also, not doing chores in the house and what that brings to your home. Your home, you're supposed to have peace and everybody's that. fighting. I understand right. that, but we're talking but, about something specific, though. All right, thanks. And also, just to add on, if 90% of college student women are initiating divorces, that means speak into there the are mic. a lot. Of... Wait, what's wrong with my mind? You are not you, speaking you, into you, the when mic. When you turn your head, mm -hmm. you're not like you have to move. You, like you, you got to be speaking like right looking, down. But it's looking... covering my face. No, I, I, it's not. I, it's not where it's take, at. Take it's it down. That, it's when you take turn your head and it's lift, when you... lift the mic. So you will turn to look at Michael. No, you got to you got to lift it by like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Push it down. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Thank you again. There, a bit more. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, oh. Just put it down. Just put it down. It doesn't move like that. Like that. It's not. It's like it's gonna knock me out. Loads of hinges there. Yeah, let me, yeah. Come on, bro. You got this. Oh, nice boy. Just moves. It's so awkward. There we go. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, we'll see about that. Thank you. Okay. okay. Talk right now. Talk to you. Talk to you. Talk to you. Well, yeah, the point I wanted to make is if. Okay, we're caught up. 90% of college students, mm. women are uh, basically initiating the divorce. Wait, that means there are a lot of men that are bums. Do you not oh. think? No, it just means you probably make bad choices. So those 90%, all of them made bad choices? I'll say a lot of so them made, I'll so say a lot of them must have made, there, I'll say a lot of them must have made bad choices. Well, I agree, but it's the men and women making bad choices if we say that, right? No, she's, not, she's not saying that. Oh, okay, she's cool. not saying that. No, she's actually trumping you right now, bro. Bro, mm -hmm. don't help her. Okay. No, 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 I just feel like when, when the stats are so high, mm. like if it was like 60%. I mean, that she's actually raising a really good point. If it's the case that women are just always choosing the wrong men, why are there so many wrong men out there? They're just, all these men are bad choices? Isn't that reinforce her point? Which is that there's not a lot of good men to pick from? This guy's an, an accidental feminist. Mm. You can say it's just, you can put it down just the bad choices. But when it's 90%. I never said all though. I just said a lot. Yeah, but it's also proven that a lot of men are bums. Is it? Is that well, right? Yeah, because that a lot of women proven. are feeling the same way. Well, because you feel, because women feel a certain way, that means it makes it Thank a fact. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Well, if they're reporting Dad, it, a lot of women are reporting to say. Wait, what? <laughs> exactly. They're reporting yeah. that one of the reasons that they've initiated divorce are things like the man's not understanding helping out with other responsibilities. Okay. That's one. That's one aspect. Yeah, exactly. But well, that's what we're discussing. Do you think the women that uh, just choose men over superficial things, and when it doesn't work out because he's a Chad and Tyrone and he cheats, do you think they they add that to the list as well? Did they did they come out with accountability and say, you know what, I picked horribly. I picked the guy because he was six foot six and he had a big willy. Do you think they put that down as well? No, of course they wouldn't. Of course that. they don't. Exactly. But so you're, you're just, only hyper focused on one no, thing. No. You're hyper focused because we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes this one aspect. Okay, let me, okay let's talk on. about something else. So, another reason that they reported mm -hmm. initiating a divorce is because they don't have to tolerate bad behavior. Back in the days. Bad behavior. So, yeah. back in the days, women went through a lot of abuse, financial abuse, emotional abuse because of the fact that they didn't have financial security. Mm -hmm. They married just to get that financial security. Mm -hmm. And now their college, bro, they go going to earn a lot of money when, when they graduate. So, now it's like, I don't need you to really rely on, I don't need to rely on you for financial support. I can actually make decisions because of the way I feel now. Now you're not making me happy you're not trying to make me happy so i'm just gonna leave i've tried to com like communicate with you and we're, we're not getting anywhere so now it's really because women can okay let me ask you this question yeah you know comparison there are good men but they don't choose them aren't they choosing the top 10 percent of men wait so women are hypergamous and only select the top percentage of men but also all the men that they're selecting aren't the good men they're just the men that all the women select who are the best men but not the best men because the good men are the men not selected which are actually would be women dating down but those are the good men but also women only want the top men and only date the top men and top men get all the sex and relationships explain that one to me you're funny explain your worldview it's not really really relationships. who do you think is easier Everybody to please knows. About 12 seconds ago. Be real, man. Be real. Who's easier to please? You know the answer. Everyone knows the answer. Everyone knows the answer. I think men are more simple. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, I would have to real. agree. And you, you knew that as soon as I asked yeah. you, you knew the answer. So, it's, so with that knowledge, when we all understand that women are probably more complicated and complex, and it's going to be harder to please her because a lot of times, like, you lot's opinions and, and feelings change like the wind blows. But, like, it's going to be a hard task to keep that person happy m majority of the time. Whereas but a man, are you trying though? Are you trying? That's the point. If they're just like literally leaving their marriage just because they're just not happy, mm. that's that's nonsense. But if they're actually trying to communicate it and the man is just, it's not getting anywhere, then there's a problem there. That means this woman is actually trying to communicate how she feels. And the reason you might think... They think 20% of men that can get that can easy get relationship as a good man instead of settling for a guy who can get with nobody, it not hard to solve why they're no good man. <laughs> I feel like I'm beating up on a little kid. Women are hard to please. It's because you, men are so used to not listening to women. It's such a normal thing to just say, she's crazy. Everyone listens to women. What are you talking about? No, you don't. Okay, everyone okay, okay. To, in our current society, yes, everyone does listen to women. No, they don't. No, mean. people don't listen to men. Even men don't listen to other men. What? You just heard what I said. In certain... Okay, you explain. Heard you heard explain. She didn't hear because she's not listening to you. Let's go! Let's go! I know we're on the same team! That's the truth came out, bro. There's always truth in jest. There's always truth in jest. In some areas of life, men are completely barred out of it. So one thing about where I'm, what I'm studying, I cannot stand the hatred of white cis men all the time being the reason for everything being terrible. I feel like you mm. guys get a very bad... You can't keep saying high, high status men are good people. This is not synonymous. That's my point, though. The issue is that these guys will say women want high status men, right? And so we need to be these high status men. But also, women won't date good men. Like the problem is that like we're saying all these things, these, these, this worldview is synonymizing high status man with a good man, right? If you ask the fresh and fit types, or if you ask Andrew Tate, they're going to tell you that high status men are the good men. They're the men that women want. They're the valuable men, 
right? I agree with you. The issue is that like this worldview where you're saying women are hypergamous and they want the top quality men and top quality men get all the women and they are valuable and they're more important and they're what all of us men aspire to be, but also they're not the good men. I, this is the part that like really falls apart, right? Is saying the top status men is what we're trying to be and they're not the good men. That's the problem. That's that. This is where it's not adding up. It doesn't make any sense. Does that make sense? Did I explain that properly? Right, but there's no. Phew, I'm feeling a lot better about the take. I I disagree with this, by the way, because I even the hypergamy stuff. I don't know how true it is. Like even this hypergamy stat data is looking worse and worse and worse the more we research it. It sounds like it was pretty miserable data that got blew way out of proportion. So it's like, if hypergamy isn't even true, I don't think women are going for high status men. They're probably going for men with high levels of charisma that are decently attractive and probably the more attractive, the more likely that are to get more women, right? And men that make them feel sexy and uh, safe is, is broadly the women, the men that women are going for, right? And typically within their socioeconomic class. There's not a lot of people like going way above their socioeconomic class or way below. Education is everything is always your guys' fault and that <coughs> reductive uh, um, view on life does not actually get us anywhere. So in that respect, I agree. It was 109. I didn't actually add your dono, that's why. I didn't add it at all. I added somebody else's. View that men are not listened to at all in a lot of areas to the point where I feel like there's going to be no men left in academia other than like engineering and sciences there's, there's no nobody's going to be wanting to study literature because what we're talking about is it's just but the US government says having a father is not important for the kid's life but non sequitur but other point but other point okay that previous point wasn't true but what about this other unrelated point just degrading them in a way that is it's just terrible can I can I go to one of your classes with you Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, not, do you, do, sorry, do you not sorry, why do you I think come? society <laughs> why do you think society is not listening to men? The richest, most successful in the world are men. The people that make well, decisions, well, the well, leaders well, are well, men. Well, 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 yeah. Yeah, but that's like saying that's, 90, like it's at least like ninety something percent that are in that leadership role. So all but, but, we but do that's is that's like, that's like, that's like, you listen to a small percentage of men. That is not so, a small percentage. So what, what, percent, what percent? What percent? Wait, wait, Esther, stop cutting me off. I go okay. What what percent of men are in those leadership positions? What percent of men are in, in those positions? Well, in, in terms of ratio, in, it's in, about uh, ninety something percent no, no, to women. What, what, so, no, I'm saying what percent, <laughs> what percent of men what? out of a hundred men you meet, what percent of men are in positions of power? That's not the point. Okay, no, the no, point, no, 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 actually, it's not the point. Just point. because yeah. you don't like the question, mm. you have to answer the question. And what percent of men out of a hundred men? What percent of men are in those positions? But that's not the point. No, no, answer the because question. Because she's yes, trying yes. to say what she's percent? trying to say that we don't listen to men. Because when we say we don't listen to men, by and large, it's saying we don't listen to men as a whole. There's a small percentage of men that are in power. Yes, and oftentimes Not they- Not a small percentage. And you percentage. can see that we don't- no, In the parliament, most- what, let, let's, take, let's take- Let's take the parliament. Let's take parliament. But this is a place of power. So, okay, exactly. out of every 100 men you meet on the street, what percent of those men are in parliament? No, okay. but what I'm trying okay. to say is, can you, can you, can you, can you, no, 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 Aster, Aster, we're talking about Aster, listening. Aster, we're Aster, talking about Aster, listening. Aster, Aster, we're changing Aster, the topic. Aster, no, you keep changing Aster, the topic. Aster, Aster, it's the same topic. I'm it's not. You, answer we're talking about if, if you answer the question, you can get to it. Just answer, answer the question, you'll get to it. I'm not, because I think Aster, she's Aster, trying Aster, to revert Aster, a conversation. Aster, 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 answer the question. She's doing the, who is it? Oh, who does that where they say people, say person's name over and over and over. I don't know why I'm blanking on this. I know his name. Charisma is a part of status, though. In the middle class, we base value on arbitrary things like humor. HVMs aren't bad. They just have a ton of options and no incentive to commit. Thank you. Charisma is part of status. Of course, so is money. But just because something is a part of like a more global feature, like status, doesn't mean that you can't break status into multiple factors, right? Part of status is charisma. Part of status is money. Part of status is level of education. Part of status is family background. Bottle of water. Bottle of water. Bottle of water. Can you take this plate? Oh, you should take this check too, that's yours. Bottle of water. Bottle of water. Thank you. If you don't want to answer the question, you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, if you don't want to answer again. the question, you can leave. It's not that deep. It's can not I, Esther, deep. Esther, I don't Esther, want to answer Esther, the question. Esther, Esther, she can answer Esther, the question. Esther, Esther, no, because you're being disingenuous. I'm not. Esther, Esther, Just answer the question. Answer it's the calm. Question. It's calm. Answer the question. It's not a personal question, so you can answer it. Okay, we'll say the top 20. Okay, you think two out of every like, 10 men you meet, two are in parliament. 
No, not in parliament, in power. Okay, okay. So, in power. Okay, fine, fine. We'll, we'll go with that. So how, how but, does 20% of men represent men as a whole? <coughs> yeah, but if there's 90-something percent, there's more representation than for women. So when we're talking about listening, mm -hmm. the people we, we seem to be listening mm -hmm. to are men. Right, but I'm saying... They're the ones that are making decisions for society. That, that doesn't represent the average man. And we, are, we use this to make envy of them, and this is why we're not listening to them, and this is, this is why it's manifest... Oh! Oh! This is awful. They're literally just talking about separate points. Like... Pearl's actually bringing up a completely valid, this is the point. Pearl doesn't just say things that are always dumb and have like literally don't make sense. She sometimes does that. Th this is a good point. It's just not the point Esther's making. They're completely unrelated, right? Like I understand why she's relating them because she's like, well, you might say that men have more representation, but it's not average men that have representation. It's rich men that have representation, which is true. But in the case of women, it's not even really rich women that have representation, right? That's what Esther's saying. So she's saying they're different, right? Investing in these terrible figures of thank you, thank you. I haven't regarding added these. fields women integrated seeing a decrease in pay wouldn't a big part of this be explained by women flooding the market considerably increasing the offer while the demand remains similar thank you thank you thank you dun 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 all right let's read that again regarding fields women integrated Women's integrated seeing a decrease in pay. Wouldn't uh, a big part of this be explaining women flooding the market, considerably increasing the offer while the demand remains similar? Um, oh, you're talking about how like nursing is paid less than teaching? Yeah, probably. That probably unironically is part of what's driving down uh, the pay there. Um, the issue with job pay is that it doesn't I could be wrong. Okay, I'm about to speak some economic stuff that I could be wildly wrong. I am by no means an expert in economics in any way, shape, or form. My understanding, though, of like what a job is paid is not going to be as sensitive to things like market rules, such as like supply and demand, because of unions, right? Because all of the pay is more of a negotiation between employer and union, and therefore there's a number of like artificial kind of like socially engineered barriers and stopping plates that for example if demand did get really high that the price of the labor itself wouldn't actually drop because unions would prevent it from dropping right in the case of nursing right now nursing is chronically understaffed right by all means nursing should be increasing the wages of nurses because right now there's so there's so few nurses for the jobs that we have available because the turnover rate is super high and yet we're not seeing their wages jumping through in part because of unionized negotiations about what are agreed upon salaries like this is why in a lot of ways bureaucracies fail people because they create like they create protections that are well-meaning, well-principled, but the problem is that they fail to like react to market demands in a speedy way. And therefore, for example, during COVID, when uh, nursing was at like its all-time like maximal amount of need and we couldn't get nurses in enough, they should have been jumping up their pay by a large margin because doctor's pay was increased by a pretty large margin, but it didn't follow. In part, my understanding, I could be wrong. Somebody's probably going to send me a long email to correct me and please do is because in part of unions negotiated salaries for nurses in different provinces and states. That's my understanding. And US unions are only 15% of the jobs, I think. We're just talking about nursing specifically, in my case. And a lot of like female flooded markets are unionized, like nursing and teaching. Andrew Tate and Sneak on all these people that are trying to emulate this kind of masculinity because they feel like they're not being heard. These are the only reasons why these men exist. And now we have women being human trafficked and everybody's now not listening to women because we've taken over the conversation. I mean, so, me, me and Destiny, we did a, a, a reaction video earlier to the Andrew Tate uh, documentary. And I asked Destiny, like, why do you think so many guys like listen to Andrew Tate or resonate or, you know, follow his, his um, lead? And like, you know, it's a lot of guys, you know, they're looking for that leadership. They're looking for somebody like a father, father figure, like a role model to, to kind of, you know, stand behind because they feel like they're the, they're the guys, they're the demographic oh, that on. is not being heard. I, hold on, somebody just asked if I could join a panel. Let me just see if I want to. Do we want to go on a panel? I mean, is it going to make me want to jump off a bridge? Let's see. 281 viewers, that's pretty good, pretty good. Is it wacky? From being able to say, okay, but everyone who has a vagina, like, we're, we're all the same. Like, I don't experience that even to a further degree. Okay. Well, I would argue that that's where I think that gender is actually harmful and reductive. I think that genderism uh, is like the death 
I think that it is inherently misogynistic uh, to say that all women should have kids or I think that everyone is non-binary truly and that sex is the only thing that matters but also that it doesn't matter at all um so yeah I'd go as far as to say like interesting um, I'm like, curious, where does, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but Kidology, where, where do you stand on this? I'm, I'm curious, since you are here, we have your opinion. Uh, if you would like to, if you want to stay out of it, just let me know. Oh no, this is, I, uh, this is why I want to, I want to think about this, because that was a very interesting question. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, this relates. Like to, uh, not so Erudite uh, wants in too, so we're going to bring Not so Erudite in. All right, hold on. Where am I? Oh. <laughs> thing you're talking about. Uh, 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 the pro. I'm gonna deafen. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Okay. I have to fucking cook. I don't like. Uh, I'm not really looking forward there's to getting pregnant. Type like, of deal. there are certain okay. things like that where I'm just like but... not. But there's a there's a commonality in which you know not being taken seriously and equating that to womanhood is um very offensive to me. I think. Do you think that uh, that's not an oppression given like that? That's generally something that I hear talked about when people talk sure. about the oppression of women. Sure, but I but there are other things also. So like, I think that I think that most most people would view you as a as a feminine person. I think that most people look at you and and think that you are that you are female. I hope that I'm not offending you. You're not offending um, me. So, no, I'm a I'm a very realistic person on that standpoint. Okay, like, so yeah. I I really truly I'm not I'm not saying that to offend you. I'm I'm just saying that because it, it I think it speaks to my point. Um, in that so when we live in like a in a society like we do, and uh, you know males are seen as superior and we have things like pornography that are actively uh making like women or females like a like a like a subspecies um there are going to be ways that males act in your presence that will affect you regardless of whether or not you subscribe to them okay and i don't generally experience that in a way but that you are a female, I but don't you experience control. Roe v. Wade. You, ex you, ex you experience now, you're experiencing with the rest of people who have uteruses, that we don't have, like, autonomy over our, our bodies. And, and Is that enough? Know. Is that enough to make, like, because there is a common human experience, we all die. Uh, yeah, Ali, we do this There's all. a common human experience. No, 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 to clarify my question. Or Discord, wanting Ali. abortions to be a fact in our modern day society. Yeah, there's a common human experience. Do you want to join us? But is it enough, I'm saying I guess, someone, so, to make it so there aren't laws around. There aren't laws around men doing that, though, is what I'm saying. Like, there, there are laws around women and what they can do with their bodies and not men. Besides, like, you know, like, do not rape, obviously. Um... But that's not really your body. That's still you're using it okay. for. Okay, Ali, if you want to join, I just DM you on Discord. Uh, just um, let me know. So there's there's just like commonalities like that that are going to affect you regardless of whether or not you subscribe to them. I appreciate what you're trying to say in that I physically have those parts. I I feel like I feel like that's a big stretch to say that abortion as a topic affects every single female in the same oh, way come on it would be so um, fun i on. i also think that it doesn't have to be in the same way Ellie. we should get pixie on here too okay you just saying that it's generally affected so so you're saying that yeah. men are not affected by abortion laws at all uh i don't think i ever made that claim <laughs> well i'm just trying to clarify uh it, i think that they're secondarily affected right so like if if your if your partner can't get an abortion, I think that that affects you. But I don't think that okay, that's not a law made on a male body. Talk about this, okay? Yeah. So because fifty one percent of the population has the ability to be legislated, whether they are literally being legislated or not, because there are women who can't have children, and there are women who don't engage in birth control at all. Um, Slay. but I'm you're saying that. Yeah, so you're saying that generally this entire uterus legislation is something that affects us all and therefore I should well, be... Well, not even just legislation. I don't even think just legislation. I think the the war on the female body is uh, all-encompassing. Um, I think it starts from the moment that we start existing. Uh, through. I think, I mean, it's been proving that, you know, parents treat their their female children softer differently um the way that you grow up I, I assume that you haven't been you know transgender for your whole life i assume throughout you know some of your girlhood you were 
treated like a girl would be. You have a common experience of being um, spoken down to, of, you know, there's a uh, vaginal shame. There's uh, the fact that we, we bleed every month and yet, uh, you know, we still have to buy period products. Uh, there's, you know, there's period shame. There's, you know, cooties, there's slut shaming if you sleep with someone in a way that is just not going to. There are, there are commonalities between the female experience that are just, it's all encompassing from like yeah, from the moment we're born. You're talking about <laughs> a very wide ranging experience of yeah. the Western female. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm telling the you. global female, I think. I, I would I would say a lot of the things that you mentioned, like slut shaming and other things, they they vary from continent to continent. I mean, I would say it's probably the best. I would say like we're probably the least slut shaming. I think if you go to most other countries yeah. and cultures, you'll see <laughs> way more slut yeah. shaming. We're pretty progressive. Yeah, I mean, stuff. if you want to talk about globally, we can talk about like Fucking female uh, circumcision, right? Like we can talk about f- genital mutilation in other countries. Like we have. The question is, do you identify with that? I mean, and I think what, yeah. to, to reference something that Kidology not, had it, been well, talking about earlier. Really well, nice to, 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 yeah, stop! 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 We gotta let Weppy ask her question, then you can respond live. Go ahead. Just to reference earlier, the way Kidology described, you know, her, the way she looks at hyper individualism, both on the left and the right, and, and the way they differentiate. Um, one of the, the the differences, I think, is looking at identity as something which kind of defines you. These external realities, yeah, right. which I'm not necessarily arguing with, it's a range of possible realities, and many of those have happened to me. Not all of them, but yeah, of course, I'm going to relate to people who share experiences with me. But do I identify with that? Do I identify with shell shaming? When I talk about my identity. I, that's that it doesn't necessarily it, it obviously defines my built world that I live in and I make decisions within, but that's not really how I feel in a core sense of self. And I think what kidology is talking about is this this bigger, this deeper sense of self, which is actually more than um, the reality which is constructed around you and which is something that you're constantly aspiring to 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 reach to. I think it's it, I think it's it's bigger than there's than only one type and, and just well, just for I, everyone's I information before you go, just for everyone's we have one more guest that'll be joining us, real femme explainer. Uh, I believe Ali Drummond. So we'll bring her in as soon as she gets here. Um, I, I agree with you, and I would I would say that uh, woman is not yeah. an identity. Dot. It is a set of experiences that uh, that form your reality. I would say that um, I think that What's that's the, the problem between those genderism. Things? What's the yeah. difference between like, a I don't set of experiences that form your reality so, versus okay. an identity piece? Dot. Just so I'm, not, I'm asking so a good faith. I'm just clarifying that. Yeah. So I don't identify as as a woman. I am one. Right, like I don't identify with these rigid of set of rules okay. or these, uh, you know, certain sets of experiences that I'm like, this one feels good, right? I experience my life from from the moment I was born, and then my reality is informed by meal. my okay. biological reality, Dot. which is not something I can identify out of. Yeah, and what I'm saying is that exactly to your point, I experience the set of technically having a female body that doesn't mean that i have anything in common other than the very like on the surface level of having a female body and in fact well that's what i'm that's often what i'm often treated as a man because i'm often mistaken as a man like that's that's something especially when i had short hair like i was often treated as a man until I either spoke or um, someone just made made a lot of like assumptions based on not being able to tell, you know? And so I, I don't have this extremely um, connective experience with other people. I'm more of a gender capitalist, if anything. Like if you, if you need me to look female for a job I'll do my best to look female but like even that is is kind of difficult for me in some occasions and so it's it's weird to me that I'm like being told that I'm lying when I say that my core experience is not that of me expressly being female or that my experience that guides my day-to-day life is not commonality with every other 51 percent of the population female well that's but again that's not what that's not what i've i've said so i think that every single woman here has had a different experience and probably brutally different right like i mean yeah i think that it's been completely different but we but but it is still informed by our biological reality is what is what i would say even even, yeah and my biological reality is different from yours 
My biological but, reality I mean, is different from yours. I don't imagine, like, you look like a relatively small person. You probably don't dress very, like, I, masculine on a regular basis. Like, you don't seem do. like a person who would be mistaken for a man. But that's a regular experience for me. And so, like, the androgyny sure. of sure. that leads me away from being expressly connected to everyone else who shares my genitals. Sure, but there are certain experiences that you can certainly opt out of, but n you cannot opt out of a biological reality. What is that biological reality, though? Like, I have had that, a really hard time understanding female. what you think. Okay, and I'm I'm expressing to you that my experience of being female is highly different but that's, from yes, a lot of the every, things that you I'm, described. I'm, I'm expressing to you that every that every okay. female has a different experience, yet we are all still female. Well, I think, and I that's think all we you would, need to be. Okay, so I why should, should I? If I could jump in, I, I would say like probably all of us would agree that there's a number of biological components that women experience that women can also opt out of, right? You can take back-to-back -back birth control and never have periods. You can uh, get your uterus removed and never have periods, right? You can have your breasts removed. So there's like a number of things that like, there is an element of like, even when we're talking about like being female and identifying as female and like that experience, when we break it down into even like the simple biological steps of that, there are a number of things, particularly with technology that we do opt out of regularly. Um, yeah. In adulthood, I would yeah. agree with you. No, and I uh, want to express I, this really I, quick. I want to express this really quick. One second, one second. Because we have people, we have people who are a little bit confused in the chat. We have people who are probably just coming in. This is a discussion on whether or not I experience a community or a commonality that I believe in or that I experience with other females. This is not a, this is not whether or not I'm female, y'all. I am female. This is, do I experience that commonality? And my answer is no. And yet I was told that I was lying about it. Because you, so you experience you experience femaleness because you are a female and that's that's all you need. I wanna I wanna give some I, I, just real quick commonality just, ladies. <laughs> just real quick. I wanna I wanna give uh, some space, right, to, to some of the other people to, to kind of, of get in here if they wish. Um uh mm -hmm. I, I'm unfamiliar with uh, Allie. Oh, a... yeah. Yeah, I should probably change my name on this. Um, I'm still kind of a, a boomer for Discord, so I don't know how the buttons work. Um, but I have right a... Right-click your name and you can change it if you right-click your image. How dare you? Tell me this out loud. <laughs> Sorry, I was um, about to explain I'll it. I'll damn you boomer steps that, afterwards, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I actually wanted to hop in because I was talking to a friend um, about this earlier. So he's an atheist anarchist. He's much more articulate than me. Um, and he he made a really good point where, like, it's possible that there could be, okay, like an end goal where the transgender ideology, and I'm talking about, like, the ideology, not the experience, okay, when people are trying to, like, propagandize others. Um, he was saying that it, it probably will if the powers that be are trying to, I don't know, like, oppress humans that it would probably lead to like a transhumanist movement. Because if you think about it, like a lot of the angst that's, you know, a lot of the angst and the dichotomy that's out there, um, if you are born male or female, you automatically by birth share an identity with 50% of the population. But if you pursue more of a trans experience in your life, then you immediately trade that 50% identification with half the global population for like 1% identification, like a sharing identifier. So naturally you're going to feel more lonely and alienated, but I think that's like kind of the cost of it. His point was more so that like eventually we're gonna start questioning whether or not we're human. And that's an identity that we share with 100% of the population and uh, the devastating and, um, effects of that. Cause I mean, it's hard. Like if you think about it, what are the chances if you decide to switch your gender um, let's say you're born female, and I guess you want to identify as male. I think I think you might be non-binary. I have no idea, because um, I just got here. Okay, so I don't know. <laughs> but um, you know, if you're born male and you want to be a virtuous man, you'll probably have an easier time doing that, identifying with your biological sex than if you were born a male and wanted to be a virtuous woman. So that was just something interesting that we had um, discussion over dinner about that I thought was like surprisingly kind of applicable to this conversation. Cause of course you're gonna have a very unique experience. You, you're sharing an identity with 1% of the population. That's really hard to do. Who were you addressing that to? I'm sorry. I, I think you, I'm not sure. Cause you were saying that you're female and then I like, I got in in a heated moment. Yeah. So I have like no idea I who saying... identifies as what. <laughs> 
I was I was just saying that I'm female, but that I don't experience like a shared like union with specifically female people the way that I would share a more generalized union with, as you said, the human population. I am a human and I am a female and those experiences are not lost on me. However, that there's been a huge array of changes in that experience, um, especially since uh, I live in a more masculine body and because I don't experience a lot of the very gendered things. And so I'm like, I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, trying to express that Um, my sex is not something that I look to and I'm like, okay, this defines all of the experiences in any given portion of my life because it doesn't. Yeah. You're saying it's not for you. Yeah. For for you, that's true. But for most people, it's, it's not, you know what I mean? For sure. I'm not arguing that this was specifically because I, Lav said, I experienced a commonality. I forget. Yeah, you accuse me of lying, essentially, and so I'm just over here, like, I'm trying to be very charitable with with you, girl. Like, I'm trying to fucking express to you something that you may not I was inflammatory. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Let let her finish, and then you you can respond if you'd like. Uh, I want to give uh, Johnny all the space that they need. So, go ahead, Johnny. It's cool, dude. Like, I'm, I'm just trying to express to you. It's, I have these conversations a lot where I express to people things that they don't necessarily themselves experience. Okay? And so, the facts of my biology <clears throat> are very clear There's to you because I've told them to you. Okay. However, That's... the facts of my life experience are not very clear to you. And so, mm-hmm. I'm trying to be charitable. I'm trying to explain to you that I don't feel the same way about the female experience that you do. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. Is- I don't know. Like whenever, whenever I'm allowed to chime in, let me know because I've never been here before. So okay. So uh, oh, okay. well, since since uh, you're all here, right, and uh, mm-hmm. some of you are new, um, uh, I I have a very low key moderation style. Um, yeah, if yeah, everyone's talking over each other, I will interject and I will uh, nice. call balls and strikes as you. But otherwise, feel free to just assert yourself. Get in there. Don't raise your hand. No one's good. It's not school. No one's gonna call on you. Okay, but just get in there. Let's talk about uh, you. I'll keep you Let's online. You, Trust kid. me. I I can handle a lot okay. of women at once. So don't don't worry about me. Mm-hmm. Oh ahead. wow. Okay. Do, do you guys uh, do you guys think that a lot of women now um, are kind of lost on part of the female experience because we're not having as many children? I I think. Uh... I, I think um, our view of gender is mm-hmm. so fucked uh, mm-hmm. because it gender ideology was made up by a patriarchal biology system. Uh, yeah, I'll, and, I'll give you that one. I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> and, and part of and part of John Money, who is like known as like the founder of mm-hmm. you know gender ideology or genderism. Uh, Part of why gender exists is to rationalize women being at home. Um, so all of this, uh, you know, when when a when a female says like, "Oh, I I don't identify with um, being over sexualized," or or I don't identify with all these things, and and you know, all these people say, "Well, I don't feel like a woman." Well, woman isn't a feeling. Woman is a state of being, right? Mm-hmm. So there's no there's no you. Yeah, I, I would just argue to say that there's no genderism doesn't mean well, really anything is, when you take away this is not uh, true. like a harmful sexual stereotype. The issue, gender like, doesn't mean much. So it is possible that like gender ideology started from like a bad place. It, that I'm totally willing to grant that. The issue is that like gender is not meaningless. It necessarily isn't. It's deeply meaningful, right? Just because gender exists on a spectrum doesn't mean that it's just like irrational or that it is meaningless right like it, you're equating women to like a lot of these like biological processes like mm-hmm. uterus period cramps that's all uh, I abortion think okay but yeah. like elderly women are still women when they experience none of these processes right like we would still sure, call them are, elderly but women but but that's but an elderly woman has experienced those processes and even and people bring this up all the time to me they say oh you know like what if a woman can't have children and i'm like well mm-hmm. that's still a biological disease that affects a, wo- a female reproductive system like that's not okay but that's and not gender men, and just to be clear engenderment came 
way before John Money existed. We just didn't have the language for it. Like sure. if you go back yeah, to I ancient know. literature, we're still talking about the feminine and the masculine. Like th this idea that like gender is just sex essentialism is just like so strange to me because it's such it's such a devoid I'm... like leap mm -hmm. away from the way that we actually interact with things like parts of our identity, like our femininity or our masculinity. Mm -hmm. Like these things are engendered necessarily and in part by our culture, right? So like of course gender exists. Of course it does. Just because John Money sure. came up with the I, word I it doesn't mean it that if it I may interject just real quick, ladies, if I may interject, um since it is Kidology's birthday, I want to give her some space too. To, to, I just want to let everyone know it's her birthday. But I want to—I—I uh, I know birthday. that we started with you being unsure and needed to think. Has this helped you at all? Have you come to any at least tentative conclusions from this discussion yet? I just want to give you some space here. That's all. I do still need to think, but I do agree with not so erudite about this idea of uh, especially about uh, sort of sex essentialism um, and the importance of gender. I think gender is very profound and I think that's why it is so debated and so contentious, especially now when there are so many voices having a say on gender and gender identity. I'm not sure if I have come to a, a sufficient or um, not so contradictory opinion about last question especially uh yeah yeah i think just like a trivial example for instance when fd signifier and um his friends were reacting to me one individual uh professor flowers um i noticed just going back on everything that um professor flowers is um well biologically female but identifies as um at least uses the pronouns she um he and i found myself even now incredibly um i just think drawn a lot more to professor flowers and somebody in the chat just said uh you know why are you being so charitable to this individual and i couldn't explain it myself and so it made me think about sort of this idea of sort of just affiliation just for very irrational emotive reasons whether it is about uh, i don't know um this biology of being female or what have you and i do notice this in some interactions that i have as well but in terms of a more uh a more academic answer to this um i do have to think about it i'm not sure at this point i'm, I'm just curious thank you um, I kind of wanted, and hopefully you can stay to hang out um, and hear my stuff. By the way, I subscribe to your channel, Kidology. I think you're so cool. Um, let me stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, seriously, like a uh, super huge fan. It's been good to see you progress. So, um, okay, earlier I asked if, if um, any of you thought that there was a more comprehensive understanding of being a woman, being female, that is missing just because of the sheer amount of childlessness for modern women. So if you look at the UK, 50.1% of the female population is single and childless by 30. And we have these really fun, and I mean, I view them as fun, but I, I'm also Latina. So there's just some of the stuff that there, there's no way that I would ever like accept it culturally, um, like for myself. But, um, you know, the sex differences get pretty apparent once you reproduce. I'm kind of at a point in my life where I've determined that people um, have a really horrible understanding of femininity and masculinity just from that and that alone. That's an entire chapter of your life that a lot of women are not in in initiating these days just because of their own reasons. But um, even my professors that were egalitarian and social constructivists, the game changed really quick once they had children uh, and they found that, you know, the wife could stay up more. She was more sensitive to the children and the dad, well, he would sleep more. Um, so I think we like to play around with this stuff, but I would wager to bet that if, if any of you decide to have children, it's going to call a lot of things into question and i have friends that are egalitarian but you know yet still it will change once a woman is pregnant you'll be relying on your uh, man partner a lot more i've done that already so i think these are fun conversations but i also think these are very american western conversations if you go to like latin america the whole latinx thing uh, that's purely americanized and i actually think it's imperial but uh, i have a bachelor's degree in anthropology so the gender is a social construct that's coming from margaret mead she went and observed other cultures that had more than man and woman, right? Because that's what America would have under their Abrahamic underpinnings. 
But uh, so she would see cultures that had three or four genders. So you could go for masculine man, feminine woman, masculine woman, um, and then feminine man. She never saw a finite number of genders. And that's where I'm like, this no longer makes any kind of sense. There there can't be a finite amount of genders because we just decided to make it up um, in modernity. I mean, maybe other people feel that way, but that's not what she observed. And yet somehow from her work, we are now here in 2023, where now people are trying to be like non-binary, which it's their prerogative, but I think that's really hard to do because you have to try not to look like a man and not to look like a woman. And I don't know how, I mean, that just sounds really tough. Uh, th there's a lot there. I think the question that you posed originally of essentially is, is femininity emptied in part due to the, like the lack of motherhood? Mm -hmm. uh, probably to some extent in the same way that probably masculinity is emptied by lack of fatherhood because not because I think like these two things are essential to the masculine and feminine, but they are core parts. But I think child rearing in general demands a maturity, uh, like it, it requires it. And we have a population that's being forced into this like maturing process, isn't being forced. They're, they're opting for this maturing process later for a number of reasons, right? Um, and a lot of reasons are just benign and neutral and totally okay. But I think as a result of that, um, it, it, doesn't it, people are not being forced to like engage in some level of like kind of maturing and grass touching that I think like children necessitate people to do um, for sure um, about the gender stuff. Um, I, be, I mean, I think non-binary is a lot of times almost like a, it's almost like a political aesthetic of rejection of gender. Right. And so like, I can kind of make space for it because it's, it's a space that says I am rejecting all of these things, right. I'm not falling into any of them. And that might not capture most non-binary people, but that's kind of the way I conceptualize it within like an engendered world in my view. Hmm. Um, I think an answer... I... Sorry. Go ahead. Kodology. Oh, oh, thank you. So I think in answer to your question, Ali, I think at least from my perspective, I don't necessarily see it as just being about um, motherhood or not having children. I think it has, I would say just in simplistic terms, it has more to do with sort of the proliferation of prospective identities and life choices for women, which are more acceptable um, and the least acceptable, the most demonized, uh, at least find in sort of my environment, is that of sort of going down the motherhood traditional route, uh, which is seen as very um, anti-progressive and seen as not where women should be. And then on the flip side, in terms of there being a lack of an expansion of identities for men, a lack of sort of opportunities, say, such as um, men being um, check, check, husbands, check. say, um, or an acceptance of um, feminine men in Western societies and our societies. And I think at the same time, in terms of just there being that one idea and that one image of masculinity and what it means, check, there aren't check. the means or the uh, societal means which are making room or check, making check, space check. for that or allowing for that to happen. And mm -hmm. so I think there's just this conflict of interests um, between women and men um, that really don't help check, anyone check, check, at check, all. Check. So I think that's an issue. And with the UK, for instance, about 51% of women uh, being childless at 30, I think that also has to do with external circumstances such as the housing crisis in the UK. Um, I, for instance, cannot imagine having children because I live in, like most young people, in a shared house. I only have a bedroom. I think I think You're not allowed to have children, not allowed to have pets, um, anything like that. And I think increasingly with these external factors really influencing Check. our family making dynamics okay. and opportunities, and you have to that is having an implication, noise. I think, I would say even more so than just the idea of sort of having kids because the means of getting to that point are really not in place in the way that they were even 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. I, w I would also say that, um, I would also say that all of us are transhuman at this point, uh, the way that we're connected to the internet, the way that we're connected to our phones, um, that, you know, gendered, gendered roles in, in this technological age where, you know, men would go out to the fields and the oil rigs and do what they did. It's all being automated now. So, now that we're you know going up against the same jobs programming being doctors being scientists Is, these okay lines i'm gonna have to, i'm gonna have to step in here you think that's enough to make us transhuman 
uh, well, I don't think that we're transhuman right you, you now. Just, but yeah, I you think, just said I think in the way that. that our, I mean, the phone is like a second brain. I, it's, it's it's probably like an augmentation. So when I was talking yeah. about at the very beginning, because I think you're talking about how I said, um, you know, basically when you're born in male, female, you share uh, an, an identity with 50 percent of the population. So being being man, being woman. But if you pursue a trans gender um, identity for yourself, you only share that with one percent of the population. And so what my friend was theorizing, the atheist anarchist, he theorizes that it's going to bring more things into question because his perspective is what consequences would that have if we deny an identity that we share with a hundred percent of the population mm -hmm. um which is interesting i think uh, are we though i, I feel like humans have, i feel like humans have been doing that forever like yeah you could you can go back That's to like, saying, like humans do, humans are well, the only we'll animals that do let that. erudite oh, finish okay. what she's saying Oh, if, if that's what you were saying, then I don't I don't need to keep going on. If you're saying that humans have always been defying and like reaching yeah. past, I mean, this is why, for example, like Aristotle described us as like uh, like above demons because we're like not quite yeah, exactly. demons, but we're not quite angels and we're not quite beasts and we're either these mess of, of creatures. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys, so uh, I think that we live in, um, a, we're talking about propaganda because that's my big thing is just propaganda because I want people to make, you know, well-rounded decisions for their own lives, despite whatever crappy propaganda is out there. So I think we live in a really anti-natalist society. Like, I understand what Kidology is saying, you know, that the cost of living is high and having children is high, but people have been reproducing in like dire straits for a very, very long time. Um, and I, and I just, I wonder about the impact of that. And if that's the right choice for people, I'm, I also grew up like low SES in the United States of America. So is American poverty, it's like not the same as some global abject poverty that's out there, but it's like, you know, it was like bad enough. Um, and I'm still really glad that my mom had me and chose life. And a, a lot of women in my family that were low SES uh, chose to have children, you know, not under the best circumstances, but they did it anyway. Um, and and I would think that there's probably a lot of people out there that feel so intimidated about having a child that they wouldn't would never bother trying. And we've reproduced in the past. Like I, I make this joke a lot about uh, what well, we re, re, we reproduce during the Mesolithic, and that's because. Uh, a lot of the megafauna, so the large animals, a lot of them like died out when there was a big climate change and we were still having babies. And so it's like, I know times are tough now, but is it like so bad that we shouldn't be having kids? You know, I don't know about that. I try to be more optimistic. I, are you I don't... religious? Me? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm Christian. I've been Christian for like two years, but I knew I wanted to be a mom when I was 13. Can I ask, um, uh, just out of out of curiosity, I, I, I don't mean to interrupt, mm -hmm. but... um. Do we think that uh, having children is um, uh, an essential part of womanhood? In your opinion, Allie, please, uh, that you yeah. think that it's something that all women should, if they can, strive to do? Do you think it's a net good or do you think it's more of a neutral, everyone should choose for themselves type deal? I'm not familiar with your content. I'm mm -hmm. kind of getting familiar with what you're saying, but I don't want to put words in your mouth, right? Um, let's see. So... I would wager to bet that majority of women want to be mothers. For some reason, a minority of women has been able to shape Western society. So I would say disagreeable, probably like more masculine academic types. Uh, Kyla has talked about this before. So basically these women get in academia and they're like, hey, I have this great idea, um, progressivism and feminism. Let's just do it for everybody. And it's like, um, you know, like you might want to postpone having kids, but you know, does your average woman, I would say in general, a lot of women more so want to have children but i don't think that they're meeting the right guy to do so and that right i can't guy? oh my gosh i mean well okay you ever okay this, this is, is gonna sound this is gonna be dark okay we're this is gonna be dark um so from my position growing up low ses and i lived in multiple neighborhoods throughout central florida and i also had family that was low ses and multi-ethnic family that still like low ses um so a lot of people talk about when it comes to am i allowed to use the word abortion on here Yes, I don't think Okay, it's... on YouTube you can't. So I'm a YouTuber. Um, um so a lot of people like to throw this this thing around well like women are not having babies because they're they're terminating their pregnancies and they're having abortions because um they can't afford these kids. And growing up in the ghetto, I'm like, no 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 no. If she likes that guy, she's going to have that guy's baby whether she can afford it or not. Um, and I know people <laughs> tend to disagree with that. I have just seen women move like hell or high water to have that guy's baby. So like when it comes to childless women, I think that they're just not meeting that guy who's going to, you know, kind of stir in stir those 
uh, feminine instincts in her. Uh, and that's why I can't necessarily fall like 50.1% of women for being childless, you know, cause if I hadn't met my husband, I would have wanted to have a baby either. I'm in my third trimester right now. Um, so I guess that makes me biased, but it's also taught me so much right. about being a woman. Thank you. Yeah. I also had a miscarriage that taught me a lot about being a woman as well. So I think that there's just this other very important part of being a woman that is being neglected because you'll hear the rebuttal there's well there is pressure for women to have children number one okay biological pressure is always going to be there but i think i'm hearing this a lot from women who grew up in two parent religious households possibly religious i think that's what i'm hearing it from um and i don't think that's true to life because if the pressure was there i don't think we would have 50.1 percent of women in the uk being childless by age 30. um so i think most women probably want to have kids. And I think that they're being sold a lie again through propaganda that they're this special minority that wants to be childless. I and I think that's uh, really just unfortunate. A, just to push back just, just a, a small bit. I don't think feminism mm -hmm. and progressivism necessarily discourages that. I think it just makes the option that they, if they don't want to, mm -hmm. um, that makes it more of an option, right? At least is my mm -hmm. understanding. Well, um, we're, we're also a more educated, we're more educated than we've ever been. Um, okay. So we know that we, we know uh, that women have different options now. Women had no options 50 years ago. Well, so that's, that's largely sudden, due to feminism. I, feminism spearheaded that. It was the tip of the spear. Yeah. It got us in. Um, sure. Or, but, yeah. but now, but now also that we have access, access to like statistics, mm -hmm. education, we know that pregnancy is not necessarily healthy for the body. We know that there are a lot of complications. We know how women are treated as mothers in a patriarchal society where men do not value femininity, where men do not value motherhood the same way that they value uh, what they call intellectualism or brute strength. Um, so like, I'm just, I'm just going to push back. <laughs> like, so on my YouTube channel, I interview wives, uh, all the time. And I try to interview wives that seem like they're in love with their husbands. Cause my, my great conspiracy is I think women are marrying men that they're not attracted to. And that's why they're leaving them. And, you know, can't blame them. I would leave too. Um, I think that for some reason, women are attributing the behavior of a small amount of, I don't know, malicious or apathetic men in attributing that to the whole. A lot of the women I talk to who have husbands, who have had children, their husbands love their kids and they want to be involved. Like this is a very, in my opinion, I think it's like a misandrous assumption that fathers don't want to be involved with their children. Now, like, does a father want to be involved with a woman who got pregnant after a one night stand? You know, probably not. But if that man loves that woman, he's going to love that kid just as much, if not more. I, I don't, I don't know why that's like the default position. Um, and I, I mean, I've been pregnant in a patriarchal society. It's been going pretty good for me. Obviously that's subjective. Um, I will say, I think people overhype the pregnancy privilege on the red pill side of things. I don't think that is like legit. Nothing really awesome has happened for me so far um, in terms of being large well, and in charge. Yeah, and not in America where you only, where you have like a maximum of six weeks to spend with your baby before you get so I think I, I come from mm -hmm. the perspective of I'm a certified doula. So I actually know a lot mm -hmm. about, uh, you know, pregnancy. I a lot of this was in my curriculum, learning about different cultures, learning about how women are treated, how lonely pregnancy can be. Mm -hmm. um, and I yeah, and I'm not saying that there aren't good men out there that are ready to be dads and ready to live like a good virtuous life. Um, I'm saying that as a whole, uh, in the way that society is made up, it, motherhood is just not as valued as being a CEO. Okay. It's just um, not. Yeah, I understand that. I, I just, I, I guess I'm trying to understand, right? Um, so do you feel like feminism today, Allie, if I may ask directly, do you think feminism today is a more harmful or a more helpful force in society overall? <laughs> oh, God, I think it's so harmful. Um, harmful. Okay. Can you give yeah. me a, just a brief couple of examples? Because um, I want to get other people in on this, too, right? I want to yeah. get, get other opinions. I want to get uh, mm -hmm. some other uh, other thoughts in. But can you give me like a maybe 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 a brief example of some of the harms mm -hmm. it does? In your opinion? Um, yeah. So, okay. Let's say majority of women want to reproduce and obviously you'd want to be able to get a good man in order to do that. But then there's like the, the fear stoking of men, even though data statistics really doesn't support it. Um, my thing is how the H-E double hockey sticks, can you manage a long-term relationship with a man that you want to have kids with if you think that men are inherently oppressive? Like that is crazy to me. I didn't even have a dad. I did not even have a dad in my life. And I can still go around and be like, 
No, no, no. Like these men matter and these men are good. I mean, I have a brother. Obviously, I have a husband now. Um, men in the military helped me a lot. I think that changed my. I, I mean, I didn't have like a disdain toward men, but I didn't have like a, a true, sincere appreciation of men until I served in the military and I was helped by a lot of men. Do um, you think working there? Do you, you think cool that cool as fuck? Laugh, oh, just you. real quick. You are cool as fuck. Served in the military. I, I laugh, laugh. laugh. We can, we can <laughs> laugh. Please, please, please. Okay. I mean, she's not wait, wrong. But do you think? Up. Do you think? No, you are. You're pretty cool. That's that's impressive. Um, <laughs> and I want to make sure they say that. But I want to say, right, that I don't think that uh, feminism in and of itself is what's causing this uh, uh, people mm -hmm. to think feel men are just oppressive force, right? Like I know that uh, maybe the women who are considered themselves feminists can maybe back me up here. What, is is there well, anything can, to what she's saying? Can what we do you think? can we back up history a little bit? Because when we're talking about like birth rates specifically, we've all neglected to mention the fact that the more educated and wealthy a country is, the birth rate declines always. In fact, the more higher in socioeconomic status you are, the lower your birth rate is as well. Probably in part because the more rich you are and the more educated you are, the more fearful of the future you are. And that like, these are the people that will be like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to have a kid. Like, I don't have a hundred K income yet. And it's just like, bro, like <laughs> you don't need it, right? Like rich people are very like silly and they're like overly cautious about having children to like a maximal degree. So like, this is a really, really strong thing. Is is feminists like? Can you restate your question, Wick? Now that we've like backed up to there, are <laughs> feminists enough. destroying Dude, men? Is feminism, as a rule, like uh, posit that men are overall an oppressive force that is oppressing Not women? Necessarily. So, with Explain, feminism, please. as I understand it, is viewing the world in a perspective in which women are generally, um, women's needs and women's, uh, women's perspectives are secondary to men. That's, does that mean that men specifically are oppressive? Not necessarily, but women are operating from a place where their, their opinion, their perspective is viewed as secondary to men's. Um, uh, we can talk about like terms like the patriarchy. I don't really use terms like the patriarchy very often. Um, uh, but um, uh, because it, because it's kind of something that polarizes people nowadays, um, I yeah. would say that um, I would say that men suffer uh, from the the existing s system just as women suffer. Um, uh, I would say that um, feminism is is I personally think feminism is great um, because uh, feminists ha have historically been people who have fought for. Um, family benefits for have they pushed for benefits for for women for reproductive um, uh, uh, you know rights and and for things like that um, uh, but but not just reproductive rights but specifically for the family um, and for paid parental leave right um, yep. those are things that are incredibly beneficial towards um, women and men and children um, and so I don't think that um, it sure there are going to be like some people who you know, uh, who uh, the the super loud minority who are screaming about how all men are oppressive and evil, right? Um, I think the average feminist um, uh, does not think that men are evil or oppressive necessarily. The average feminist just views the world in, in the way that it historically has been, in that women's perspectives were secondary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would say, like, simply, like, feminism isn't doing it, but feminists definitely are, right? Like, like, third wave rad femmes, unironically, were, like, were engaging in, like, unironic misandrous man hate. Um, they were rewriting history. Oh, I, engage in I know you do. <laughs> All right. They were rewriting history Absolutely. to just be this story of just men oppressing women when it was actually just rich men oppressing everyone, right? And so um, I don't really, I, I think in the past, I'd like to blame feminism. Um, and I've realized more recently that it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of like any other institution. There's a pro lot of problems in the institution and the movement, but it's the, the real people to blame are the people, right? It's the feminists. It's the specific feminists doing the behaviors, like shitting on men and treating men horribly. Like th these are the problems, not the ideology itself, which I've kind of gotten around mm -hmm. to acknowledging. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, 
Well, what, one of the things that really stresses me out when we kind of start categorizing feminism as man hating, because obviously there is some sort of correlative here that we're all noticing and observing, but what I think feminism is engaging in right now is it's really tackling the relationship that women have to rape. And what we're going to see when this conversation is unpacked is that we're seeing a lot of trauma, right? We're seeing a lot of trauma emerge and people aren't necessarily good when they're in their most traumatized space, right? And so when you're kind of in that headspace, when everyone around you is talking about rape, when everyone's sharing their story and you're constantly in a deluge of like, uh, triggering information online. I can't even fucking log on anymore without like seeing some sort of cancellation because someone was raped. It's just like, it's horrifying. So one of the issues is that you have a lot of women, like Kyla is pointing out, who are individually triggered and they're and, and individually they might have these biases against men, much like incels have biases against women. And I think what's really important is that we meet people where they're at rather than this mass condemnation. Mm -hmm. I, also, I also think that because of, I don't think that the patriarchy is current. Right. I don't think that the the patriarchy, every single man right now is upholding the patriarchy. Every single man is evil. Not really. I'll be inflammatory to get, you know, views and attention on fucking Twitter and be inflammatory, but not really. Right. But they are functioning off of a set of rules that have been uh, naturalized for <laughs> decades now, even in their actions that now are like obviously very triggering. Right. And I think that these are the men that you would probably say are not well suited for marriage or for fatherhood. Um, mm, unfortunately, no. there's just like a lot of them out there. Mm. And you found a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I wouldn't say like, I mean, I don't know if you're done making your point, but I wouldn't I wouldn't even necessarily say that arrogance is um, like inherently bad in a man. Right. So like we're talking about these dominating, domineering men, which I don't think would even be most men. I think a lot of men these days, we have this crisis of masculinity. You guys have heard about it online <laughs> to, to no end, really. Uh, nobody wants to talk about a uh, crisis of femininity. So I think that there are right now a lot more men that are less dominant. I'll use the terms alpha and beta, but that requires like so much less to, to that more to talk about. Um, it's just for you guys to understand like an abstract concept. Okay. So I think that there's like a lot more beta men these days and there are alpha men. And so when we're talking about like the arrogance, which would be the narcissism in men, um, successful men, attractive men, have to be disagreeable to an extent in order to be successful in the first place so that we can like see them as viable mates. If he's trying to be successful in earnest, like that's very cool, good for him. Um, so we're, like we see these things and we're like, oh, that is so awful. But does anybody really want to be with an unsuccessful man? And it doesn't even just have to be like profession. It can be, you know, like a contextual social hierarchies, just having a successful man in the first place. Because immediately everyone goes to like the high status professions. And it's like, no, um, there are men that are earning less than six figures that are considered, um, you know, competent in whatever hierarchy they found for themselves. We don't necessarily want to be dealing with the men who would just say yes to everything and everybody. But this uh, is one of my, my issues with when we're... We're, we're, we're lost in kind of trying to define what female and what male are is that as we've kind of already defined that there's there's different people in different material circumstances right so uh, you know pre-industrial society is not necessarily going to have the same expectations on the individual um, and, and that's going to change how people relate to their gender roles as they're prescribed. And I think likewise, even in a single country, you're going to have people at different different classes. They're going to have different gender roles thrust upon them because of those classes. And so I think when we try to make these like mass generalizations, we just end up kind of, it ends up sounding kind of conspiratorial. And I think also mm -hmm. it ends up telling people who they are when they're standing there saying, that's not my experience. And I think mm -hmm. it's so much easier to just imagine us as having different experiences. Yes, there is something to gender. I think what kiddo reminds us is I think for me personally, gender is co-created, right? I think there are really affirmative, like existentially affirmative experiences I can have with gender. And those are often created with other people and how I feel in relationship to them. But I think mm -hmm. gender as this assigned category to like essentialize a single person is always going to kind of fall a bit flat. And you're just always going to be making these like very vague generalizations that don't really help us like address some of these, mm -hmm. some of these crises, which we all see, like we all seem to agree that there are these certain crises. Mm -hmm. I like um, that I, idea I don't, I don't... that gender is mm -hmm. that gender is co-created, and I'm I'm kind of actually um, Ali kind of responding mm -hmm. to your initial point, like your your way back point at this point. But I find these conversations about the woman experience really interesting because again, I am a person who lacks, for instance, the um, the reproduction uh, instinct. I like that instinct. Mm -hmm. And I chose a fabulous partner. I'm engaged. And um, I chose Congrats. that partner partially based on the fact that in our lifestyles, we don't want to have children. 
And so this idea that we are, that at least traditional women are choosing people based on um, their success as their individual gender is just, I, I don't even have a question for it. I just find it really fascinating to hear you guys talk about it. Um, so I'm trying to understand your last sentence. Do you think you can repeat it? My last sentence that... Yeah, like, because I'm trying to... Sorry, these are, these are like, it's not necessarily in my wheelhouse. So there's, like, there's a lot of things that you guys say that I have to like try to understand as you're saying them. Um, you were talking about like success per, for, are... per gender? Yeah, yeah, because when you're mm -hmm. talking about, when you were talking about like who you would want to be with or presumably who you are with, you know, mm -hmm. you were talking about their success either um, monetarily or socially as a mm -hmm. man. And yeah. so like that is, I, I mean, I just, I understand oh, okay. this because you're attracted to men specifically, but I, I find it really mm -hmm. fascinating, yeah. Well, like um, and most people are going to be heterosexual, right? So that's like, we can talk yeah. about these generalizations all day long, but it's, you know, like most people are going to do what most people do. Um, so in terms of like what's attractive, so I'm just, I'm just being honest. So I ran the metrics of what was an average man. So he's five foot nine, he's overweight or obese, and he's earning less than 50,000 a year because I kept hearing from women that they were just kind of think like, oh, I am in an average marriage. And so my, my perspective on that was like, no, 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 I don't think that we are dating average men. So it like, it depends on the metrics that you're looking at um because people like see that i'm light-skinned uh conservative pregnant married and you know there's a lot of us i'm just like oh clearly you just want this like white collar kind of what i got going on i call it periwinkle collar um but other women find men that are competent in their own social realms to be attractive anyway even if the money's not there like uh i actually i asked uh erudite you know because they were trying to flame her she's a progressive wife on my on my channel and i asked her i was like so like what do you look up uh what do you admire about your husband and the laundry list was long you know so like might not be a millionaire but he's got a lot going for him and i think we we really neglect that but i, I would just encourage women to listen to their bodies because uh, i thought all this stuff was nonsense for a very long time because uh, i didn't know that there were different like hierarchies of men different qualities wow. of men and that's just life you know i'm not even the to the top tier quality woman i've seen japanese women they scare me they frighten me very competitive um but you know in a good way she means they're very yeah. attractive weppy was uncertain what that meant <laughs> oh yeah well so i started thinking about this because i started listening to my ovaries and i would look around and i would think in public when i was looking at men uh yes i would sleep with him no i wouldn't i had way more no's than i had yeses but it's because I started thinking like, well, what what does like my vagina think is attractive? What are my ovaries like? Granted, women have types, but I was just starting to see across the board, there are some objectively physically masculine things that we think are cute. Have I heard men open their mouths and say things that made me stop thinking they were attractive immediately? Uh, yes, but that would be, you know, the, the first premise is, do I want to sleep with you upon like gazing upon you? Mm -hmm. So I know it's like we want to very much theoretically get into gender discussions and you guys are uh, this is y'all's wheelhouse you really enjoy this but um, life is a lot simpler for some folks out there if you just kind of listen to your body and what it likes. Yeah, I think I think the issue is like I understand their hesitancy to generalize in, in many ways because like generalizations tend not to apply to me very well right like I'm a person who falls into a niche that like a lot of these normative statements don't fit me super well. The problem is that they're normative because they apply to like probably 60% of the population to some extent, right? I think, I think Webby though, you touch on something that's really important when talking about like gendered norms, which is like rigidity of gender norms, right? A lot of times, particularly in like trad, uh, traditional movements, we're going to see like a, rig a rigid conception of gender that arises. And then they start kind of putting the, like the law, I've been saying this all straight, but the, like the law before the principle. So they'll say like, women must be like this when it's like, well, no, in most heterosexual relationships, women tend to do those things because they like them more and they're better at them. But that doesn't mean that it should be like this rigid rule. And I think like that's a large problem that's kind of emerged in like the 20th century, essentially, is, is our contention with gender, because previously, especially like the, the Christian traditional movement just tried to like rigidly inform of being like, well, even if your wife's a mechanic, the man's got to take care of the car because he's a man. And it's like, that's insane. That's stupid. That doesn't even make any sense. Right. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I agree I also, with that. Uh, I would also, there are some biological truths, like you want someone who is healthy, looks, you know, like he, you would have healthy offspring. Um, but then there are other, uh, I'm, I'm reading this book, Woman Hating by Andrea Dworkin right now. 
and uh, a lot of our reality is informed by like the fairy tales that we listen to when we when we're young um we're like uh you know we have these like valiant soldier men basically and that's and that's when you'll be happy is when when you meet this successful brave uh you know man which you know is accurate but i also think that it's a uh, we're in a capitalistic society in which the only luxuries we can afford the only way we could be truly comfortable is if we find some semblance of of you know comfortability I've got ammo for so you here. success money means that you can live a comfortable lifestyle in which you're not living to work right like i think that most women uh i think that it's in feminine nature to be uh you know to relax i think that i think that uh men are more um, restless, like naturally, biologically. And so mm -hmm. I think that women will sort of naturally, um, this is an essentialist view, uh, but I think that women will sort of naturally try to find men who can give them a lifestyle in which they do not probably have to work as much as they want. They're obviously outliers of women who really want to work, but yeah, I think that, I think that you talk about a lot of this, like it's mostly biological and I would probably say that I would probably say it's probably 50-50 on the fact mm -hmm. that we live in a capitalistic society and, and also bio biological. Yeah, I, I wouldn't I disagree it, that like some of it's, you know, like social. But I, we, I think when we're thinking about, you know, gender roles and stuff like that, um, we, we got to look at it through, I think, Chesterton's Fence is what, it, what it's called. I suck at the story so bad. Whatever. All I know is these two dudes, they saw a fence and one guy said, I want to knock down this fence. And the other guy told him and he said, hey, before you knock down the fence, you might want to find out why it's there in the first place. So, like, my issue is when we're always reeling against these gender roles, it blinds you from finding out which ones are going to work within your relationship that you wouldn't have known unless you tried. That's how I ended up in uh, in more traditional values in my relationship in the first place. My husband thought he wanted like independent boss, babe, uh, triathlete, physicist, everything. And it turns out he just really likes a woman who, you know, makes him breakfast in the morning. And I, I like making him breakfast in the morning. I did undergrad, I did all that. And I was, a, I was even a supervisor in the military. So I got promoted in three years. Um, and like how sweet he is when I, I feed him just means so much more than any A I got on any paper ever. And I honestly, I hated undergrad. So um, that's that's the only caution that I have is like, because that's what these general rules are for. Because I'm on the red pill side of things. And I would say like I'm kind of on the conservative side of things. The Republicans irritate me. But like the point of it is to see, okay, in general, does this does this woman like flowers? Let me get her the flowers. In general, does this man like a sandwich? Let me make him a sandwich. If it doesn't work, then you know that that gender stereotype was a miss, and you have to cater your behavior to that person's personality. It, it's it's not all gonna hit. Like there there's men that like to cook. You know what I mean? And there's women who hate cleaning, and somehow they manage to marry like a type A guy who loves cleaning. So this stuff is to be negotiated. I just don't think we need to throw the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to some of these gender things. Um, um, and I wouldn't say that it's all biological because we're not we're not living in the in the environment that we're adapted to. So you know, time to do it. I would call it just in and in, right? Like I think that I think that gender ought to be feminine and masculine, not male and female. So I think that you know, if you if you are very type A, if you are very masculine, you wanted to stay in the military, you wanted to rank up. I think that you would naturally find some a man who was. Uh, I, I think I found that in my relationship. I'm engaged to a man who's um, almost my direct counterpart. Like he's a, you know, he owns a company very successful, but in this position, I am the more masculine one, the more feminine one, just in conversation. And I think that that's our yin and yang. Like it's very, I think it's more naturally fine that, and I don't think that's, you know, necessarily sex. Probably is mostly, but. Enemy galaxy in the air. Enemy liberator in the area. Okay. Okay. This has been a discussion. Um, I hate to cut it short on my end, but it's we have gone on. Um, I'm, I know people here are tired, right? And they want to, you know, I want to go. I won't put it there. But thank you all for being here. I'd love to, to have this discussion with all of you. Again, sometime, um, Ali, I'd love to talk with you at some point. Um, I'll reach out. I'll add you as a friend if that's okay. Uh, Kidology, I'd love to have you on again sometime. Uh, just before we leave, what are we doing next week, gang? Next week, Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be talking about why is everyone so sad nowadays, right? Why are we facing an epidemic of loneliness, an epidemic of sadness? 
of mental uh, depression and things like that is on the rise. What What's going on, gang? We're going to talk about that. Tuesday, we're going to have a, a guest on for the call-in show. Um, and then Friday, we might be talking about the hashtag safer name. Let me see something. Interesting stuff. We that's not set in stone. I have to get the right guess with that for it. But thank you for being here. If you like this show, if you like the content, hit that follow button. Um twitch.tv slash quick TV if you're watching on someone's YouTube show right now or in the future on the VOD. You can find my YouTube on the link below. Let me fix that. I'm an engineer. Uh YouTube.com slash at Wick dash TV. Uh, we just got monetized, or we actually applied for monetization, gang. So, hooray. Um, our uh, Mr. Girl panel uh, went viral hey, a little up. bit. It's up to like 40,000 views, so it's going well. Uh, but anyway, we're going to write out. Are you going to be streaming after this, Erudite, or are you done? Okay, I'll write out to you guys. If you'd like, you can continue to have a conversation. Or, you know what? Women. Do whatever women do. I don't know. Yeah, how dare you? How dare you? Look at Wick, the moderator, cucking his own show. What the fuck? I got things to do at 9 p.m. 9 p.m. It's like 11 here in God. When he says things to do, yeah, he's for sure going to bed. How we were friends. I didn't run. I didn't run. I didn't run. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye. Okay, now we're chatter. No, thanks for thanks for coming, Gango. It's really nice to meet you all. And Kidology, awesome. Happy birthday again. Oh, oh thank you. Thank oh, you very much. Birthday. Thank you. Oh yeah. We should sing happy birthday all together, okay? Get three, uh, one, two, two three. one. Happy birthday to you. you. Happy birthday to you. To you. Happy birthday, dear Kenaji! Happy birthday to you! I never thought I'd hear like all my favorite YouTubers singing happy birthday to me. So thank you. Yeah. If if any of you want to like come on sometime and talk about you know the traditional whatever, I mean. It's negotiated. Like my husband feeds me. So anyway, um, maybe you guys like he does. Well, like what the hell am I supposed to say? What's wrong with these? I people? was worried. I I wasn't <laughs> sure to be honest, <laughs> Ali. Yeah, I, well that's what people used to think. They they think that I was like groomed because he's older too. And I'm like, I don't know. I was 25. If you guys have, like want to come on that side of YouTube, um, you're totally invited. It's not as scary as people make it out to be. So. So we don't identify public mosquito. Um, I think just because I'm thin and light skinned and married, Spotted I think that alpine. oh, and I like cows or something. So I think that's how I got put in there. I have 11 tattoos. I like I don't. Ali's <laughs> <laughs> an onion. Every every layer you uncover, you're like what? <laughs> yeah, I'm just a normal lady who figured out that I'm wanted. You know, it probably if we could swap parents, Kyle. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, yeah, you make your path yourself. So if you guys ever want to come on sometime and just chit chat, uh, it's worthwhile to explore. It's not all, you know, oppressive. You'll you'll know like if it works and he, he's really happy and you feel warm inside that it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. See you later. Well, I got plenty. I got girlfriends for you too. Okay, see you later. Bye, Ali. Thanks for coming on. I've got to go to uh, Go to bed. So, uh, yes, yes, it was well, fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we will definitely talk. Text me that. <laughs> and I need to still answer your question. So, we will, we will talk. And uh, text me back, kid, at some point. Oh, right. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. I'll do I'll do I'll do I'll do <laughs> it's okay. I'll just serial stalk you until you do. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing to meet all of you. If you could like link your socials so I can follow all of you because all of this stuff is fascinating. Points and sessions and everything. So yeah. So, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Alright. I wanted to say sorry. Um, I just want to mostly speak to the platform because I just didn't want to get into litigating it. So, I just wanted to let you know. Apologies. But my priority is just shutting down that conversation. Yeah. You're fine. I get it. It's really contentious. <laughs> yeah. And we don't need to get into it, but I just wanted to let you know where I was coming from and why I was motivated to just be Yeah, I, I get it. I, I wasn't trying to do like a 
D platform Thanks. stick thing. It was just sort of, that it just kind of came here. up because it was like, no, we were talking no, about was, like, was... bad actors. On an enemy light. How does that not come up? You know what I mean? But... It's hard, it's hard. We're, we're treading on like specific. I'll start right I just wanted to let Lightning you know. Spotted. Spotted. I, I but they, this was I awesome, and I, I just loved like the woman take off that I was not expecting that. <laughs> I, I've been telling him I want a woman panel on feminine. It's heavy spot. Yeah, yeah. Let's blend it. Lab, do you believe in <laughs> post patriarchal societies now? <laughs> You described what I call a post patriarchal society, and when I called it that, you eye rolled at me. But it sounds like you well, agree no, with me. We agree on that. Remember when we had our talk, and I was like, yeah, well, the patriarchy can be good as new. Things that are, the patriarchy doesn't have to be current for it to affect our reality. Yeah, but you would eye roll if I, because I refuse to call it uh, patriarchy. Awesome. I call it post patriarchal. I rolled because I felt like, first of all, in the area. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, hey, yeah, you've changed your position, that's why. This will be good as new. Okay, let her change. Yeah. <laughs> No, I think that also, well, I, I don't know if I've actually it's like assault in the air about this, but I feel like I was going, I wanted to, uh, about, like, the technique stuff. I think right. that, um, I think that I, you can still it is impossible to live as a, as a woman without internalized misogyny, and I think that pick me stuff was so, was so, like, flagrantly internalized misogyny. Um, and I think that, yeah, I caught, I felt, I felt I've like I got ammo caught, for you here. Uh, like an air of, of what I felt like was you I'm an um, and it really triggered me, so I hopped on it, but. Mm. You've changed your position. I am, uh, I, I am clear of all charges. Position. Hey, I just want to know that I'm clear of all charges, okay? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, my position, my position is, uh, is similar. It hasn't changed. It's. Wait, you still think I'm a pick me? <laughs> it's matured. I, I don't think that you're a pick me, but I, I think that but, all women but, <laughs> We kind of a button there. Exist, I think that we all exist in a world where we have to make choices that um put us in in you know <laughs> Come on, say it from your chest. So you think I'm still a pick me, you just think it's understandable that I'm a pick me. Uh we're, no, she's saying we're all we're all pick me, that's it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. We're all here. We're all pick me. No, literally. I gotta go. You. I'll see you guys later. Bye. 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 <laughs> so, yeah, Lab, did you I, say I, I earlier? We are all pick me. <laughs> did okay. I hear you correctly earlier when you said that? Um, I think you said that sex is the only thing that matters, and that we're all basically non-binary. I found that really interesting. Bye, did I hear you that correctly? All right. I'm about to head off. Hello. Oh, hey, what's up? You called me. Well, I technically uh, called you. Actually, you called me. Okay, that first of all, so you DM'd me and said, want to chat. And I said, sure, um, sweet baby How do you feel about the statement, like, Oof. men and women's roles have kind of, like, changed throughout history, and, like, the gender norms and all of that are assigned, like, socially, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think it's an extremely unsophisticated look at history, is how I kind of feel about it. I've been harping about this. My stream is going to kill me because I've said this like 16 times today. I think gender roles emerged out of like some level of like necessity and some element of like biological proclivity. The issue is that like the whole point of the gender roles traditionally and historically, not that they always played out because people are stupid and we're very rigid, but the purpose of them was to maximize what people are Mom, good at and minimize thanks. what they're bad at. Right? And so like, does that, am I answering your question? Um. Yeah, I think so. I don't. I feel like I just don't like the statement. I don't think it's very true at all, and I feel like it misses a lot of what's going on. Uh, you don't like the statement because you think it's completely like gender roles are just not socially constructed at all. Um. So now, I think they're socially constructed. Yeah. Uh, but they like that construction probably maps out into something kind of real, right? Yes. Yes. Like it. Like for instance, like the idea of like a um, like a construction worker. That's probably not like a category that's found in the universe. That's a socially constructed thing. But if you've got a, a, a dimorphic species and one tends to like 
be physically stronger than the other, then that's probably going to be the one that in ha in, in like uh, occupies that socially constructed class, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, even when you look at things like construction workers, there's going to there's gonna be a whole bunch of biological markers that are going to like predilect certain types of individuals to select construction work even as their primary mode of like work versus something else. Like there's a reason, not always, but there's a oftentimes strongly like personality types, right? Like men who are going to be less educated and uh, interested in education are going to be much more interested in pursuing things like labor trades um, because they just don't have it. And that's somewhat going to be driven by their, for example, like openness to experience, which seems to be decently biologically driven. Sure. Yeah. All right. Just curious. I just put the end of that panel. I don't know last night. Somebody say that again. Uh, the, uh, you know, society, you know, changes our social blah, 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 or some bullshit, you know what I mean? Well, there's this, <sighs> it's something that we have to contend with, which is that the same, I don't know how we say they're wholly socially constructed when universally most cultures have emerged with very similar gender constructions. There's some yeah, differences, think, right? Like skirts and clothes and unimportant stuff, but things like child rearing versus labor, hunting, and like tribal warfare have always been clearly gendered and separated in almost all cultures. Cultures. Yeah, I think the, the key word um, that a lot of people miss is, um, or, or the, the key concept philosophically is that uh, just because something is socially constructed, wash fucks us up all the time. Just because something is socially constructed doesn't mean it's arbitrary. Yes. A lot of people mix those two things up. Yes. Yeah. yeah, like the fact that this is something that's actually more interesting work from like evolutionary anthropology or evo psych, which is looking at like this is evo psych at its best, which is looking at universally emergent social constructions and asking ourselves why almost every single successful culture arose to these things, right? This is a really interesting conversation in evo psych with patriarchy, right? It's not self evident why specifically patriarchies emerged almost universally in almost all successful cultures. Like, why were patriarchies selected for it and matriarchies were not? Because there was unquestionable questionably cultures that had matriarchies, but most of them got dominated probably by patriarchal societies. Like, why is this the case? Which is a really interesting question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> That's all. What else? How do you, how do you feel it went? Which one? Your chat with Your... Pearl? What? Your chat with Pearl? Oh no. Why, did you watch that today? Yeah, I watched it today. I... Bro, I, I can't figure this girl out. Is she just, is she just dumb or is she grifting really hard? Oh, I guess see. you probably don't want to say. Why would I not want to say? I would. I say don't know it. if you want to burn the bridge. I don't know if you want to burn the bridge. Oh, that is true. You know, I do have a reputation for being like very cordial and not. Got <laughs> You're. I thought you were on a new arcstony of leaving Nebraska Steve behind. That was last year. This year is supposed to be um, doing ah. a little bit more brutal than normal. Oh really? 2023 is the year of blood rage? Um, not... Not... Not blood rage, just standing up for um, what I believe in. Fuck me, I should have waited until I finished this game. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Are you playing League right um, now? No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, people are so excited. Um, Do you want me to just entertain chat for like two seconds? I can just take questions. He's on three bases. He's on three. Enemy max spotted. Wait, wait, what was what? That's not yeah, that's not feedback. It's even real. So what was your sorry? Overall? Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. I've noticed. Okay, okay, okay. A couple of interesting psych things. So I not even psych things, just behavioral stuff. So I've noticed that when she's feeling backed into corner specifically by you, she does like this consistent like mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> But I was so I had a thought while I was listening to this, which is when I think about different panel shows that I've seen that are live, right? Uh, like Myron and Pearl and uh, a couple of other people that do it. There's a very interesting thing that I've noticed on Pearl's show versus like, for example, Myron's, where people are very willing on her show to interrupt her. Um, whereas people are pretty hesitant on Myron's show uh, to interrupt him. And in most live debates that I see, people are pretty hesitant to overstep the moderator too much. I'm curious, like I have my own thoughts about that, but I'd be curious if you're relatively passive. And I think um, from what she said to me, she said that was the first show where they've ever kicked anybody off before an hour. 
So I wonder if she's gotten interrupted a lot in the past and she just doesn't do anything about it. Because if she doesn't do anything about it, then you would expect to see that type of behavior flourish, right? Yeah. <clears throat> One thing I've been thinking about. So, you know people who, like, when you're in a group setting, they get interrupted all the time. Like, probably yeah. more than on average. But those people that get interrupted when they're talking to you about it, it's like this awkward thing where, like, I agree that you get interrupted more. But sometimes it's because, like, you ain't saying anything anyone wants to listen to. Have you ever, like, noticed that? <laughs> I don't know how to talk about yeah, people with saying? that. Oh. Well, I think a lot of times with Pearl, it's very interesting. What I noticed with Pearl specifically with her panelists is when she was debating you and like talking back, like giving her own opinions, people were very quick to interrupt her. But the moment she said, so I have a question, almost everyone quieted right away. So it like showed me that the group was hearing her the whole time. They were just deciding when they cared or didn't care to like hear what she had to say. And I'm not, ju I'm not just trying to pick on Pearl. It's like something I've been thinking about for a little while, like even in my own Discord community of like, what do I do about people that always get talked over, but part of why they're getting talked over is because like, nobody wants to listen to them. I don't know how to communicate that to somebody because it's very harsh and not the best news to get, obviously. Sure. Bro, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to do with this. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, I think you did really well. Uh, it was very funny seeing you be in between um, the fighting. Uh, I like I like the riz that you're attempting with the with the outfit change. It's interesting to see. Did you decide aesthetic matters? You've convinced yourself, or was um, it a little bit just because I had to fight so hard against the blue hair? So now I have to like compensate in another area. So I'll probably for at least as long as I have this, I'll probably have a wardrobe. Mm. Really, just until you get rid of the blue hair? Um, I, it depends. I mean, if I already have the clothes, I'll probably. Hold on to them a little bit. Bro, are you fucking serious? This is actual fucking AIDS. I don't know what units I'm even supposed to make against that. Um. Yeah, maybe. Got this. Okay. Don't let up. Uh, well, I, th I just think it's a, it's like one area that I've always been kind of confused about your platform because I think like I think you would agree that the aesthetic you communicate to people really matters, right? And that aesthetic is communicated in a ton of ways, which is the way you talk, your body language, all that sort of thing. But it's obviously visual as well, right? Like the clothing you're wearing, the hairstyle you have, all that sort of stuff. And I know you yeah, don't just care about of, like, it. How far you want to go, or like what kind of values I'm trying to reinforce that? Because I, I also. I do like Thanks. the idea of being relatively unassuming um, and then exceeding those expectations. Like, that's a fun... Um, it's a shit. It's all, it's all, it all comes down to this, okay? Are you shooting? Should I cheat? Like, pew pew, get him, go. Oh, bro, it's got him. fucking over. Pew pew. It's fucking this over, bro. Not Boom. Close. Wow, good shooting, Captain. Get out. Well done. Pew pew. Oh my god, get the fuck out of my fucking game. Guns blazing. I don't know what else you say. I'm literally. It's Starcraft, is, it's a space game, right? Let me heal. Yeah. Alright. I started playing League a little bit. Um, why would you do that? Uh, bad life choices. Guess, uh, <laughs> uh, guess what, hey, guess uh, which, uh, uh guess which role I play. <laughs> Support? Uh-huh, uh, and guess which, <laughs> guess which hero is my main hero. Lux? <laughs> no, I'm a Discord kitten. A kitten? Oh, a Nico? Discord kitten. No, you or know. Not Nico. What's the one that sits on people? Yumi. Yeah, Yumi. That one? Yeah. <laughs> How is that uh, going? Is it fun? Um, I see potential. Uh, I'm like an old lady trying to play a game that requires like super fast reaction speed, and I'm obviously on my decline, so um, I don't suspect. But hey, I my first game, I hit every time I ulted, I actually like hit multiple characters at the right nice. time. So you know, I feel like oh, that was pretty good. I don't know if people are blowing smoke up my ass, but yeah, uh, yeah. Other than that, no, I thought your performance on Pearl was good, but. Um, <laughs> the, oh my gosh, the last thing I expected from the Tate defense corner would be systemic oh, racial oppression. Uh, that was wild. Let's get some more people here at Washington. Yeah, people definitely, uh, pay attention to those systems when they're on the receiving end of getting fucked by them, so. Yeah, I mean, it just, I just, I don't know how you 
watch that as a viewer like that alone to me would be enough to be like okay i don't know if i can like buy into this worldview because that's that's been in the past like inconsistencies like this is what's like led me out of like being like a fundy christian for example or like other shit like when i was like 18 i was like a uh, young earther and stuff like that and it's just like then you come across just like evidence that makes no sense and it's like oh okay well that's ridiculous i just i can't understand i've been trying to figure out like why people think the way that they do in such a like partisan way Mm -hmm. and do you think that do you think that as a society there's a because we taught critical thinking in school for a really long time but did we yeah well we named it critical thinking what did we actually teach in critical thinking well it would be like things like what does this essay say like read this piece of thing and like what is the what is it arguing for and you know like we were trying to teach kids like how to formulate arguments back but it feels like it was just an abysmal like failure I, I feel like i did that in english yeah and social studies at least i did it in social yeah there's a lot of questions i have when Ooh, I'm talking diamond to diamond diamond hands <laughs> a lot of questions i have when i'm arguing with people and i argue like if you had to write an essay to argue for something in school like this wouldn't cut it you know that right like i don't understand sometimes when I'm talking to people, I think I, I think I went to a way better high school than I thought, or people just forget everything out of high school, or they just never learn hey, I'm gonna, um, uh, critical thinking at all. Like, yeah, I have no idea. Bravo. Um, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way that, to some extent, a society could systematize, not just teaching people, like, what to think. Like, it felt like a lot of critical thinking came down to just, like, teaching kids to have a certain opinion, um, which is, like, graded on. But, like, instead teaching people how to think and i think the lawyer the lawyer debate was a really good example of this to me because it was so unequivocally clear that you won the debate even just like rhetor even at a rhetorical level right even if you disagreed with what you said like it was demonstrably clear and yet in the like comment section you'll see people just like coping like eventually i think tgg took over the comment section and it like changed but originally it was like comments like well winners and losers and debates don't really matter it's about like the true argument and, you know the lawyer had the truer argument and stuff like mm -hmm. this where it's just like Again, i i can't fathom the cope please. required to watch that but most people when they watch debates they go person saying things i like they must be right yeah i'm not sure um they when you talk about like the critical thinking thing i don't know it's it feels like such a stupid conversation to have because everybody thinks they do it right mm -hmm. um no actually i'm walking back from that statement i don't believe that anymore um i used to say everybody thinks they're right but i i something that i lean um more heavily into is uh usually i'll talk i'll have a conversation with someone i'll ask them like what do you do to make sure you're not like stuck like in a stupid thought loop or whatever and i find that a lot of people don't have answers to that and i i hope that when i ask them that question it gives them pause a little bit where like well if you don't have a way to um validate your thoughts or if you don't have a way to figure out if you're kind of getting lost on some bullshit, maybe you need to take a step back and you might want to stop talking to, or you might want to stop streaming on twitch if you're talking to destiny uh i was thinking that it would probably be fine if it was just his voice Maybe. It, 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 mm, don't stream voice on Twitch with Destiny. I feel like nobody's gotten oh, flat for even talking to you in ever. Do they care about you anymore? I've to, in order to stop streaming to Twitch, I have to end the entire stream. Oh, smart. Yeah. My mistake. I'm not. I'm not super super worried about it because I don't have your face on. Oops. Sorry. Yeah. This is uh. My name is Fate. <clears throat> <laughs> Stupid fucking name. I wonder if, um, uh. one thing I wonder is, uh, so I, I feel like your personality traits are pretty rigid. People get mad when I say that, but I feel that. I wonder if people's, like, do you think they're always rigid or they're rigid by a certain age? By a certain age, and that age is like 14 or 15. And then you kind of like really? slowly more from there. But without like a lot of effort, I, don't, I think it's very, okay. very, very hard to change. I mean, you can, but it's like it's like, like a transformation. Are, uh, like it would have to be like a metamorphosis. Okay, okay. Like, with, yeah. but you believe like if you put enough work, you could shift personalities. A lot of work. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you'd have to change your basically your environment to prime different habits and stuff like that. Yeah, and yeah. I feel like all the all the stuff in psychology is pointing more and more and more in the direction of early development and childhood is like these are the most formative years of your life and even like health outcomes can be related to psychological stuff that's happening early on so mm -hmm, it seems mm -hmm. like those early formative years are super important well they're especially important in a large part because like i mean the more we're getting into things like nature and nurture specifically in like neuroscience where we're getting like more like geneticists involved sorry take my dog's water bottle um 
is like the interaction of epigenetics and environmental exposures is like something really critical, particularly when we're talking about like neuroplasticity and neuroscience, right? Like, like the genes that can be switched on, like, do you know about major depressive disorder, uh, MDD, like much about it? Um, I, 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 maybe it depends on what you're about to ask me. Okay. Okay. Do you know about the epigenetic relationship between MDD and episodes of depression and like the genes that are related to cyclic major depressive disorder? I don't, but I feel like by asking the question, you're implying that there are probably uh, inventories or tests you can give to parents and you can find epigenetic factors that are predictive for children having major depressive disorder. That's my guess. Okay, we're actually going in that direction right now. Okay. There's a study like out of Calgary right now that's looking at like predictive factors using like MRIs and some like blood testing to try mm -hmm. to predict who will have an e depressive episode. But what, what I was actually hinting at, Robert Sapolsky talks about this. This is where like um, a lot of people will be familiar with this concept from. There's a study that was done, I believe in like 2018 that found that essentially there was a number of people that had basically like i won't say the name of it but basically this gene for serotonin um and if people had four to five major stress episodes because most depression is caused by stress right you have a stressful event in your life your life kind of sucks and you your system kind of goes into like catastrophic failure like and you me. develop a form of depression However, for people that have this genetic sensitivity, if they get four to five of those, specifically four to five, not three, not two, four to five, it can trigger basically a genetic switch to turn on. And these people will develop major depressive disorder, which is a cyclic form of depression that comes back. And this, these are the people, right? When you ask, why are you sad? People with a stress episode could be like, well, like my mom just died and I got fired from work and like my marriage is on the rocks, right? That's why I'm sad. Whereas people who are have major depressive disorder a lot of times they'll say well why are you so sad and they'll say i don't know i have no good reason for it um which is like sh yeah, unveiling to us like the epigenetic relationship between mental illness and environmental exposures because if those people have that marker but they don't have these major like depressive episodes they're never going to develop mdd even though uh they have the genetic propensity and their children might because they might inherit that genetic propensity mm -hmm. um yeah. So when we're talking about things like personality and stuff like that, this is where like, I think studies into like psychedelics are really, really interesting because <clears throat> major things that we know that cause like major personality shifts post like 25 is typically some sort of like religious convert conversion experience, right? So uh, studies on like people who are uh, uh, in jail, the, uh, the one of the major factors that are gonna like, predict the likelihood of them never ever offending again is experiencing like a conversion experience, like a religious conversion experience. But we know that a lot of the areas of the brain that light up when people are having religious experiences sometimes also light up when people are having Ammunition psychedelic here. experiences. Um, so like the possibility of like, man, the research on like trauma Spot and depression hospital, specifically of people taking like psychedelics with a therapist specifically because psychedelics, the more we're understanding about them seem to be really reliant. I'm sure you might actually have more to speak on this. The environment you're in when you're taking the in drug the really, really matters. Uh -huh. Probably more, almost, well, almost more than the drug itself, or like equally, yeah. Yeah, um, which obviously I had no idea, but if you take the drug in like a therapeutic setting, it's mm -hmm. more likely to have obviously a therapeutic, therapeutic benefit. Yeah. yeah, so you're seeing people that have been like basically like besotted with like chronic depression and anxiety from like a trauma experience early on, do this treatment one to two times and then immediately just be like freed from it which is weird because it's very similar when they describe their experiences of like quote unquote freedom it's very have you ever heard of like freedom series from like the christian circles nope okay don't worry about it uh okay but they basically are kind of doing like they do they do basically intense prayer sessions that will be like eight hours long sometimes it's really weird and they'll be like praying over this person to like break trauma, I don't know, spiritual woo woo uh, about trauma. And a lot of people, when they do come out of it for the better, which to be fair, not everyone comes out for the better in those situations because eight hours of like intensive prayer can be extremely distressing for certain people's bodies. But some people who come out and do experience that betterment are reflecting and like using the same type of language that people who have done like psychedelics are using to describe like their trauma shift, which is super, super interesting. Yeah. Yeah, um, I think for the religious thing too, something 
because we've been arguing about getting raped and all that recently because you know fun conversation um what? wait having, what um, <laughs> okay having yeah having like a strong religious background Enemy, um, can actually <laughs> increase your tenacity when it comes to dealing with traumatic events um like people that have higher levels of religiosity can have yeah. lower levels of trauma response i guess because it helps them cope with or adapt to whatever the situation is too so yeah, yeah particularly if their religiousness has like a slightly liberal bend to it so fundamentalists tend to do much worse overall in like mental health factors but people who have a religion but it's not like a super rigid dogmatic form mm -hmm. mostly fare better on almost all mental health scales um and yeah they seem to pose a lot more like greater resilience to distressing events yeah but you could argue that could be from community. Like, it's hard to distill what specifically is going on. Have you ever had, when you've done psychedelics, have you ever had a religious experiment or, or like, religious-y, feeling-y kind of experience? I've never uh, done psychedelics, is why I'm asking. Sure. I mean, like, it'll feel like, it can feel spiritual. But, like, I'm so fundamentally atheist, and I understand pretty well that I'm, like, an atheist. So I don't think I would ever have a religious experience on psychedelics. But, like, you definitely have experiences where I could understand why people would think they're religious, for sure. But, I, but at least for me, I, I I never have. I've done two really, really big trips on mushrooms and not even remotely, like, religious or, or maybe spiritual, you could say. But, right. Yeah. But what? I, I imagine that, like, there's, there's stuff in, in your head that's going to be coming out um, based on on what you already think and, and you know certain drugs will probably enhance those pre-existing thoughts i would imagine like if you're religious and you do like a big psychedelic trip you're probably gonna like talk to god I would Eyes open, enemy yeah heavy. uh what are the like religious akin like what are those types of experiences um for uh are you asking for you like, for you personally oh. yeah i'm just curious um when you do uh really 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 high uh levels of psychedelics um there's a concept called ego death uh, mm. Which I think is like basically what happens, I, I think, this is my understanding of it, is there's kind of like, there's a lot of stuff running under the hood to give you a full-on, like, this is a human and I have a human experience. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening and when you kind of break your mind a little bit by taking a lot of crazy drugs, you kind of like disconnect a lot of stuff and you're, you, you have like a perspective that's left that is like fundamentally different or altered than your normal perspective. And so you're kind of like sitting here, like looking at something that doesn't feel like a human or doesn't feel like you or doesn't have like a past and then i think this is probably where like the feelings of like being connected to the universe and all that shit come in from mm, it's very um have you ever watched the ted talk by the, the neuroscientist who had a stroke on her ability. like basically her entire i think left hemisphere just like shut down nope is it good it's it's very akin to what you're describing of this sense of like connectiveness and like all things like almost like wheel of time like time is a circle it's not really like linear or straight and there's no beginning mm -hmm. or clear end and I am so I am we uh, uh, it's it's very interesting I'd be curious on your thoughts on it it's super well done too yeah no I haven't seen it before so I can't really comment but yeah well, how, is there a reason why you've never tried like any psychedelic before or is this some religious dipshit idea or wait mm -hmm. dumbass idea not sorry I didn't mean to say dipshit go ahead that's too extreme a word <laughs> that's okay I don't really care um <laughs> I'm I'm confident in my sense of self um a number so originally would have been religious stuff now it's not really that it's more so um oh, your thing okay you want to hear a crazy story so <laughs> have you heard my story of my first time doing edibles no. Okay, it was fucking awful. So I took way more than I should have because it was like mm -hmm. a homemade brownie. And I mm -hmm. clearly got a square that like, because this is the problem with homemade is that like you can't guarantee how evenly the tea she will spread. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I ate it. It was taking a really long time. And so they were like, yeah, just take another square. And then it like hit me and it like it motherfucking hit me. I was... I was hallucinating so, and it's crazy. So we, I was with Nick and two other friends and they had all done weed before. And this is my first time doing like edibles specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, no, it was my first time ever doing weed, right? So like never experienced it. And now I'm cooked out of my brain on edibles. Mm -hmm. And so we're walking around downtown and the whole time, every noise I hear, I'm pretty sure that we're in World War III. Like there was like a dumpster that banged nearby and I was like, there's a bomb, guys, we gotta get to like the LR, cause our LRT is like uh, below ground. It's like, we gotta get down and like get in a bomb shelter and hide. And they were like, no, there's no World War III going on. Like we're fine. And every time I closed my eyes, I would see, you know, the it clown? Yeah. I would see him like walking towards me, but he was like in sepia color, like the brown tone. And like the world, like I would just see him coming towards me every time I closed my eyes. So I didn't want to like close my eyes much. And so we're walking around downtown and we have this strip in my town. So <clears throat> we're kind of doing like the, gen this, this city was doing like some gentrification. 
Okay. And so it was this strip where they had just like sandblasted the sidewalk and they had also brought in different colors of like concrete. So there was this pattern of concrete along the road that was like checkered all mm -hmm. along the strip. And Take on the strip, they had also put in a bunch of statues. And these statues were like weird statues, were like, like humanoid figures, like a man in a business suit, but you'd have like a pig's head and you'd have like birds for hands, like super weird, like surreal things. And I'd never seen them before. Mm -hmm. But then on the side, like all the buildings were like dilapidated, like gonna be torn down soon, like super like rough looking buildings. So I've got like this exquisite ground below me. And then these like dilapidated buildings, and there was an art festival that was temporary that moved in that had like these teeter totters that lit up that you could go on and they would like make noise and there was this thing that you could sit in and like pump and it would like wheel like this story like this pictionary like this picture art story in front of your eyes and stuff like that so i'm tripping out of my mind and i stay high for the next like two days like it was really bad like I, every what time did I you go, say that last part again i stayed high for like two days okay so one thing that happened after my brain injury is that like when I do any sort of like alcohol even, I can have like hangovers for six days straight. It's really strange. It's only happened after I had my brain injury. Um, not really sure why. So I'm high for two days straight. Every time I close my eyes, I see the it clown. I'm panicking. Nick's trying to leave to like go home and I'm like, please don't leave me. Um, by the time I sober up, this fucking art festival moves out of town. So we go back there, because I was like, I swear I remember this, like, where is it? And I can't find anything on the internet about it. So we go back to the street. Nothing's there, obviously, except for like the sidewalk and the statues. So I'm like losing my mind. So that was my first time on Edibles, where I just like thought I hallucinated. I was hallucinating. I thought it was World War III. Uh, it was a really bad experience. So I feel like my level of neuroticism is not well geared towards psychedelics in general uh that kind of spooked me off of psychedelics um yeah i mean everybody's got everybody has a bad edible story that has done edibles yeah um you should reconsider them i i probably have, will i probably will uh, does nick have a lot of experience with the psychedelic stuff uh a little bit he definitely like more than me and he like is super keen he wants to try like a bunch of stuff um <clears throat> but yeah, I'm happy to also babysit, but I'll, I'll probably try it at some point, but I want to make sure I'm in, like, a situation where I'm, like, maximally guaranteed to, like, not... <laughs> have weird shit happening. Have weird shit happening to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, I've heard shrooms are the safest, but also not the most guaranteed. Uh, um, at a low dose, like, everything will be safe. I think LSD is safer than mushrooms, but... Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Anything um, else? Oh, we had a conversation yesterday. Okay, oh, ready? yeah. Um, Who's we? You, me and my chat and all of TikTok now. Oh. Um, oh, is this with the feminist girl? Maybe. Okay. But um, I, I, don't, I don't know which part got clipped to what you've seen. But basically, the question is, is I, we've, I think we've probably even talked about this a little bit before, but I haven't like explored it a ton. But I'm starting to think about it more now recently. Um, how much of the trauma related to sexual assault you think is like socially enforced versus like just will always happen because of like the biological realities of like getting raped? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. There's a really there... good book that I would okay. first start with. Um, it's called The Body Remembers. It's by Babette Rothschild. Uh, it's yeah. not The Body Keeps the Score by Bessel van der Kolk. It's like, it's very heavy. It's very research. It's very boring because it's just like constant papers being cited. Mm -hmm. It's for sure both, right? Um, in the case of, I think especially early childhood stuff, um, the level to which people will not remember their early childhood stuff, but have a lot of um, later on effects that are commonly known to be connected to early childhood sexual abuse mm -hmm. is uncanny, right? really high rates of IBS, really high rates of chronic illness, uh, and high rates of things like panic t attack disorder, like panic disorders and, and things like trauma-esque sounding disorders, right? Um, so I think early childhood, and I think anything that is like penetrating your body to some extent, we don't really understand like the connection between your body and your brain. And there's a lot of cringy pops like about it right now, where they just like fixate on like the vagus nerve and stuff like that. but 
there's no way that you could convince me that like a brain with as integrated as a sensory motor system as ours that is so connected to our body isn't going to be impacted this is why like when you're under two even though you can't really form like real memories like episodic memories that you can look back on you can still have like procedural memories like learning how to walk right so i think there's an element of like body stuff that i think is really connected to sexual assault the issue is like sexual assault now encompasses so many different experiences that it's hard to generalize my statement to that right um, so I want to be like careful because I don't want to discredit anyone with like certain types of sexual assault that I think necessarily probably more often than not leads to trauma. Mm -hmm. But we also know that <laughs> the brain is very relative in a lot of ways in, in my sense, obviously there's going to be scientists who disagree with me, take my opinion, caveat, caveat, caveat with a grain of salt, anything that you would like in my view. There's interesting studies that look at, for example, negative childhood experiences internationally, like cross-culturally. And they'll compare, for example, like PTSD and other like my childhood fucked up, I fucked up syndrome type disorders. Um, so attachment disorders, things like that between kids like in Canada or US versus kids in like, uh, for example, like a third world country, right? So you've got one kid like who grows up like, I, I'm sure everyone's like met it, like you'll meet, I remember my uh, brother was dating this guy from like, uh, I think Nigeria, right? And he like had tons and tons of scars across his back from where he was switched uh, while he was a child, right? And I look at that and I'm like, that's horrifying. He has scar, scarification from his parents. But he like is very clearly like, oh, I'm not traumatized, I'm not traumatized. When we look at like the prevalence rates of these like mental health conditions that we would expect to be related to like higher levels of, for example, like hitting your child, we don't really see it because in a lot of ways, like there are some experiences that I think will always be distressing to people. And then I think there are a lot of experiences that our society tells us whether it's distressing or not. And that is what will inform us about whether we're distressed, especially as kids. Interesting. Um. <clears throat> No, that wasn't interesting. It's pretty boring, actually. Okay. Damn. All right. Well, um, I, well I, I go back to pew, 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 okay? Pew, yeah, pew, well, pew, no, kill I, the robots. I, I, I agree with you. I was hoping you would totally disagree with me. We could argue about it. Um, I think I lost, um. like, two friends over, <laughs> over my take. Really? Um, what was your take? Um, that I think that some of that plays in, but it's basically um, women arguing that, like, no, rape is always the most traumatic thing in the world, and nothing about society has any influence over that, and you're just trying to tell women that, like, they're not allowed to feel traumatized by something. It's like, that's not at all what... I'm trying to say, I'm just curious, like, to what extent... Because I think the original question I proposed was, why is it that sexual assault or rape seems so much more traumatic than even the most, like, violent of assaults, right? right. And like, I can ask people, like, what's more... This is a guess. I don't have a poll on this. Maybe I should tell Ayla to make one or fucking whatever. But, like, um, if I were to ask somebody, like, what's, what's more traumatizing, like, very low forms of rape uh, or, like, the worst of, like, getting jumped by, like, three guys and getting mugged or whatever... I feel like most people would say like the lower forms of rape. And then like I've talked to other people, even Brittany came on and I'm like, I, I feel like a lot of people, and Brittany came on and she said, yeah, um, a lot of people feel like getting raped is worse than getting murdered. Um, and, and I think that, I think you could extrapolate that. I think a lot of people genuinely would, would say as much. And that's just very interesting to me. And I wonder why. Yeah, I mean, I like, think what, it- What sets the sexual assault stuff so much further apart from the physical assault stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's it's so, so my friend actually works with sexual assault victims. That's like her job right now is doing advocacy work. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting talking to her because so f if you don't know, I under two uh, experienced childhood sexual assault. I don't remember it at all, right? So I, I'm in this state where I had no memories. I just had panic attacks every time men touched me. And I was like, that's weird, right? And then I like, by the time I got older, then I went to like a gynecologist. We noticed some like scarification and stuff. And we we're like, oh, okay. Kind of put two and two together. Asked my mom about it weird babysitter with a kind of a weird son and we're able to be like okay presumably this is probably what's happening mm -hmm. right so there was this piece of like i didn't even know the event had happened um because i was not old enough to remember it but it obviously had impacts on me because i was having panic attacks when men touched me and i had no like i have no knowledgeable experiences with men that were like so bad that i'd be having panic attacks when men like are touching me or coming near me sure when I think about what was like more distressing though, is once I realized it happened is like kind of the experience of like conceptualizing who I am after that, right? Like, mm -hmm. and what the world tells me. And like, I'm really lucky in that like, all of my friends and family are like pretty 
like real trauma informed. So when people say trauma informed, they mean two things. One thing means they're going to like call everything a trauma and talk about trauma all the time. And other people are very, very mindful to be, to like watch their language and say like, how do you feel about this? How would you label this experience for yourself? Sure. And I'm lucky that all my friends were the latter type, right? Where they just allowed me to experience it and explore it as needed. And I'm so curious to know, and I can't know, I'd be curious to know how my experience when I realized at like 21 that this event had happened to me would have been if somebody, when I told them about it, freaked out, told me I was a trauma and a victim and like got really upset on my behalf. Like, how would I have experienced that event? Hmm. And I have no, I, I don't know. And I can't know. There's no way that I can know. Unfortunately, yeah. But there's this, there's kind of like this frustration of like sexual assault really matters. And I think the problem with sexual assault is that like, is the way for a lot of girls that it like fucks with your brain, um, particularly, right? Like when we talk about things like physical abuse versus like emotional abuse, I I don't know, it's hard to quantify, like which one's worse? A lot, most people who've experienced both say that it's the emotional abuse that was worse, like the mind fucking that happens, right? And so when we're talking about like a sexual assault, I'm really concerned about like the mind fucking that happens, mm -hmm. but I have a hard time because sometimes it feels like there's like stolen valor that occurs, right? Where like when- Jesus Christ. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Where like when some women are talking about like their sexual assault, they're talking about like a situation where like it was really blurry consent. It isn't a good situation. Um, they maybe said yes, but looking back, they're like, I was way too fucking drunk to be saying yes, which is like bad. Like it's not a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's hard to conceptualize that against like, you know, like victims that I've worked with were like, it was much more explicit that it was a no. They were completely passed out and drunk and like woke up to somebody inside them. Right? Like these types of situations that are just like much more egregious. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, and I want to be so careful because I'm not, I don't want to dismiss people's like experiences. I just think that we need to be really, really careful about like how we're describing them because I'm concerned that we're convincing people that they're like potentially more traumatizing like, than they I'm are. I'm curious if there's research on it because I don't know if this is, but like, um, the, the the comparison that I would make would be like the um, like when a child falls over and they look to the parent for a response. I wonder if we still do that with like an extent. And then I'm curious if there's any research like illustrating like to what extent we do that. But I don't even know like, how would yeah how would we study it? Yeah, you'd have to ask like, did you get raped? How did your friends respond? And then you know how was your response after that? And then do like inventories or whatever to figure out after it. It seems like it would be yeah. Yeah. Cool. And the reality is that like what's distressing to me might not be distressing to you based on just like that basic too. things like sensitivity to stimuli because we know that people have different thresholds for stimuli that they can like put up with, but also like your worldview and expectations, right? Like somebody who gets sexually assaulted, but like maybe they're in kind of a world where like everyone they know has been sexually assaulted. So it's like bad, but it's not like the scariest thing. They might, even if it's a worse instance where when they look at like the actual facts of what happened, we're like, that's really bad they might feel less about it than somebody who experienced a way less situation but it's so outside of like their world view of what should occur in their life that like the second person is actually like more psychologically distressed over it um yeah yeah that's um uh, kind of like in a, in, a, in a paradoxical sense um i think that was one of the topics that me and ayla hit on where it was like uh, is it possible maybe that uh, living in like a worse type of environment makes you less likely to be traumatized because your expectations are so much different. So things like think like spousal rape, right? Like if if that's just your society and it happens, then yeah, I guess like in your head you kind of like area. this is your duty as a wife, and like I guess it kind of sucks, but like this is kind of what's to be expected. What happens? And as long as it's like the expectation, you don't have the uh, the same like I guess like cognitive like fissure of like why did this person do this to me? I don't know why this is happening, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, maybe. But I, I, yeah, I mean, it's hard to know because, I mean, we do have data that suggests that it's like people who have experienced early on child, like people who have experienced trauma are more likely to develop like things like PTSD later, right? Like there's kind of this correlation of mapping on of like, if you have one mental health problem, you're more likely to have any other mental health problem. Um, and so, you know, it's like, does a tough life build resilience? It seems like in some people it specifically does, right? Like 25%. The problem is that like, it seems like another 25% probably are directly harmed by the same type of experience and are left at like a higher level of risk. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to figure out. It's yeah. Maybe impossible to figure out like who's gonna be what. At least right now. I mean, with the predict predictive mapping that we're starting to do, um, I think that's 
a really new branch of psychology in like neuroscience that is like if if it is if if the theoretical model is correct and we can begin to predict like who is going to develop different like mental health disorders it might revolutionize uh, mental health treatment um, but got to kind of wait to see if it actually bears out in uh, in s s evidence basically yeah 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 mm -hmm. are you pew pewing again oh yeah yeah, my, my brain is super, like, fizz. Did you end up getting an Adderall prescription? Um, no. I went to the dentist, though. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> Squeaky clean. Get those veneers on. No, what the fuck? Oh, no? I feel like that's just, like, a rich per I just assume all rich people have veneers. Oh, I hate that. The ultra-white teeth shit is fucking creepy. Not the ultra-white. Not, like, the gross veneers. I mean, like, the veneers that are very nice-looking. They just, like... Why, that's Even like, why would I get fake fucking teeth? Well, it's not fake teeth. It's like fake plating on your teeth. I don't know. I just thought rich people do that, okay? Yeah, I think it looks weird. Fuck them. Um, oh, I was going to ask you something. Fuck, oh, I got yeah. derailed by that. What was I asking? Oh, Adderall. Didn't you say that Adderall helped you like be actually like plugged in to the moment? Um, yeah, it did. But like, I mean, so does like MDMA. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, interesting. Basically, you just don't want like pharmaceutical interventions on you. I probably should. Something a bit. But... Have you been tested for tested for like ADHD? No, but I feel like the Adderall experience probably means I'm probably pretty super fucking ADHD. Possibly. I mean, anyone who takes Adderall at a small enough dosage is going to be more focused and like more like honed in. I don't on know. A specific I was focused. I was. I felt very calm, and it was a really, really. Or I think it was a decently high. I took thirty milligrams of the Adderall XR shit, and it was. I was like the chillest I've ever been in my entire life for like a whole day. Mm. Uh, and I've heard that if your brain is like super fucking weird or whatever, that mm -hmm. like, of course, I'm, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Crush this kid. It doesn't uh, even fucking matter. So, okay. um, uh, oh, yeah, that like if your brain is like naturally like really fucked on these like neurochemicals, that like um, that the that even high doses of Adderall will just like chill you the fuck out. Yeah. Um, um so I spoke to the world leading expert in ADHD research the other day, Stephen Farrowin. Okay. Uh huh. And uh, you know what he said about uh, behavioral treatments for ADHD? Don't do them. Uh, they're almost completely, no, they're just mostly completely ineffective. That, like, medication for ADHD people is pretty similar to, like, glasses for, like, nearsighted people. Um, there are some, there's one thing that he said of basically where they, like, magnetically stimulate cranial nerve 5, um, which is, like, in your temple, basically. Uh, and that is seeming to alleviate some ADHD symptoms without, like, uh, medication. But for the most part, the main thing that's going to like make a major difference, not that I'm like diagnosing you or anything like that, but uh, is still ADHD medication. Okay. You're like an old boomer who's just been like blind for 20 years and refuses to go get glasses. Um, maybe. What if it's like, have you ever seen House? Yeah. <laughs> what if it's yeah, lupus? You know, yeah, well, no. <laughs> you know, House needs to be like miserable in order to be like a good doctor. Maybe I need to be ADHD in order to be focus enough to yeah but if you don't right if you don't test it you'll never know like we'll just do like why don't you just do like a week do like a little experiment do um, it for a week and then if you don't like it like the reality with ADHD medication is you like you could go off of it like talk to your doctor and I'm sure that they can be like yeah let's try it for like seven days and then if you're not comfortable come back we'll chat about it and then go on from there and to be clear that is what Stephen Fair one world leading research psychologist said not me so I'm just Okay, let's say I actually want to do this. What, how, what is it, how do I even make an appointment? I don't have a doctor or anything. What is that? Do I just talk to a hospital and I say, I need drugs? Or what, how do I even get that? <laughs> Wait, you don't have... Process? Okay, so you should definitely try to get, like, a GP. The main Fuck thing is that. you're going to... I move, like, every year. I don't have time for that. Okay, sure. get... <laughs> Fuck's sakes. You are actual boomer energy right now. Where you're like, I'll see next year. Um, okay, psychiatrist. What you need to do is see a psychiatrist. So you just need Jesus. to see a GP to get referred to a psychiatrist. They oh will do God. some of the testing for you. Or you can, can pay. Can GP refer you? Like, if I've got like one in my audience, could they just like refer me? Uh, if they want to, I think so. Yeah, you'll have to ask them. I'm not a GP. Uh, you can also, if you want to just get the testing and you want to pay out of pocket, you can pay like a neuropsychologist to do a full gambit of like cognitive assessments, uh, which is kind of the best way that we do diagnostics for ADHD right now. Um, they'll test you for things like inhibition and IQ and stuff like that. 
What if my IQ is like 103? Well, uh, they, if you have actual ADHD, your, um, your processing speed and your working memory will be like usually one to two standard deviations below every other indus and then they won't right, actually so no so. they don't they technically are not allowed to give you an iq if uh there's I'm, like it would be so low they would it would be so ideation. low yes yeah, exactly okay. exactly um so if they see that pattern and then when they do like they might do like a wepsi or like a nepsi or something like that and it'll test for like a bunch of stuff like executive functioning big science words science science words words they'll do a bunch of testing to see kind of Okay, they're going to do things like testing like different parts of your brain to see kind of how they're functioning and operating and working together. Um, if you like really suck at inhibition, for example, that's a pretty strong indication. Plus the IQ scores uh, of like the depressed two indices that like ADHD might be at play. They're going to ask you like environmental measures like, do you feel this way? Everywhere. And your answer is going to be yes, I'm assuming. Based on Whatever my based on my exposure to you, the answer seems to be strongly yes, Mister. I'm on my phone while I'm out with frenzies. Um, yep. It should yep. be more entertaining. It's not my fault. <laughs> Why don't you entertain them? I do that on stream. I get paid for that. I'm doing that shit for free. Oh yes, famous streamer. Le entertain me, plebs. I'm off time. Mm -hmm. Bro, mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. yep. So they'll do a bunch of testing. Uh, from that, they'll be able to diagnose you. If you get a uh, proper diagnosis, you can basically go back to a doctor, and they'll probably just prescribe you. Uh, to be honest, there's a good chance you'll find a doctor who will just give you drugs if you want it, really. Uh, but that's famous? not... What? No, because... <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, because you're famous, um, and they really want to entertain you. Um, but that would be, like, the correct way to go about it, if you want to be dotting your I's and crossing your T's. Wait, hold on. So I need to. Just, so I would just like Google like local psychiatrist. Yeah. Do you want me to like look into it a little bit and send you like a couple of like names in your area specifically? Well, am I gonna be like unable to find like a competent? Can I, I can just Google it? Is it like a? Well, it depends. Like, do you want to do a psychiatrist or do you want to do a neuropsychologist? That sounds like a lot more testing. Yeah, the neuropsych is gonna take about eight hours of testing, uh, but then. You won't if be I, able to doubt it. I'm with ADHD into eight hours of testing. They'll break it up into two days and right give now? you juice boxes, okay? Juice boxes, oh, okay. head pats, and cookies. There's juice boxes. Yeah. What's your favorite kind of juice? Um, Askanawi? Is that what they're called? <laughs> that is... <laughs> Never mind. I'm not going to say it. I'm good. Good. Very good. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, unless you just want to go to psychiatrist, it'll be like a much briefer uh, conversation. And they still, there's a chance that a psychiatrist still might send you to a neuropsychologist, but uh, it'll depend up to the doctor. Okay. Yeah. Um, as your friend, this is what I recommend. Not as anyone in the field, obviously. Not as a psycho meadow, whatever the fuck. Not as a psycho witch. To be before yeah. yeah. Before I was deep I exposed. Got you. Yeah. The big true show. I'd be super curious. Oh, you're about to win, lose the pew pew. Are you green? And yellow is who you're fighting? Okay. What are you super curious about? Uh, I think that's it. Oh, I'm super curious to know if you do it. I'd be curious what your experience is on it.
Adderall for like a week straight, particularly for your streaming. I'd say it would like flatten your affect, but uh. <laughs> it would flatten my affect. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say already. you're already bottomed out, so I, I I'm not too worried about that one. Wait, what? What do you think a what? flat affect means? What? Uh, remember when we did that Twitter files, uh, thing? Not not Twitter files. Sorry, the Twitter. Uh, try out there we go yeah. um and i got you to make that little frog face okay have you ever noticed that when you're on live debate panels <laughs> you maintain that face and only look completely straightforward the whole time um yeah i'm trying to keep a lot like i'm trying to keep track of a lot of shit going on in my head right now i'm trying to think of what am i saying what is he going to say how is the audience interpreting what's going on how do I feel like the debate is going right now? Do I need to change like the focus? Like I'm trying to keep a bunch of shit in mind. So I'm mm. probably yeah. I don't I don't think I have time to like do like happy go lucky facial expression. <laughs> uh, I just I just always are you looking at something like in your lawyer debate? Were you looking at something or were you just like thinking? Oh, yeah, and so had, not really um, there for that debate. They had a screen in front of us um, with the oh. other person on it. So we were looking at each other the whole time. It's just for some reason her setup oh, was a little bit weird. That's kind of weird actually. Yeah, it makes it look like because he turns at you a couple of times and you just like sit with your hands on your laps, yeah, like staring know. straight forward with the frog face. It's so funny. What's wrong with your dog? What'd you do to him? She wants uh, supper and pets. So you're just yeah, dead. dog abuser. That'll go on my my CP as well. All right. Um. Anything else? Anything planned? Any any big trips planned? Now that you're back. Um, what is happening? Yeah, I've got like four fucking things coming up, but I'm gonna do about it. Um, yeah. What's been your favorite place to travel to that you've gone to so far? Like, what have you enjoyed the most? Um, London was really cool. But it really it usually just comes down to like what friends are there that I can hang out with. And if there's cool people, then I tend to like that spot the most. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, what about you guys? Do you have anything coming up that you guys are planning on traveling for or anything? Uh, probably the next one is TwitchCon. It really depends on like uh, grad school and stuff about determining our financial situation and stuff about what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. So probably October, like LA. Did you get Nick into streaming more yet? Uh, he's almost set up. I just got to input his stream keys and then he's good to go. Uh, but he was uh, going crazy helping me with the Sunday shit last week. So, um, yeah. Where are you at on that now? <laughs> uh, probably just going to ignore, for the most part, everything at a public level. And then just kind of like monitor stuff. Okay. Yeah. Oh, also, I guess TwitchCon is in Vegas. I'm stupid, not LA. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which is ironic because they banned gambling and yet TwitchCon is at in fucking Vegas this year. Uh oh, don't tell train wrecks. Doesn't even make sense to me. What the heck? But whatever. Um, are you going to talk to Kidology? Slash I hire her? I set up on Wednesday. Oh, sweet. That's nice. Ugh. Oh, sorry. That wasn't about her. Oh my god, they're all dead. They're all dead. Not all of them. Get him pew um, pew pew boom boom uh oh oh you're getting fucking clapped huh. oh oh okay uh yeah you should talk to kidology and then if you ever open your news media company you should hire her as well yeah you think so yeah yeah genuinely if you want like the type of investigative work that it sounds like you've talked about wanting at your company mm -hmm. i feel like she would be a strong candidate for sure yeah. What does she what does she do actually she's a video essayist have you seen any of them um yeah a little bit so that's what she does i believe full time now um but she's very she's kind of like the the true like position of like comes to her own positions almost exclusively like on the laurels of like her own work and philosophy and stuff like that um and then reports her findings as, as she discovers them she's uh very very nuanced very based very thoughtful does she hate trans people? Um, I don't know what her opinion is on trans stuff, actually. No idea. Ooh, Why? Does she play the Harry Potter Hogwarts game. Well, Ooh, true. Uh, Do, are you playing? 
Uh, honest to God, I actually kind of want to go out of spite, but... Too lazy to play? You don't want to ride your own hippogriff? That seems like the kind of solo RPG just really feels like the type of game uh, genre that you'd be able to. Is this solo RPG? I'm pretty oh, sure. It was like an MMORPG or something. I'm pretty sure it says on the Steam, I'll look it up. Is it? I thought I was told it's solo. Oh, oh is Hogwarts Legacy. I don't know. Nope! Does not have online or co op. It's a single oh, player experience. Shit. I thought it was like an MMORPG for some reason. Dude, I'm so fucking good. Oh. Yep. Um, that's right. Wait, mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. are you playing then? I don't really do any games on stream. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Wait, do I seem like the solo RPG kind of, uh... Yeah, you seem like somebody that's like, Oh yeah, I play Skyrim. <laughs> Actually, I like to play... I used to play Ark a lot. That was my game. Ark. Yeah. But oh, on a... Is... Like Ark? Survival? The dinosaur oh, game? Oh, the dinosaur game. Yeah, except I would play usually on a private server. I tried to find a couple of servers like to play on with friends, but by the time I got into Ark, the buzz around Ark had already like died. Like, I got into Ark. Like, What's like the current player base? Wait, did you ever play like Rust or anything like that? No, I'm a, I'm kind of, I'm a like cringe girl gamer in a lot of ways. Like, if there isn't animals at least somewhat involved, I'm like immediately less interested. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's just literally like a mount. Um, so I think Rust has none of that from my you just like kill wolves and stuff like that. True. Right? Yeah. Do you um wait, what about like Minecraft? Or are there not enough animals in Minecraft? Uh no, I, Minecraft's just like too I just don't like the aesthetic of it mostly. Mm -hmm. I just yeah, I just don't Time like the blocks. The just like running around being like a block person, building a block land. Um yeah, yeah. And I like survival uh, quite a bit. So like Arc two when it comes out, I'll definitely mm -hmm try to play but there's a pretty like dedicated arc community i'm just not a part oh of my it. god when it comes out i'm gonna pay you money to uh you have to i want to see you try to get like a thing landed on the moon and kerbal space program too okay no i yeah. tried playing that game for like three days and i was like i fucking can't do this you have to you can do it you believe in you no i know i probably could figure it out eventually i cannot sink the time into it at all especially by the time when is it coming out Next week. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Shit, I don't even have an excuse. Fuck. I was hoping it would come out in like September and be like, oh, I'm probably in school, so. I wanna make like you and a president of Sunday race, okay? We're gonna think <laughs> we're truly superior. Uh, he's for sure going to win. Uh, he seems like he has the energy of somebody who'd be really good at the space program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. When you look at somebody like that, eh, that's kind of shitty questions to ask because you're personally involved. Um, but I guess, like, so some of the... What do you think was the... Well, actually, I'm curious. What do you think was his initial problem? What do you think he was going for? Like, give me the general spirit of what do you think his problem, his issue was. Or at least what he reported it to. So his reporting and what I think it is is very different. He thinks... Oh. he's So he has a big issue with IQ, specifically. Uh, he thinks it's misinformation. So he's concerned that I am somebody who is faking the extent of my credentials. Uh, for Wait, this... real quick, what do you think about IQ? That it's real, <laughs> testable. Okay. Yeah, that's gotcha. like that. That's that's the actual like. That's I. I believe his issue with IQ is that I like believe it to be a valid measure. Essentially, he says of human potential. I've never said IQ is a measure of human potential. It's a measure of like cognitive computational capacity. Um. So that's what he says. But I've noticed that he only started tweeting about me after I called him a hypocrite for getting into that like 13 minute conversation with you when he wouldn't like entertain degrees of separation mm -hmm. so i think i don't know that's when it all started um he never ever 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 tweeted about me before then so gotcha so you think it's just, uh, he's on a vendetta seems like it uh probably feels like morally justified now as like people often do and obviously i can't see into his mind so uh, head back to i can't know what to like what extent but yeah. brianna will um I I like Brianna. I I appreciate I'm really appreciating the like bridge building arc that's occurring amongst like non rabid insane people across like the political spectrum. And I think Brianna was a great example of that. I appreciate that she was able to like talk with you. Um I think she's 
got Wait, a... Did she talk with me yet? Have we done that yet? Well, on a panel. You guys had a panel on Wix panel where you guys talked back and forth at least a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, true, true. I remember. And I, I think she's really seeking, like, nuance and, like, reorienting particularly the left towards like topics that actually matter i think she's sick and tired of people quibbling over like a one percent difference um she's more interested in like greater good like she in many ways like sees you as somebody where she's like ah i think he's kind of an asshole like i i, I don't want to put words in his mouth but she ima i imagine like you guys have had your issues in the past and yeah, yet fucking hate each other yeah yeah but fundamentally i think she like I, again, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but like I, I can at least respect somebody who is trying to bridge build for like a greater like purpose, which is like let's maybe stop quibbling about like fucking xenogenders or like these like small little unimportant things, and let's talk about like more important things, like trying to get like representatives, trying to get people turning out to vote, right? Trying to get people participating in politics. Yeah, which I can appreciate. Why would you think? I truly don't know. Um, the person that's on the panels and everything is really, 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 really cool. Mm -hmm. um, she's doing a lot of research, background stuff, coming into conversations. She seems to be doing that virtual thing. But on Twitter, she's just like a, she's always been like that. Well, not just on Twitter, just in the past, she's been like that person that I hate. Like, so device and equivalent. But I wonder if she like turned a new leaf if something like actually genuinely changed recently. Um, or maybe she did it a while ago and I've just seen like her Twitter presence and that doesn't really communicate the best type of change or something else. Or yeah, I'm just, I'm really curious like what happened. Because I think most people would know her as somebody that was like contributing to that super toxic environment that she's now suddenly very against. Which is cool. I mean, I used to. Mm -hmm. um, so I like, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm just curious about that, I guess. Yeah, I, I can't speak for her. Obviously, I don't know if there's been a shift for her, but I remember. Did you ever watch my humanizing that I did with her? She talked a fair bit about like reflecting on Gamergate now, like, what? How many years has it been? Almost a decade. Not quite a decade since it's occurred. And she felt very, I remember saying, like, I feel really disappointed because I think we got so caught up in, like, unimportant things that we missed the point of, like, what actually mattered in Gamergate, which was, like, fair treatment and good treatment of workers, particularly female workers in gaming industries, um, which I thought was a very interesting reflection of hers. Um, yeah, I don't know. So I don't know if there's been growth. I don't know if she's changed position or if she's like, I've always had this position. Um, I don't know. I try to be careful about how I view people on Twitter uh, because, uh, you know, I know how you are on Twitter and I know how everyone is on Twitter. Um, sure. I would say it wasn't just that she was like unhinged on Twitter. It's like the, the status set of beliefs seem to be fundamentally different than what they are now. Mm -hmm. Where, like, I remember her siding with Keppels on like a bunch of things and like the, even like a while ago, I'm um, calling like the, uh, Anybody that plays that Hogwarts Legacy game is like a test of character or whatever, and that was like pretty recent, so yeah, I was just curious is where she's out of her mind. Yeah, I think if nothing else, in my experience with her, she's like always willing to be challenged and talk about opposing ideas, at least now. Like that has been my experience with her. Obviously, I've only known her for like less than a year, so that's been my experience with her exclusively is like she's been always pretty open to me disagreeing with her on because I disagreed with her on the Hogwarts legacy stuff, obviously, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, she, I mean, that seems to be the case. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or whatever, like, stuff like it's I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a good bridge to build. Um, I think, I think there's, I think there's so much potential right now um, for bridge building. Like, increasingly, like, even in the Sunday situation, seeing how many people of, like, all sorts of political leanings I mean, I'm, my, people might be like, oh, well, it was so, like, decisively in your favor. But it's like, people are so partisan that, like, sometimes facts and, like, reality doesn't matter, right? They'll just, like, side with their tribe. And I was shocked to see how many people were, like, willing... Willing to hate President Senate, or if nothing else, willing to hear me out. Uh, despite having every motivation to just like me. Um, Someone call the right, like, I think, like, poly people especially, like... Polly doesn't have any reason to be like even slightly warm towards me, but just like was able to watch it and like maybe like well Polly also hates Sunday, so like maybe that's what was driving it. But I don't know. I just I just want more bridge building. I don't know if it's possible. But I want a day where you and Kethels are friends. And I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I thought about it because she was trying to like bridge build with me. I really don't know how I feel about it. soldier down everything um i feel like in a post max lab world um mm. 
my in, my because my intuition is always to like just forgive and welcome back because it's easy to like make content and do like fun stuff again um, and like me and Kevl's like doing streams and like arguing and debating stuff would be, that would be fun it would be fun content and it might even be like fruitful right there might be like good conversation mm -hmm. um, but I wonder sometimes if I let people like take advantage of me way too much I think, um, I'm like way too into like I'm, like a giver type person and I have a really hard time setting boundaries and I don't know if I should like force some type of like Apology or something first, right? I think yeah. like that more harm for me than probably any other person alive. I, I mean, if I if I'm painting my uh, my Twitch ban on on our on the outcome of our fight, right? yeah, know, I'm really thrown at, but. Um, has she ever released that like uh, apology or redaction or anything like that? No, that which is not talking negatively about me. So rather than like push her into the limelight again by going through the court thing and risking anti slap and all this other shit, I just like let it be. Because there was a lot of um, conversations that she was having about like, on, or that was kind of uh, coming up on Dylan's show, and she seemed like, uh, I'll say respectful, uh, yeah. not like reopening those wounds. So, I mean, technically, I guess like if that's the case, it's probably okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's hard to know because I think, I suspect like center which is ironic to even call like you or i in any way center in normie land but i would say i'm not sure if you'd agree at least on on the internet i've just conceded i'll be like sure i'm center i'm center left i'm moderate left whatever um because on the internet reasonably i i kind of am because i'm just not like insanely far left i feel like there's a growing interest in that and so Sometimes when people like who I know are like ideologically different than me, sometimes I like wonder in the back of my head of like, is this just like a grift to like where the viewers are now? Like, is there just like this sense of like a growing viewership and growing popularity of like more moderated politics and more like nuanced politics? And I'm not really sure. I mean, in your situation, it's so tricky because I would say like you're this interesting dynamic where I'm gonna I'm gonna risk mind rating you, and you can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, you can also ask me. I feel like I'm pretty forthcoming, but go for it. Mind read me. Okay. My suspicion. I'm gonna. I guess I'm mind reading everyone around you more than I'm mind reading you specifically. Okay. I think. I think you're somebody easy to misread because you kind of do this interesting thing where the aesthetic that you communicate to people is oh, actually way... Sorry, God. yeah yeah I, I think you're getting it's way different than kind of how you treat people right or like oh, way more hostile yeah for sure not even hostile because it's not really hostile anymore i think you've tempered that a lot um to the point that like i suspect ggg is like begging for you to like fucking chew into somebody at some point no it's not, a lot of my new fans the reason why I say hostile is because I have a lot of new fans that will come on and they'll be like, bro, you're like so mean and blah, 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 blah. And I like ask people like, how long have you been watching me? I think the last guy I did that too. He said he started watching me in 2022 or 2020, or not 20, I think it was 2021. Yeah. But yeah, I picked up a lot of new people that have no idea like, where I've come from in terms of like hostility. So even today, I think I still communicate. I, I think the problem is, um, the problem is when I'm communicating an idea to somebody, I'm, I'm like my way of speaking, I'm, it's like very dynamic and very passionate. So if I think you did something wrong, I'm like, God, you so dumb, why the fuck would you do that? But I think people associate that type of like tone when speaking to a friend is like, okay, I hate you and it's over forever now. Um, yeah, I feel like I blame, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull a Britney here and appeal to my, um, and appeal to my, uh, my minority upbringing. Mm -hmm. uh, but unironically, like the Spanish, the Cuban half of my family, um, like my aunt especially and my uncle, they're like it was just so the communication form was so fucking violent <laughs> in terms of like screaming at each other like you fucking idiot what the fuck god i wish i recorded some of those arguments yeah. with my aunt early on but like afterwards like she we give each other hugs like okay let's go get some coffee or like whatever and like that was it it was always that like nothing and these are like like she would almost be crying in terms of how passionate she was in some of these arguments um same things with my aunt sarah and my grandma cecilia too they're like oh, well, go on, go on, go on. like screaming at each other that's just how they communicate yeah. but that doesn't like translate at all into yeah, it doesn't translate at all into like the online stuff. Everybody is like very like it's like a white middle class demeanor. Yeah, I was gonna say white middle class people are very scared of of raised voices. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I obviously haven't seen like 2016 Nebraska Steve, so I haven't like. I mean, I have. I've seen like clips of it, obviously, but clips are not like the best representation of like how you generally operated. Sure. Um, one thing that I think is specifically interesting about you when I'm talking about like that aesthetic piece. Um, 
Ah, sorry, Nick's just trying to get me to see something. What I wanted you to say. Was it worth it? It was. It was worth it. What was it? It's about the dog. Um, so, the aesthetic that I'm really thinking of is... Okay, this is my experience of you, and I'm curious to know what you think about my experience of you. I do my best to try to see people complexly, um, and I try to give people large margins of error. And the whole time I'm interacting with people, especially in person, is I'm trying to read who they are and somewhat predict what I think their needs are going to be, particularly needs that they're not going to be comfortable asking for or even like necessarily know how to ask for. Because I'm always thinking about how I can like love on my friends and treat them really well, right? That's my proclivity. There are strengths and weaknesses to that. Your aesthetic that you communicate, it's not just an asshole anymore. Um, there's that cold piece, but specifically, I think now especially, there's like, it sometimes feels like a disinterest. And I think people read that personally. I don't, honestly, because I, I try to just measure you and like the actions that you present. Uh, right? I know you to be very generous. Uh, you've always treated me kindly. If I like have, even with the Sunday situation, when I like you and I like chatted and stuff, like you were extremely like considerate of like, Kind of where I was landing, even they're like, I don't know anything about the situation. I can't like, I can't weigh in any way because I need to see it, right? So you're fair without like abandoning your principles. Um, I suspect. Oh yeah, because initially when that President Sunday stuff broke, Erudite was like, Stephen, I need you to go DefCon Seven on guys in vests with obnoxious accents. Don't say that. Don't, don't please, <laughs> please publicly, don't even hi, say that. Hi, you're Sunday. joking. Hi, you're joking. Yeah. It's a joke. That didn't happen. Holy fuck. Uh, that did not happen. Um, <laughs> but I think, like, especially when you first meet people, I think you get very interested in them because they're novel and unique and you like interesting things. And I think people expect that to maintain, which it can't because you get distracted by new shiny things, uh, which is fair and understandable. But people, I think a lot of times take that personally. Like I've been trying to look back at like your interactions with a whole bunch of different content creators and be like, damn, like why did people like just assume the most malicious out of you? And possibly it was a different culture, possibly like lefty vengeance culture was more popular back then. It's kind of dying out because they've cannibalized themselves so much. That's probably in part what's going on. But I suspect a lot of people when they interact with you, they presume a complete lack of like care on your part. And I think a lot of people take lack of care personally. Um, hmm. I could kind of agree. Um, I think one thing that I do is like, I tend to seek out what I consider to be very interesting people. And more often than not, um, once you kind of figure out like what's going on, it gets kind of, like, okay, I understand this. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some people that are exceptional there um, that I think maintain, I maintain high levels of interest in. Uh, but then things still get fucked. So like Max was still a very interesting character <laughs> up until the very end. But um, but I guess he still perceived that I had no care for him at all. Shit got fucked. I, th I think Max is probably a bit of a unique case. I could be wrong. How much does Max's situation map on to like, for example, what happened between you and Hassan or you and Ian? Um, Are they similar at all in like how they played out emotionally for the other people? Oh, you got. You want me to fucking mind read them a little bit based on what you saw. I Best guess. If I'm on a like virtual machine, other people's feelings. I need like my full brain for that. Um, can't do that mode again. Um, I try to think of how they were feeling. Um, I think. I'm trying to think of Vosh and Hassan Ammunition like, here. first. Uh, I think for Hassan, I think it was ego driven. I think he felt like very undermined by me. Probably felt like I wasn't being very considerate about how he felt about new. things. I like and I probably you. felt like I wasn't taking into account his perspective as much as I should have been if I was a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and I probably came off more aggressively than he would have liked, which to him communicates um, not friend. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, what did the Irish Laddie Bridge break over? We already were kind of separating politically. I don't know if. I don't know for Ian if it was as much a feelings thing or if it was just like a kind of community thing. Like we'd already split pretty hard in terms of political ideology. The Rittenhouse thing came up where he was so obviously wrong. Fuck, what was that? And then the, um, uh, and then the, um, this, this is good. Uh, and then there was that debate over like living your principles and the idea of like ever taking an optics L to destiny is like probably the worst thing like you could wish on any human being. Because even if you lose debates to me, at the very least, you're going to win optically because I'm going to like make a child rape analogy or something, you know? 
Um, so yeah, I think I think Vosh and Asan were different, and then Mr. Girl. Um, if I, what is he doing? If I am truly to perceive um, Mr. Girl as a narcissist, I would say that the issues with him started when um, when we started to have disagreements. Dumb fuck, get absolutely shit on. This guy doesn't even belong in my game. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I think the writing was on the wall as soon as I started disagreeing with him on things. Yeah. But that, but M Mr. Girl's a bit different because I think there's like truly, like I, I've said this before, I think he's like the only person I've truly met that like meets and exceeds that threshold for like actual narcissistic personality disorder. Mm. What, um, <clears throat> I'm curious. Remember how you said to Brittany Simon that you would trust her with your bank card? Uh, yeah, we're gonna make that decision. I have really good feelings about in terms of Brittany in terms of like who I can trust. Yeah, like, why? What's different of, between Brittany? I trust Brittany because of her personality. I trusted Max. Um, I, I trust Brittany on an emotional level. I trusted Max logically. Um, on a Machiavellian sense, like he'll never burn the bridge with me because I'm like so unconnected. Right? Like this guy, like I have to be so valuable to him. I can't imagine he would do something that fucking stupid. From an emotional level, um, I don't know if there would have been as much. See, that's so strange to me because I feel like if you're understanding Max in any way, you would know that he's an extremely like emotion-driven individual. Like he thinks he thinks emotions in many ways matter more than the logic. He doesn't give a fuck about the logic. What he cares about is being like accurate to his emotionality. So in that way, like when all this shit like blew up, like, I was like, I was expecting this. Like this is exactly what I would expect from uh, like not precisely the way that it blew up. Like I didn't expect like the like grooming, uh, sexual cult shit allegations or whatever, but. I would have expected it. Whereas, like, somebody like Brittany, I know Brittany will never do that to you or to anyone that she's friends with. Like, no question. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I don't disagree with you. Um, but, I, like, it's very much not how I think. And so when I'm trying to, like, fathom other people's minds, I have to do a lot of work to, like, build out, like... I have to do a lot of work to build everything out to, to, to like properly analyze it. Like if you like, I, I, I understand that thought process really well. I actually I map out exactly how our relationship ended in my second conversation with Max, mm -hmm. um, where I understand that sometimes people burn bridges with me, but they don't feel like they're backstabbing me. They feel like they have some kind of like moral calling to do so, and they feel like they're in the right while doing it. So of course it's like the direct, et cetera, et cetera. Like I laid all that out like on our second talk, and we kind of like laughed it off or whatever. That's basically exactly what happened. But for me to like, I have to do a lot of work to get to that state of mind. Yeah, because mm. I don't think like oh, that's insane to me. Um, yeah. Huh. I wonder if, in part, because like you've kind of like, um, like, again, I know I refer back to this all the time. I've never seen anybody capture you. I think as accurately as I think anyone has, which is Dr. K. I don't know if you still agree with Dr. K, but he talked a lot about like kind of turning off the colors in other areas. And I'm not talking about like, and you're broken and hurting on the inside. I think you're just yeah, fucking fine sure. having them off. No, I'm not. I'm really not. I believe you that you're just fine. Like, I think you could continue to exist like this with no problems. There's no like major cycle. Of, like, I'm not trying to like, I'm not trying to max reject and be like, there's deep core hidden trauma that if you just let it out, you know, you'll be broken. That may be true. But I think if you continue to exist in this way, you probably can maintain a long term uh, as far as like your well being. But I wonder if that limits you in your capacity to like understand to some extent other people, particularly in the emotional realm, because people are like working with all of the colors that you've kind of like turned off. Like it would be hard to see a picture if like you just don't see like blue and red, right? And you're just like, nope, those two colors don't work. But everyone else is operating with the presumption that blue and red is there. And for a lot of people, I think specifically a lot of the emotions you've cut off are like, for a lot of people, some of the biggest driving reasons why they do the shit that they do. Um, I don't think so actually. I understand why you would think that way, but I think that, um... I think that a lot of people actually have a lot of trouble, like, understanding other people's minds, or it's something that I run into, like, even if they do share some of the, like, same foundational kind of, like, patterns. Mm -hmm. um, so it it's feels that way for some people. Uh, now I'm thinking on a political level, not a personal level. Like, how can somebody be, uh, how can somebody be pro-life and not hate women, you know? Like, that's like, some people just can't even fathom that, which seems kind of silly to me. But I don't know if that's, like, there's other stuff going on there because of, like, the political shit, you know? Sure. So what's different about Max than Brittany? Like you said, Brittany is somebody that you can like trust indefinitely. What was like, what's different beyond like their personality? Like what, why, why could you tell? What can you tell about Brittany that makes you trust her so much? Um, first, let's see if this guy's up for it. Okay, one second. Mm -hmm. I 
Actually, I'm gonna run to the washroom. So I'll be back. Okay. These are pretty late in here. Uh, got an answer? We're still in it. Uh, I feel like, um, I feel like Brittany has a very, very, very high level of emotional maturity and understanding. Um, and then maybe there's a bit of arrogance on my part that I assume that if I could connect with someone at that level, there would be no reason for either of us to, to fuck with each other. Hmm. Um, yeah, it might be that. I, I think I just, I have her kind of like on a, a bit of a pedestal, because I, I feel like she has a lot of emotional maturity, I guess. Mm hmm And so, like, because of that, you basically, what do you expect? Like, if, if something comes up where you guys, like, disagree, you basically expect her to be able to manage that well, or, like, how does that map onto you trusting her specifically? Just so I'm making sure I'm understanding. Yeah, that we can manage a disagreement without it being the end of the fucking world. Mm hmm And then everything going to hell, and then, like, nuking everything, yeah. Yeah. Do you think since, like, the Max situation specifically, that it kind of, like, mind-fucked you about, like, who you can trust? More no, because it was stupid. The Lav was a bit of a wild card, but she I didn't know she was going to get into the streamer world. I don't think I would have done that if I had known that she was going to be a big streamer afterward, or, like, in, in this world. Um, and for Max, uh, Max was really interesting, but... Uh, but that was just, I projected my mind onto that. Because we have, we, in some ways we have similar, I actually don't know if we have any similarities, the more that I think about it. I think that I mistake my ability to understand with what he was saying with being similar, but I don't think we are similar, almost at all, actually. Mm. Um, I can just understand what he's saying, and I, I, I mistook that for that. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so you, do you often mistake that, or is that just with Max where you mistook understanding what he was saying as we're akin? I think I was, I think he's interesting and I think I'm doing a lot of work to patch up what he's saying into something that probably wasn't. I actually, I guess I was probably idealizing him quite a bit actually. Mm -hmm. um, because he will say, he'll say stuff, like for instance, like, cause that's why everybody says I'm doing it out of spite. I don't give a fuck what I do with But like when I go, like I genuinely think he's a rapist. Um, but in the past I genuinely didn't think so. But I think it's because I was doing a lot of legwork to build out the things that he was saying, right? That like, Maybe there is a time where yes means no, and no means yes, and like, technically that is true. And it, it, like with a high level of actual empathy, not like you've got empath in your Twitter bio, mm -hmm. um, you, you can navigate those situations. And I consider myself pretty good at navigating those situations. And he says he is, and he says most of the right words with a little bit of patchwork. Um, and I think I was just doing a lot of work to build him out to somebody with more somebody than actual is. And then now in retrospect, I see that like, no, he's like, absolutely and completely and totally different than what I thought. Um, mm. Like, some of his stuff will look similar on the outside, but but at the end of the day, it's not. Like, he, like he'll have outbursts with Shaylin. I have outbursts in my relationship when I fuck up. Uh, not like that, ever. But, like, um, my, my outbursts are temper, and I usually realize afterwards, like, I'm in the wrong. Like, I, I was in the fucking reason. Wow. But I'm not going to make those justified until the day he dies. Right. Uh, and more importantly, Break everyone out. around him has to mirror his justification. It's not enough for him to justify himself. He has to like be belligerent for the part that they all just think, right? Sorry. And, and that's like that's like a fundamentally different approach to, to humanity. Uh, but I, yeah, I, I was super blinded by that. Probably just because he was interesting and just personally and I understood him. And I mistook that understanding of the story. Hmm. 
when you because you mentioned part of what launched us into this is you talking about like not knowing if you have enough boundaries with people and like if you're just like kind of like too soft on people and like too forgiving um do you see that playing into your relationship with max um a little bit maybe yeah i'm i'm actually in some ways i'm very competitional other ways her person i'm very non competitional mm -hmm. I noticed that when I was talking to that fucking David guy, that there's a lot of stuff that I Ice know that business-wise that works, and I do it, because it obviously makes sense. But then when it comes to interpersonal stuff, I don't do it. Anymore. I owe you. Uh, when, now I've learned from him, especially through some private recently, that it's incredibly effective. Um, I was really hesitant to, uh, to, to contact, basically, an old, like, Twitch friend that I had, because I, I was like, it seems kind of impulsive, it seems a little bit pushy, like, I don't think that this guy's gonna go for that. He's gonna be medic in the area! If anything, you ought to do this. And I reached out to this guy, and I had, a I had like, a four-hour chat with him, like, two nights ago. And I was like, I, this is so stupid. Like, I, I don't know why I didn't figure this out on my own. Um, so interpersonally, I have problems. The thing with Max that I should have leaned on really hard was the, um, the community stuff was really disrespectful. Um, right. him, like, posting hundred. Was it seven? Was it seven hundred comments in two months? I I'm not sure. I didn't follow that. That would that's insane. If that's um, the case, I, I, I think it was. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But like that level of like fervent like posting in my subreddit, and then like thinking that he was correct on an argument that's pretty fundamental to what I do, which is like talking to people of different political beliefs and yeah. like trying to rub that in my face. He made a post that was like I was right about this and blah blah blah. And I'm like, damn, that's like mad disrespectful. Like a lot of people I think would, would permanently kick you out of a community for doing this. Um, but like I let Forethought do his little ban and then I, you know, so like, oh, like, you know, maybe it will probably undo it a while. But I think I should have, I should have had a personal talk with him right at that point. Like, hey, listen, like, we need to have a chat with like how you're going to function in my community. Why didn't you? Um, <clears throat> I think I, this, I feel like it's a better private community. Everything I say, nobody understands this publicly, but, um, I think that I, uh, I'm really, really, really scared about the circle jerks about getting lost, like, in, like, too much, like, um, like, you know, self-reinforcement or whatever. So I yeah. think I underplay my, um, or I'm not as confident in my approach to some things as I should be, uh, because I'm willing to take a step back, like, pretty often, and, 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 and like, think, like, okay, well, maybe this is, maybe I am being unreasonable here, maybe it's like, too much on my part or whatever, when I think I shouldn't do that all the time. And I get, I'm trying to get better at organizing, like, when can I do this and when can I not? But it's, like, something I've had a big problem with, I think. Do you have, what is like your order of priorities in like navigating like boundaries with relationships and stuff? Like, do you think there's like a misorder of priorities and like, like in many ways it's, I could be wrong. Do you think that you prioritize like Max being really interesting and you're like kind of also like a bit of like your personal principle of not wanting the circle jerk over things like, uh, basic expectations about like how your friends should be treating you, especially in public domains? We've successfully defended the facility. Um, I think when I, if I'm understanding your question correctly, what I tend to prioritize is just usually other people's comfort. Mm. I think that's why I do so well in the, um, in like the, the, like the sexual chit and the right. relationship and the hookup stuff. I have a very good understanding of like other people's comfort levels. Um, but obviously you can go too far with that. And I think I do, that I don't consider like my own. Personally, I have a really big problem with that. Mm -hmm. and, but then, and, but then the problem is, is that I'll get upset. A lot of me and Melina's problems come down to this: is that I'll get upset when the other person is stepping over boundaries that I have, and then I'll throw like a huge temper tantrum over it. But it's not really fair because I, I just I don't assert those boundaries well, and then right. people cross them all the time. And it's like, I, I cannot really get upset. Right, and it like leaves the other person in this state of like almost like distress because if they can't know your boundaries, then they're constantly having a mind read instead. Yeah, and exactly. And then they start to feel gaslit when they have problems and shit with me. And I say, well, it's not fair because of this or that or that. I'm like, well, how the fuck am I supposed to? Yeah. Do you think that you have an issue knowing like what you need in relationship? Like what your boundaries would even need to be or asks that you need to make? No, I have a pretty good understanding of it. I just, I never know if it's fair. Because, so like, cause typically when I'm asserting boundaries in a relationship, usually with the other party counters, it sounds like you just want to be single. So I never know like if the things that I'm asking for are too much or not. What about like with, maybe we'll just focus on like Max, just because I don't want to like, sure. or whatever one you want to focus on. But like, what, what made you hesitant that like your needs or like boundaries in there were like less important than like not having a circle jerk, for example? Like what, what happened in your mind where you're like, ah, I don't know if it's important. Um, well, because I mean, I empathize with his point of view. Like, mm -hmm. it's gonna suck. Oh my god. That brought new meaning to hostile takeover. It's gonna suck if you have a community that you feel is dogpiling you, you've got a guy that you consider your friend, and then, um, 
fight on top of all of this, like, it feels like, yeah, it feels like the whole game is running that basically just being sanctioned by somebody that you thought you had, like, a close relationship with. Right. Uh, which is, from his perspective, that's essentially what happened, right? Yeah, it's just unfortunate because, um, this is something that I've noticed about you. I'm curious what you think about this. You're an incredibly considerate person that I think a lot of people don't realize is considerate. Would you agree with that, or am I missing Mark? Um, if people have personal experience with me, they'll they learn that very quickly. Um, per, I, yeah, I guess they forget some. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because it's because like we have combos with Max where um, he's like crying because of like how nice <laughs> I've been in terms of like um, platforming him and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I think there was a time when him and Molina. Um, I shouldn't have put my meters over here. Him and Melina were having a really personal exchange Finish over how I thought it was sad that he was kind of like lost in this nowhere land where none of his videos got very many views, but he's like one of the most artistic creators I've ever seen. And that was like, this I thought that was really sad. And he seemed like pretty touched by that recognition. Mm -hmm. um, but for some reason, yeah, people people throw away things uh, in, in a really bizarre manner. Me and Melina both have tried to figure that out. Because Melina's a pretty cool person too. Mm -hmm. but we'll have friends that like, um, I bet he's got mines buried over here, yeah. Oh my god. Okay, he has a lot of life right over here. Um, people, people, um, yeah, people seem quick to, like, not care much about that sometimes. I don't know why. Jeez. Do you have any guesses as to, like, why? Like, what causes people to, like, basically, it sounds like they under, they very quickly go to undervaluing the gratitude that they at least previously showed the moment, like, some sort of tension or slight occurs. Um, I truly have no idea. Me and Melina mm -hmm. have been backstabbed by so many people. It's, but, but we're like probably some of the coolest people you'd ever hang out with, especially mm -hmm. in this horrible fucking entertainment world. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what causes people to um, to flip so hard. I really don't know. I'm not sure. But and they, and they always come back later too because they realize that they're like, okay, yeah, fuck you. Uh, what? Well, can you not take them back? Um, it's hard to because if, they, if they've got the propensity to fuck you over uh, one time, I mean, they theoretically could do it again. And then it also feels different too if somebody's like crossed a certain line, like. Mm -hmm. But now they realize, like, oh fuck, maybe I should have stayed friends with you guys. Like, oh, well, <laughs> fuck you. Right. Do you when people are like trying to come back? Do you ever like make asks of like what coming back would look like? Um, I could, but I don't think Molina could, um, because in her mind, like just having the propensity of doing some of the things that people have done, like already kind of like sullies it. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. So not really sure why people backstab you. Do you guys think you get backstabbed on a higher than average amount for streamers? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. It feels like everybody's like really snaky to everybody. So it could be like just an industry norm, and I'm just doing a bad job at like perceiving that it is. Yeah. Or because it's happening to me, it feels more personal than maybe. Possibly. I mean... What size do you think you would need to somebody's platform would need to get to? Because I imagine this would be in part incentivized by like the size of the content creator. Like you and Melina both have very large platforms, so it's possible that like the platform size itself is incentivizing it. Do you think that that would be like a factor? I don't know. When I did when I was doing that part of my manifesto where I was like going through like things that I've done for people and then seeing how they fucking over at the end, I was pretty surprised. Like the website thing is pretty surprising. That's pretty insane. <laughs> but there's like there's a whole industry built around like building off of a website that I kind of gave to the world for free. Yeah. Um, and every single person that uses it like wants me literally like deleted from the fucking internet and possibly <laughs> killed. That's yeah. like a pretty... It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. Which is why... Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I have my own theories, but I am curious about like your... the aesthetic that you communicate. Because I agree that you're like, you're an incredibly considerate person, but I would say most people are very emotional, right? And they care way more about the way things feel than the way things that they actually are. That would be my guess. I don't know if you'd agree with that. Um, yeah, probably would. Sounds pretty tippy, so. <laughs> tippy? I'd agree. Yep. Tip. And so in the case of like, why they're so willing to throw away what was is because of how things feel now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this kind of goes interpersonally. I said this before that like I have to do. Um, I've got to try really hard to keep in mind like certain behaviors that I can do to communicate interest to in people because I Prowler tend to, um, through body language or whatever, I can communicate way more disinterest than I ever mean Enemy to. Enemy transport mm -hmm. really, really bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, because in a lot of ways, like how you portray yourself is how people will feel about you. So if you're like communicating disinterest, then they're going to feel that you're disinterested. And most people aren't going to like extrapolate that out to like, oh, that's probably just his stuff. Like they're going to take it personally. I mean, like, well, he's like super considerate of me and very generous, kind, like shares his platform. But then when they like, spend time together, it's just like disinterested, doesn't really seem to care, uh, things like that. Do you ever think about any of these things or no? Or Me personally? Naturally? Yeah, intuitively. Think about which parts? Like you specifically? No, no, like, yeah, how often do you think about me at night? No. Um, like communicating <laughs> like interest to people or whatever. Not as often as my mom does. Um, yeah, I think about the emotional aesthetic that I communicate to people a fair bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Not as much as Nick does. I think Nick is better at navigating this more naturally because I'm pretty keenly aware of it. I just sometimes don't care. Um, like I, I sometimes will like, like Nick is always trying to like navigate towards like making sure that he's communicating the aesthetic that he wants people to feel because that is how he feels to some degree as well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm just like too lazy essentially, like where I'm aware that if I like change my tone here or anything that it would probably get better get positive outcomes though. and they would probably like me a fair bit more. I'm just like, I'm sorry. Like if you, if you can't take me like this, I just, I don't, I'm too busy. I don't want it. I'm good. Um, it's more ammunition. so how I operate, but. I I suspect that my aesthetic that I communicate is pretty similar to how I feel about things. Um, I have a harder time of like getting myself to feel some sort of way um, that I think is probably would be a better way to feel about it, if you know what I mean. Gotcha, sure. Does that make sense? Do you think about, yeah, do you think about the, um, do you think about what Lav said? You're a pick me? Not really. <laughs> uh, I do. So one thing, not so much from, Lav's critique because Lav is saying like she's changed it now to like we're all kind of pick means because we're all like trying to like serve the interest of like the patriarchy and stuff. Cringe. Um, instead there was actually like a, 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 a ironically enough a mutual friend between me and Lav as well that we talked about it and she kind of gave me the viewpoint of like if you're communicating an aesthetic of a pick me even though you're not that like really matters but this is more like a political thing of like if my channel communicates pick me energy while it would be better for people to try to see me more complexly, it's not really fair to expect the average viewer who has like two minutes that they want to dedicate to my content to um, to come away with a more complex view of me. I can't, I can't expect that. And so if I don't want to be communicating the energy of like, I want to throw women under the bus, I need to make sure that my content is going out of its way to communicate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, um, do you think it's possible to build things around like a clip world? Like somebody might only ever see like two minutes of my content at any given point in time, and I, I need to always be prepared and expecting to like navigate that. I suspect that's in, a little bit impossible. I feel like that would be too high of a standard because like you can always be clipped weird or your clips can rub people wrong. Like mm -hmm. when I read like the comments on my shorts, I, I don't give a fuck at all. Mm -hmm. um, is that answering your question? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I don't want really. to, because I'm only curious because you made the comment about like, um, like if my, if short things on my channel, uh, or whatever can communicate, pick me energy, do you just expect people to perceive you as such? Not so much shorts, more like combination of content. Like if somebody scrolls through my videos and watches like a couple of minutes and they feel like a super strong pick me energy, that mm -hmm. would definitely be an issue. Um, I don't think, I mean, definitely, like, my shorts are made by one of my editors, so, I mean, we're definitely mindful to, like, not make me look like a giant raging misogynist, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, but part of, like, what I'm thinking about is, like, the content specifically that I'm putting out. Uh, right, like, I, because I'm so, like, masculine in a lot of, like, my pursuits and interests, I'm very, like, aggressive a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have a tendency to have a preference for masculine things. And I think the problem is that, especially in like our world, when you prefer masculine things and our entire society prefers the masculine as well, it's very easy to come to believe that the feminine is just left important. Um, how do you feel when women like that, um, that one, um, what's that red pill wifey, what's her name? Allie. Not, Allie, Allie. When she says things like my husband picked me because I like can make a sandwich well, do you think that's true? I think she's making mostly a joke. I think she's being like, like, kind of like silly in that moment. Well, I don't know how she, she or she said it. It sounds like she's saying that like, because she found her femininity and she picks for like masculinity and all of that. It doesn't sound like a joke. It sounds like she like feels pretty strongly about that. But I feel like she has like, she exhibits like very, very, very masculine 
energy. Like, that would be a person that I would be really interested in. Um, she does. She, she, Ali is really interesting because she actually expresses hyper masculine and hyper feminine traits. Um, what hyper feminine traits? I'm curious what you mean by that. She can be like incredibly soft and sweet uh, when like moved into that space. I think she stays very like open to people's ideas and very like kind as far as like how she's listening. She's very much like when you engage with her in the right tones, she really tries to be like a yes and interlocutor versus like a no but. Right, um, like when if you talk with her, I feel like a lot of people when I talk to is like like you're running into a wall uh, while you're like debating, especially when you have different worldviews. Whereas mm -hmm. for her, it feels like a lot easier and smoother, and she's always working really hard to understand you, right? Yeah. And so somebody might be like, well, men can be that too. Why is that necessarily feminine? I don't fucking care. I, I don't know, because that seems to We're be just, what we attribute to the feminine. Yeah, I'm gendering the trait for the sake, yeah, sake of like fine. purposeness. And it seems like our society genders these traits too. Mm -hmm. um, so in that way, I think she exudes a lot of like very feminine traits, especially like her and I actually chat a fair bit now privately as well. I think as she's gotten more comfortable with me, I see more of those traits come out. I think I, I'm going to mind read her now, so I could be completely wrong. But based on like her lifestyle, growing up in the military, being from a single mom, I suspect in a lot of ways, a lot of women, I kind of have this conception. I'm a woman who expresses a lot of like traditionally masculine, right? Which is why like my church, the women at church didn't like me very much. Disagreeable. Okay. I want to fight all the time, very concerned about things and ideas. Um, I find a lot of women that exhibit like high masculine traits sometimes do it because that's like their personality, but sometimes do it out of like.
Bell Delphine and our boy. Didn't realize Asmongold was Bell's dad. God, I wish Asmongold was my dad. I don't believe that. I don't want to show any pictures. Well, she didn't say that. This lying ass bitch. Yeah, see, you guys thought you were gonna get me. You thought you were gonna fool me on this and start some bullshit. Ban him? I should. Uh, control F? Okay, fine. Give me a minute. Never mind. You know, Belle Delphine messaged me like a few years ago and she wanted to join my classic WoW guild. I didn't really know how to respond to this, but I was like, okay, sure. She got to level three and she quit the game. Today is August 9th, 1945. The US- No, it's not drops two atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, turning the cities to dust and ending the lives of more than 200,000 people, shortly after which Japan surrenders. Yep. In celebration, the US government creates and publishes a tabletop board game called Nuclear Love, themed according to the operation performed. It was okay. made for two players, where one would be playing on the side of the US and the other would be playing as Japan. Got the it. game features dice that look like me. Can, can Japan win in the game? Or do they just like, does like the US start with like uh, 50 pieces and Japan starts with like three? Like, how does this work? Yeah. Miniature atomic bombs. And Savage, the person yeah. who manages to bomb the other city capital first wins. By rules of the game, however, the US side would always have the first turn, which brought natural advantage. Right. And the board game, despite the patriotism and popularity, failed on the market. Sounds like a rather unethical piece of military propaganda that nullifies the tragedies, right? That's because nuclear love never existed and I just made it up. But there is a similar okay. situation that does exist that follows this formula and it is about to be released. Yeah, I never heard of that either. That's, that was clever. No, that's actually, that's such a good way to start a video. That's actually so good. This is a great intro. East and its name is Atomic Heart. Okay. I want to preface the video by saying that if you're the type of person that is still going to buy and play something like Hogwarts Legacy, despite its infamy, you might as well click off, as I'm going to explain why it's a bad idea to purchase and play Atomic Heart. Okay, let's Go hear. on, you have a Joe Rogan podcast to catch up on, or play Call of Duty or something. There actually was a few clips from like the one where Lex was on, I was gonna watch that. But, um, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it today. I'll probably do it, like, maybe in a couple of days. Thing, I don't know. Yeah, but like the AI stuff. Being Ukrainian myself, I'm making this video to spread mm -hmm. awareness. So even if 100 people see this, I'm satisfied. Okay. Even if one person cancels their pre-order because of this video, I'm satisfied. I will be turning monetization on for this video, if possible. And all revenue from this video will be going straight to local Ukrainian charities. But let's start with okay. the basics. What is Atomic Heart? Atomic Heart is a video game set to be released on February 21st, 2023 that is positioned by the developers as Bioshock in the USSR. It describes the events of okay. the alternative history of the 50s where the Soviet Union emerged from the Second World War scientifically and technologically advanced, reaching the- I don't see that as being a problem. I, I don't find this as fundamentally problematic. Yeah, I, I don't see this as being bad. Because, like, the thing is, obviously this is a 20-minute video. But I, I'll give, Mike my, my general opinion. So, I did a massive fundraiser whenever the Ukraine thing first happened. I completely support them. I totally, 100% support them. But at the same time, I think that it's unfair to categorize civilians in Russia making a video game as the same as the country itself. I think it's very unfair. Many of them don't support it. They don't have freedom of speech there. They're massively inundated with propaganda. 
So a lot of them that think that the, you know, Ukraine is full of Nazis and Russia is bombing to kill all of them as soon as possible so we don't have any more Nazis anymore. Like, that's what they think over there. Some of them do, I'm sure, because that's what the media feeds them. And it's if their country has performed bad actions in the past. And I think the answer to that is yes, uh, absolutely, because it's a fantasy world. It's not real. Uh, it doesn't. It, it just doesn't change anything. I, I don't think people are going to watch this. And it's like, whenever I look at, even in the original trailer, like they're even mirroring a lot of the the dystopian elements of uh, of the USSR, where it's like, oh, disp to, you know, the worst thing you can do is tell the truth. Like this was even in, in the trailer for the game. So it's it's very odd to see this on at least a surface level. So I'm curious to hear like what the argument against this really is. And this is coming as somebody, again, I massively support Ukraine. I'm a huge supporter of Ukraine. 100%. We raised a lot of money. I donated my own money into that. But look, that doesn't mean that everybody in Russia is in the USSR. Let, let's, come on, like, let, let, let's be, let's, let's use some sense here. Pick of development with cold nuclear fusion and intelligent robots. You play as Mayor Nichayev, who is a KGB major and an officer in special assignments. So far, the game has been universally appraised, earning All top over. spots in oncoming games lists on sites style? like PC Gamer, IGN, okay. and Gamescom. But let's see who is really behind it. The game is developed by a right. Russian studio called Montfish. On the website of the studio, there is currently no mention of the fact that this is a Russian game dev. The story of the company... Well, I think it would make sense that they wouldn't mention that it's a Russian game dev. And, and I think also, like... Which one... And, and this, is, this is very subjective, I think, in some regards. Which one do you guys think is worse, Russia or China? In terms of, like, their, you know, negative impact, uh, in terms of, like, humanitarian... Uh, environment, China. A lot of people saying China, right? Uh, I, I think that like China is just the fact is like Russia is like this, China is like this. Not in terms of like land mass, but in terms of impact and and, and like power. So oh, a pair, I just figured it out. So this thing right here that pops up. So we got a special pop up. You it comes up whenever no. somebody orders a Starforge PC. And so that's what it was. I actually thought I had a virus on my computer. Straight up, yeah, so that pops up every time. Yeah, there you go, that's a plus one. So every time you guys see that, that's another Starforge PC Point that gets style? sold. There you go. And so, uh, anyway, what, where, was I, where was I getting at here? Um, uh, fuck, I gotta try, oh yeah, yeah. So, so if, if you wanna look at the logic Liberty and say that dead. because these people are from Russia and them promoting something that is like, I don't know if this is like pro-Russian because it seems like it, it's very dystopian but let's assume that it is. How is that bad, but whenever China categorically owns everything in China that is created by China, how are we not having the same energy for every Chinese video game that gets made? I don't understand it. Like, I, 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 don't, see the, I don't see the correlation here. And, and also, e even more to the case, so let, let's change nouns here, okay? Let's change KGB to CIA, and let's change Russia or USSR to, uh, you know, the U.S. military. USA. The USA, I mean, we started off the video with uh, something that would, like, obviously, you know, the bomb ended World War II. It, it stopped a lot of people from getting killed, but it also killed a lot of people. And those, by the way, were not the only two nuclear bombs that we ever dropped on people either. So look that up if you want to find out the kind of stuff that the U.S. has done. So like, how is it, a, how is it okay that we have games like Call of Duty that are just like rampant with different like, uh, you know, like patriotism and like, you know, uh, idealizing the American military, etc. How is it okay that we have these, but Atomic Heart is problematic? I, you see what I'm saying? Like, it just, there's, there's so many questions. Like whenever you start this up, I feel like you're just you're opening up Pandora's box. He begins with its launch in 2017 by a team of poor like-minded gaming enthusiasts. Okay. Cyclers. At the same time, the studio was mentioned as a Russian one with an office in Moscow in Russian gaming and IT media articles. 
In 2019, there was even a report from the mm -hmm. Moscow office of the studio. And after the events of 2022, the company completely ostracized itself from being known as a strictly Russian company and is now presenting itself as international. Which I find this to be extremely disingenuous. Visual because hostile the reason why I find it to be incredibly disingenuous is that number one, it imp like it presupposes that the people that make Atomic Heart are doing this for nefarious reasons. And also, Spotted this would Republic make sense Fowler. in terms of doing business, because Russia is massively sanctioned on a by sunder. everything. So what if they didn't agree with what's happening with Ukraine? So they say, hey, we don't want to be, so we don't want to be associated with this anymore. We Fowler's didn't vote body. for this. We didn't want this. Where is the evidence that that is not the case? And if he's able to provide that, then that will change what I'm saying. But right now, I think this is such a horrible and, and like very... I, I find like this, this is a very, very bad argument. I don't like it at all. Because it, it, it supposes that they are doing it for a nefarious reason. Whereas, of course, they don't want to be associated with Russia. Maybe because they don't support it. Maybe because they don't want to have the bad PR. They don't want to be criticized for something their country did. Like, I'm pointing, I'm, I'm very sure that in 2001, there were a lot of people that lived in Afghanistan or Iraq that didn't want to have anything to do with 9-11. They said, this is fucked up. We should, this shouldn't have happened. Like, it's not their fault. They didn't do it. They didn't vote for that. They didn't tell, they didn't tell them to fly the planes in there. What the fuck? In terms of their history of office installments and offshores, mm -hmm. means half Cyprus, half Armenian, half Singapore, yeah, and sure. whatever the hell else, just to avoid sanctions and negative spotlight. So... Is that bad, though? I mean... Like, R Russia, like, let's be honest here, Russia is simply not a democratic country. It is to an extent, but that extent is very limited. Russia's, yeah, it, it, it's not their fault. It's not even like, you can say that to an extent, you know, the United States government is a reflection of its people because we have, you know, a, a, well, we have a republic, but it, it's a democratic republic. So like you can vote and, and have things change. Russia doesn't work that way. It's the same thing with like people that criticize Chinese. Bro, like, especially Chinese that live in America. Bro, they left. And you're still gonna put this on them? They didn't do it! Now that we've established that this is actually a Russian studio, what is their opinion on the war going okay. on? What's your what could be their stance on this tragic matter that could save and keep their public image and also not tank the sales? Let's read out loud together. Okay. Guys, we have noted the questions surrounding where we at Muntfish stand. We want to assure you that Muntfish is a developer and studio with a global team focused on an innovative game and is undeniably a pro-peace organization against the violence against people. We do not comment on politics or religion. Rest assured, we're a global team focused... Hold on, stop. We do not comment on politics? You're making a game that sole idea is USSR renewal and communism. Totally disagree with this. So, I think that exploring a fantasy element of if, like, the war was different or something like that, this is a massively, completely different thing. So, it's a video game. You are commenting on... You are commenting on past events that have happened over 50 years ago that have been studied, dissected, and there are very clear winners and losers in some cases, right? With Stalin, etc. So you, you are providing commentary on that by creating a fantasy universe. This is not applicable or equivalent to a real life situation. Commenting on real life ongoing politics is totally fucking different than making a video game that has a setting from 70 years ago that plays out differently. And also, again, go back and watch the trailer for Atomic Heart. I, I think, yes, obviously there is some, you know, there, there's some level of like futurism and like Soviet futurism with it, but this doesn't seem like a nice place to live. This place looks like a shithole.
Like, I mean, really, like, yeah, and and look at the whole thing. It, it's it's bad. So yeah, I, I think it's really weird that they're. So like they, they and and also you got to keep in mind that like if these people are still in Russia, they've got to worry about like retaliation to like their family, themselves, if they say something that could go against their government. You see what I'm saying? Like this is just this is so ridiculous, man. It's so unfair. And and even like e even then, I think that one thing that most people agree on, I would say like 80, 90 percent of people agree on, is that Russia were the um, they were the ones that effectively drew first blood with like uh, attacking Ukraine. They attacked Ukraine. Whether you think that's justified or not, they attacked Ukraine. So if you say that you're pro-peace, I think that in general implies that you're also pro, uh, uh, pro-Ukraine. Focused. Hold on. Stop. We do not comment on politics. Mm -hmm. You're making a game that sole idea is USSR renewal and communism. You classified your game as inspired by Bioshock and Prey, yet you go the no politics. Yeah, I, I think this is just, this is so absolutely massively disingenuous. Crazy disingenuous. To, to compare video game politics to real life politics where people are actually dying. Ticks in my video game route? This is one step away from the types of gamers who say, I don't like politics in my video game, and then immediately open up Fallout. What absolute nonsense. Whenever people say they don't like politics in video games, what they really mean is they don't like heavy-handed politics that are put in by people that are trying to spread their minority opinion that actually is not held by the general population, but they're trying to use this video game You've as a Trojan that. horse to don't push that up. opinion or that agenda. That's when that, that's what they're really saying, okay? It's not that they don't like politics, they don't like your politics. Get them the fuck out of my game. After that, their response to criticism regarding that tweet was simply to ban people, so it's a short end there. Now, let's look at the CEO of Montfish, whose name is Robert Pagvatuni. Okay. Except that it isn't. His actual name is Maxim Zatsevin. Max previously had a position of a cre- I also don't like this either. Um, and this is actually something that I, I was really not a fan of, uh, even they did this with like Donald Trump. I remember there was like the drump for whatever. I, I find it very weird that you're trying to like hold people accountable for like, what is it like? So, so his original name is like some sort of a, this is a criticism of him. This is so weird. Why is he faking his name? A lot of people do this. Like, tons of people do this. Like, as far as I know, like, there are plenty of people that come from, like, Asian countries and other countries, and it's like they have their Asian or their Korean or Chinese name, and then they have their American name. Yeah, actors do this. Plenty of people do it. This is crazy. And, and like, what, what I think also is, like, really weird about this is that it's... It's like activism that's actually uh that's like actually xenophobic it's like anti-xenophobia activism that is xenophobic in itself creative director slash top manager in mail Ru, which is now presented as vk the biggest social media platform in russia yeah it doesn't take much to figure out that a platform that is based in russia Directed, so by Russia, and is used only by Russians who have a strict pro-Russian stance. But it doesn't end there. Meet Yevgeny Sidov. Well, he lives there. Probably lives in Russia, so it makes sense. Over. As and it's also, it's not his choice. Again, like, the, none of these things are... If he wants to work in this industry, he, uh, he has I to adhere to these things. Just simply because he is a, uh, he, he's beholden to their government. The founder of Monfish, she's a former model and an owner of a modeling agency. Okay. She worked at New Media Stars where she was in charge of the computer graphics department. That company is now in charge of various pro-Russian mass media such as Zladru and Nidhu. 
I, I mean, Spotted isn't all media that's isn't all media in Russia effectively controlled by the government to an extent? Like, I I don't know this. Like, I'm not I'm not extremely familiar. But my understanding is that the answer is yes. Yeah. So it's like, so if you're in media, you're automatically against it. And also, keep in mind, she's not it at this company anymore. Yeah, she's not she's not there. According to the former employees of the company, all Montfish transactions and checks are on her behalf. Let's roll back the time a little bit. Okay. The game has been in development for quite a while, and by quite a while, I mean at least seven years, with its earliest trailers dating back to 2017. Okay. And the scene in 2017 and 2018 wasn't as smooth for them. Many people got interested and excited, but a lot of people were skeptical, the reason being a shady system of pre-orders. Let we me paint you win this. The There's barely any videos, probably fake, there's no gameplay shown. Well, I, I mean like, okay, so, so they had pre-orders early, but it's clearly not a scam because the game is coming out. Right? I mean, the, the game is coming Spotted out in like a week. Enemy heavy. Reason being a shady system of pre orders. Let me paint Ten days, you a yeah, picture. There you An unknown company posts a small teaser trailer of some <laughs> generic assets and a description to cause hype was all of the effort to guide you to their pre order page, where you would be met with a $60 base game, $90 pre order for gold edition, and $100 for premium edition. Okay. Mind you, you see these price tags? And there's exactly two minutes of badly made teaser trailer footage with no gameplay to serve as the video game's representation and marketing. What did not help was the fact I can see how somebody can criticize this, and this is absolutely fair to criticize. I think he's totally right with this, is it's ridiculous to ask people to pre-order a game based on We're two minutes of footage. But I want to, I don't, I, I don't find this, this is not intrinsic to Atomic Heart. This is something that is a problem in the entire gaming industry as a whole. So it doesn't mean that Atomic Heart isn't bad for doing this. But don't make a video about how bad Atomic Heart is and then use industry-wide practices as a reason for why Atomic Heart specifically is bad. That the game was being developed by a studio that no one has ever heard from before, being mm -hmm. just born and publishing Atomic Heart as their first game, which means that they have no background and no past games that would justify the pre-order prices. However, the breaking point. But you could easily make an argument that nothing justifies a pre-order price because you're still buying what you haven't paid for, right? And and like so this this is a subjective value analysis or a value judgment. And you can also use this exact same logic like with, with Ashes of Creation. I think Ashes of Creation is like a perfect one to one with this. Like Steven and Intrepid don't have a lot of experience making a game. And how could you not use this exact same logic? And people do. For many people was that the game didn't even have a release date, or even yeah. a release year at the time, which meant that you're investing up to a hundred dollars for something that might not come out ever, practically losing your money. You know what else? Again, this is ridiculous. I think it. I think he's right with this criticism. However, this is nothing that is unique to Atomic Heart. Uh, it's the same with Ashes of Creation. It's the same with. Uh, like many of these other like early starter games, Ashes is like the first one that comes to mind that I can think of. Uh, Star Citizen is another one. Uh, I I'm sure there's a, like Tar no Tarkov. I think Tarkov is out now. Yeah, Tarkov has been out. The day $60 before, yeah. for the same price as the base game, Elden Ring. Doubts started to rise as many people called this out to be a fake footage from a video game that doesn't exist, made by a shadow company with no records, just to scam people out of their pre-order money. Well, why? Are, well, I mean, I think this is like such a bad argument to use in this video because the the game is coming out. So, like, all of these all of these arguments have proved themselves wrong by just b by time. Like, all of these go into the garbage the moment that the game is actually being released. Because, like, so the criticism of it not being a real game, the game's coming out in 10 days. Like, what the fuck? So that's clearly not what's happening. It's just, it, I, I can't believe this. 
I, I'm not even halfway done. I'll, I'll be right back. I gotta take a piss. I'm an engineer, I'll repair you! now belongs to the NC. They have to port the game to their platform. I really dislike the um, <clears throat> trying to like expose the guy that his parent he was born in Russia and his parents gave him a Russian name. What am I saying? Man, this guy's named Adolf. <laughs> when was the last time that happened, huh? Yeah. Hey, what the fuck? Six infiltrator in the area. And it's been like that for a long time until they drop more failures and promo material and so on and so forth. But the initial fashion fell in the last. I'll stop now, repairs. I don't how is that an argument that the game is bad? Or not to buy the game? The initial impression of the game was bad, so before they released other footage. Like what the fuck? Like I, this soon makes what? That's talk. Okay. If you were to buy one, spend $60, where would these $60 go? That is a good question. To answer it, let's look at what kind of company signed up to be the investors and publishers for a top part. Okay. Basically, to be the ones who can take a large part in the top part's revenue. The investors of the studio are... Chinese, Visual Tencent, and here. Russian, GEM Capital, and Dot. Got a visual on Mag Rider? So, what Does Tencent own any of Bungie? I don't know. No, I'm actually not sure. That's Got a Mag Rider in the area. Spotted a hostile medic! Spotted uh, a hostile medic! Engineer, I'll repair you! Enemy medic in the area! I can repair that! Frag, help! Okay. Enemy um, infiltrator spotted! Bungie yeah, gets a hundred million dollar investment from gaming company NetEase. Oh. 
consent needs no instruction, being infamous for its licensing technique that hunger over a new stand. So let's start with the Gene Entertainment, which okay. moved from Russia to Hungary in 2022 in order to avoid cost and continue and, and to be ahead of the PR constant illegally visit the Ukrainian Crimea, which is temporarily occupied by Russia, and repeatedly spoke in support of the policies and politics of the Russian Federation. But the most interesting sponsor... I see, very good. So where's the citation on that? I'm an engineer, I'll repair you. Yeah, that sounds really good. Oh, okay, so so a, a, a person who works in PR for one of the companies that invested in the company that made Atomic Heart said something positive about Russia, okay? All right, so where is it? And illegally visited, like, I don't care if he went to Crimea or not. ID well, what, well, why is this my concern? What, did he kill people the there? Did he burn down a building? Did he, you know, plastic, like, write Russia number one, like, on the side of the buildings? Like, what is this? There's GEM Capital. I GEM Capital is a Russian fund. Lightning spot. Right. Previously worked at Gazprom subsidiary Gaz and Reloading. The studio raised investments. I did enemy lighting. Once where yes, Anatoly good. met and became friends with oligarchs who got rich from oil and gas activities, and now have the opportunity to invest a large sums of money in various projects. Okay, so the argument here is that um, oil and gas is bad, and because he is being invested in by somebody who is invested into oil and gas, it makes them bad by proxy. Okay, let's continue. Namely, the export of gas and oil is one of the main categories Hostile, of light assault of the Russian light budget. Assault. Enemy I wonder assault. if this guy talked area. about the World Cup. From which I wonder if you watched military it. industry. I don't know. And if you know basic economics and finances, you know that all investments must be returned, including interest. Moreover, a Twitter user found Pelly's connection to other Russian states. Not necessarily true. Uh, sometimes people buy equity in a company with money, and then the equity uh, gains value. So it's like it, it's returned, but they're not gaining a dollar value back. Uh, that's more like a loan, but okay. State institutions, such as the sanctioned, systematically important bank, but the bet. The game attracted as many as four publishers: Xbox, Four Divinity, uh -huh. Focus Entertainment, and V Key Play. Let's focus on Viki Play. It is known to be a gaming division of the former Mayor Root, the same Mayor Root who had Maxime Batsepin as their former top manager. And again, it is closely connected with the Russian government and participates in many initiatives of the Kremlin. If Atomic Heart is being developed with money that originated from sanctioned... I, I, I want to say that they would participate in many initiatives with the Kremlin whether they want to or not. What do you, th you think you're gonna go tell Vladimir Putin? Oh, nah, bro, like, I, you know what? I, this, this one's just not for me. Nah, I don't think I would say that. Russian businesses such as VK and Mail.ru yeah. and banks which are systematically important to Russian government such as Vete mm -hmm. Profits from the game could be directed to help the Russian government in its invasion. Thus, by buying Atomic Heart, you would pay money to companies that support the aggressive policies and military actions of the Russian Federation. Lastly, I think that this is a this is this is a this is true, but I think that it's also it's contextualized too strongly around Atomic Heart. So, for example, I think you can make the same argument about the World Cup being in Qatar. Absolutely. I think you can make the same argument about any company that's owned by China because all companies that are in China are owned by the government. I think you can also make this argument for uh, companies in America. You've I'm going to be this. honest. I think Don't that the up. amount of strings that we try to pull in South American countries, uh, Middle Eastern countries, we've done this over 20 years. I, uh, I, I, th I think it's, it's, it's ridiculous. We're wasting, I, or like they're wasting my money. I, I'm paying taxes to fucking deal with this. I don't want to pay teachers more. Stop doing this bullshit. So yes, I, I think the U.S. has, and, and also by the way, any U.S. company, what does a U.S. company do? They pay money to the government via taxes. And then what do taxes do? They pay for the military. About 50% of taxes pay for the military. I think it's something like that. It's a lot. So if you want to make this logic, if you want to make this argument, that's fine. But like, nobody's going to respect a completely inconsistent argument.
And again, I think that if, if he feels like if he feels like it is not morally adhering to his standards and the way he wants to live his life to play this game, and he doesn't want to play this game because he feels like it's wrong, I totally support him. He should, you should have the right to do and also not to do whatever you want to do. But the difference is that whenever you make a video and you tell every other person out there, you need to do what I do, you've got to have some fucking evidence. And you've also got to have evidence that is not immediately fucking disprovable. You can't have a YouTube channel that's, that has Destiny 2 videos on it and then criticize this company because it was invested in by Tencent, which is a Chinese company, on a categorical basis that it is Chinese. And then you have videos again of Destiny that took a hundred million dollar investment from a Chinese company, NetEase. This is, come on, like, what are you talking about? This is so fucking surface level, I'm losing my mind. Oh! The Call of Duty, yes! You can't expect anybody to respect this. Because you don't. There were some incredible terms of service and privacy policies spotted over at Muntfish. The website now leads to a 404, but okay. someone managed to capture these screenshots. Basically, it says that your information can and will be transferred to the Russian government, and particularly the Federal Security Service. And mm -hmm. not just your username, but your full name, physical address, email, phone number, IP address, and so on. Well, isn't that, I, I, I don't think that's a very strong argument either because like, what does it say in their current terms of service? So if they moved away from Russia and disconnected from Russia, why are we still holding them accountable for a policy that was made under Russia? Like TikTok, yeah. gotta say their mobilization methods are getting kind of dire finally let's talk about the game okay. itself all right this bit. is good set in the ussr in 1955 atomic heart story begins as the soviet scientist dmitry sechenov mm -hmm. creates an ai assisted legion of robots that take control of all manual labor leaving humans free to live a life of yeah, this is gonna happen next pleasure. year the main protagonist is a mentally unstable officer on special assignments, nicknamed P3, who is sent by this Professor Sachinov to keep the situation at Facility 3826 from deteriorating. The game is set in a utopian universe where the USSR had won. I don't think anybody is looking at this as it being utopian. And I think that if you want to look at, like, so, okay, the game is being sold by the developers as Bioshock in Russia? Is Bioshock utopian? F it's the opposite. And also, even if it is, it's not real. It didn't happen. And had a major boost in technical progress. The gameplay is centered around fighting through hordes of various types of enemies, ranging from playing robots to cosmic horror type obscurities. Mm -hmm. The game is built to the brim with its USSR themed keepsakes and memorabilia, from drinking condensed milk straight out of the can to actual flags and symbols of the USSR. I would have never guessed that a video game that's built around the USSR would have things from the USSR in it. How could how could anyone have come to such a? Oh my God! This guy cracked the code. Holy fuck! He sees it. This kind of approach to the showcase of USSR and communism walks a thin line between using it for world building and praising it. And there are many solid reasons to And that's why it's interesting. Because it wouldn't be interesting if it was only presenting a one-dimensional communism USSR bad viewpoint. It's boring. Like it's the same reason why Thanos is a great villain. Uh, in uh, in fucking like it in, in Infinity War, it's because he's not entirely wrong. It's because he's not without his own values and his own like positive things about him. It's like I remember I watched Killmonger in uh, I think that's the best recent example for me uh, in fucking uh, Black Panther, bro. He wasn't entirely wrong. Killmonger had a lot of really good points. It wouldn't have been interesting if Killmonger was I'm just an like, I'll I hate you. this place, I'm going to kill everybody. You got your bonus check. 
It's boring. Ozymandias, yes, that's another great example. Ozymandias, incredible fucking villain. Holy shit, he was so good. And he was right, and it worked. That's what makes a good villain. So he's, up, he's upset because the story has depth. I believe that this line has been crossed completely right into promoting and idealizing the USSR regime. Wait, wait, hold up. It the right into any solid reasons Eyes between on PS using side. it for world building and praising it. And there are many solid reasons to ID believe that this line has been crossed completely. There are many reasons. There are many solid reasons to believe Spotted that this line has been crossed. The right into promoting and. Okay, this line has been crossed into promoting the Soviet Enemy lifestyle. Name one. Where are they? Enemy in the I air. don't see them. Where are the reasons? Idealizing the USSR regime and using it. Bro, if I did, if I used this argumentation in high school and I went to a fucking like working class like high school where like fucking a lot of people didn't pass people were doing drugs in school bro i would have fucking failed i would have i would have oh the tool of ussr and russian military propaganda and there have been events to prove this Take a look at this event that people behind VK organized. It was a special showcase of Atomic Heart for the Russian press, which was stylized in the game's Soviet aesthetics, and they did. Enemy air transport spotted! Oh my god. Eyes on an enemy vehicle. Did not go stingy on the decorations, huh? Lightning the spot. event included enemy it. air transport spotted. <laughs> Eyes on an enemy Of course air not. It's because VK you you said they were invested in this, so they held a big investor meeting enemy or like a, a press spotted. meeting, and they put they put a lot of money into it because they want their investment to do well. Dinner in a large banquet hall where you could see Soviet-style slogans like "Glory to the Soviet engineers" or. Comrade joined the society of the future. One of the users in Twitter replies said, Imagine if developers of Wolfenstein had a Nazi themed party. And I would say that's well said. Uh, let me think of a good parallel to that. Um, Nazi themed party. Let's see. I, I think this is probably one of the stronger arguments I've seen in the video. I'm trying to think like how that would make sense. Yeah, I think this is a, a stronger argument. Um. So it's a game, what's wrong with the party? I think that a lot of people would perceive... <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. Like, if, if people had a Nazi party, a lot of people would be upset about this. Definitely. For sure. Yeah, okay, I alright. If you want to use that logic, I'm sure that I can probably come up with other examples, and I think that you can use, uh, you know, different uh, US propaganda and different video games that were advertised through that propaganda. Uh, especially around like, you know, Desert Storm era, stuff like that. Now, I think you can easily use this as a parallel, but Nazis are like, Nazis is like, that, that's like the worst one, right? So I'm trying to think of other examples that would like kind of make sense. I think that's probably the first one, the, the first one I can come up with. Wolfenstein made fake Nazi propaganda movies. Oh, Wolfenstein made fake Nazi propaganda movies. Is that true? Yes? Well then. Sergei Mohov, a Remedy lead gameplay designer, rightfully accused Monfish of being nostalgic about the Soviet regime, or even glorifying it. Ironically, the party's date coincided with the adoption of the new anti-LGBT law in Russia, which brings us right back to USSR, I guess. A major point- Wait, wait, what? Party state coincided with the regime, or even glorifying it. Ironically, the party state coincided with the adoption of the new anti LGBT law in Russia, which brings us right back to USSR. So, because the date was on the same day that a law was made, it means that the people 
that went to the party also support the law? I, this is, I mean, I don't have a tinfoil hat here, guys, so we're just going to have to pretend like I do. I guess. A major point that I want to bring attention to, that there have been numerous well-made games with a Soviet or USSR or low-lie Eastern Europe theme or setting. Let's bring some examples. Okay. In Singularity, the Soviet Union discovered a source of Element 99 and has special powers that could warp time itself, trying to bring it to the glory days through time travel. If you're in the mood for video games that came out 15 years ago but already played through all the world-famous ones, you should give it a try. Okay. In Half-Life 2, the setting of City 17 has not been directly said to be in a specific part of the world, but it's clear that it's been influenced by Eastern Europe's architecture and style. Okay. Bulgarian art director Viktor Antonov, the person behind City 17 and Dunwall of Dishonored, mentions his childhood hometown of Sofia as main inspiration for City 17. Other places like Belgrade were also used as reference. In this Coelysium, the streets of Martinez show what it would be like to live through the failure of an attempted communist revolution. You can still see artillery damage and bullet holes in the walls, notes the lead writer Helen Hinpere. There's this feeling of being stuck in the past. Okay. People of Soviet and post-Soviet era are very familiar with this feeling, especially those who live in countries like Moldova or Estonia, which is the homeland of the game's lead designer, Robert Kurvitz. The game takes its own spin of what being a communist entails through its own political vision quest and partially the main quest. I won't spoil it, and I do suggest you try it out yourself. Coming back to Atomic Heart, another- Okay, so like- I, I feel like there's, like, a part of this that's missing is, like, the comparison and what makes Atomic Heart different than these other games. Like, you, you can't just be like, oh, well, these are other games that are good, but why are they good and how are they different? The point that rubs me the wrong way is the recent marketing strategy. Okay. It seems like their marketing team realized that their previous shady strategy has failed to bring in pre-orders, so they went with another plan to make typical capital G gamers buy their game, which is of course none other than through sexualization and objectification of women. So far I have avoided... But didn't you say that the uh, one of the people that's making the game is actually a model herself? So wouldn't that kind of make sense that there's some sort of objectification if one of the people that's like involved at like the highest level is, is a model and, and doing this kind of stuff? Yeah, I, I... This is just so odd. So there's... yeah, now they're sexy robots. Wait, huh? No, he said earlier, um, here, we're at 1553. Let me see if I can go back and find this. Uh, where he goes through the people that were involved. Fuck, was it really early on? Yeah, let me see if I can find the, the part where he was talking about the people that were there. It's 1553, right? In the comp and is an installment of Singapore, so... Uh, no, where the fuck is it? Seven, the Russian fish. Who is the devs? Okay, the so word from the comp and office and happy to spot. What is there? Sorry about this. Month fish. Folk, I to show our rocket. This is of Okay, here we go. Figure out that it was only by meat her model, where she was in charge owner of a modeling as the f but it doesn't end there. Meet Yevgenia Sidova as the founder of Muntfish. She's a So she's the founder of the- it, it, she's not- this isn't some like random PR employee. She's the founder of the company. Her model and an owner of a modeling agency. She worked at New Media Star- So she owned a modeling agency, and she used to be a model herself, but somehow, like, w w they're just- they're- they're sexualizing and also, like, as if this is something that's fundamentally bad. Jetification mentality at the, at the moment, yeah. 
Is she still part of the border company? I, I'm not sure. But the way it's the way that it's presented in this video is that she is. Through sexualization and objectification of women. So far I have avoided showing these characters on screen, but I am talking about the couple of female USSR styled robots that they suddenly added in recent trailers and thumbnails to No, but what's wrong with that? So you can't market via sexuality? Get the attention of the lusty Like I, again, bro, like this is crazy. Neckbeards. Just by searching Atomic Heart on YouTube and scrolling far down, it's impossible to miss the countless trailers, thumbnails, edits, and shorts about these characters, with some videos claiming that they'll buy the game just for these two, which also brings in the ongoing issue of sexualized- Well, of course they have. Of course they will. That's why they put them in the game. They put them in the game to be thirst trap content to get, to get coomers to buy the game. Like, you're not a genius for being able to figure this out, it's common sense. ...seeing lesbians in media. Not only is marketing like this... What is this again? ...some videos claiming that they'll buy the game just for these two, which also brings in the ongoing issue of sexualizing lesbians in media. Not How do you know they're lesbians? Like, how do you, like, I mean, number one, the robots. Number two, they could be bisexual. This is just, it, it, this, this is insane. Not only is marketing like this highly unethical and immoral, as we've been fighting with objectifying and sexualizing women, especially in media and advertisements, especially less. Okay, that's fine. Like, and, and this this is a viewpoint that he is allowed to have. If, if he thinks it is immoral to market through sexuality, uh, categorically, I think that's totally fucking fine. Like, it's okay. I mean, I don't really see a lot of, I mean, like, he's not really doing any sexual videos. It seems like it's not really an issue. So, yeah, maybe, maybe that's something that he believes. That's, that's his moral system. Totally fucking fine. But again, the reason why nobody's going to go along with this is because th th every other game does this too. So why is this something that's unique to Atomic Heart? Like, this is not an argument to not buy Atomic Heart. This is an argument about video games categorically. But it's also actually... Yeah, and it's a robot. Like, it's, it's, it's a robot, guys. It's not real. It, it's not real. It's, and it's not even like a, oh, this is a 900-year-old dragon girl that looks like she's 12. No, bro, it's a robot. She doesn't have a face. It's obvious. There's no innuendo here at all. It's a fucking robot. Legal. For example, in Ukraine, our parliament adopted a law abetting sexism in advertising, which became active in January 2020. On advertising, um, what's this here? Discriminatory advertising containing usage of statement or images that are discriminatory based on race, uh, place of agency. Discriminatory advertising on the basis of gender, advertising containing statements and or images regarding the physical, social, uh, and, and superiority of one gender over the other. Uh, or and or regarding the stereotyping of role of men and women, promoting or humiliating derogatory attitudes, degrades uh, human dignity based on gender, demonstrates gender-based violence, uses an image of the human body uh, exclusively as a sexual object for the purpose of attracting the consumer's attention uh, and or references. Sexual relations do not relate to the advertised product. So uses an image of the human body. Well, it's not the human body, so that's all already gone exclusively as a sexual object it's not being used exclusively like it's just this is again it, he, he didn't even he didn't even read his own page they're literally dancing yes again yeah he didn't even read his own content Two elected officials have banned showing the superiority of one gender over another in physical, intellectual, or social aspect, showing stereotypical roles of men and women, gender-based violence, as well as the human body as a sexual object. In simpler terms, it's just gross and- And also, like, I don't agree with that. I think that you should be able to advertise via sexuality. It should be totally fine, especially if something is 18 plus. Why is that a bad thing? Yeah, what is this? 
cheap, and what pains me to say is that it seems to be working. These YouTube shorts and edits are getting millions of views, quickly becoming favorite among the fans, who quickly started to spread rumors about a possible six hour sex scene in the video game. I'm just, I'll be right back. I gotta, I, I, I gotta get a drink. I just, this is just... Alright, I'm back. I would say this is driving me to drink, but it's only a Dr. Pepper. Ah. Uh. Okay. Give me one second. Number one, it wouldn't be six hours. I've watched how many late night commercials that say if it's over four hours, you need to talk to a doctor. Number two, uh, it's nobody could last that long anyway. Why are we even talking about this? This is such a ridiculous argument. It's probably a joke in the first place. It's so wrong on so many levels. In conclusion, what can you do to support Ukraine it's on not. this matter? If you did purchase a pre-order of Atomic Heart, the first and the best step would be to cancel it, request a refund, and send that exact amount of money to Ukrainian charities. The second part is admirable, but not necessary. Simply cancelling the pre-order is fine, and let's be honest, in this day and age, you shouldn't be buying pre-orders anyway. If Totally fine. If you want to go a step further, you can do the following. You can go to the game's shop page, Click on the complaint flag, select the item breach of the law, contains materials that violate the laws of your country, and write a similar Violation uh, of the law in Ukraine on condemnation of the communist and nationalist socialist party regimes and prohibition of propaganda of their symbols. Sample the red star in the game logo, praising the Soviet in game. Okay. Or text or something on that matter. In case you didn't know, Ukraine has implemented a law that restricts and bans all Soviet and USSR propaganda, symbols and memorabilia. We had quite enough of that. If you simply want to stand aside and be an innocent bystander, there is a way as well. When the game comes out in, on February 21st, simply play a different game. It's that easy. Don't wishlist Atomic Heart, don't buy it and go play something like Disco Elysium instead. You should wish they stalk it too, though. Some users could make a claim that they could simply pirate it and pay no money to the Russian devs and still enjoy the game. To that I can't say anything, at that point it depends only on your moral compass. If you feel comfortable playing the game after watching this video till the end, I've done all in my power and I can't control your wallet, so I can't stop you from pirating this game, it's just up to your morals and ideals at this point. In the description, I'll be sending the links to all of the articles used for this video. Whether to check it is up to you. I want to give a shout out to Dirty Wall for helping a lot with the research part for this video, including tweets and articles. And this is why you shouldn't buy Atomic Heart. Misleading marketing, shady pre-orders, USSR glorification and direct financial gain to Russia's military. I know that this is not a usual video I would make, but I had to spread awareness regarding this delicate matter. I know that this video might attract some enlightened centrist contrarians who will buy the game either way, and those I shall rightfully ignore. Have a good day, y'all. Yeah, I think these, uh... <sighs> I think he had maybe one good argument in the entire video. 
And I think the one like good argument that he had actually wasn't even his argument. It was a YouTube comment that if they had done the same uh, event for like Wolfenstein for Nazi stuff, then it would have been perceived as being worse, which is true. Uh, other than that, I feel like every single argument that he used was just horrible. They were very bad arguments. They're paper thin. Uh, they're either arguments about gaming as a whole and it's being directed at Atomic Heart individually. Nazis are not the USSR as well. That's true. But USSR is very bad. Let, let's let's be, be honest about that. Wolfenstein can still do it, but without the Nazi symbol. I mean, uh, the USSR killed more people than Nazis said. Yeah, USSR is also bad. I mean, like, guys, I, I don't want to have, like, the, the fucking, the oppression Olympics here, okay? USSR bad, Nazis bad, let's move on. Point is that I think a lot of these arguments are very paper thin. I think whenever you want to ask somebody to, uh, you know, not buy a game, you, you can't, again, be playing games and making content for games that are being invested in by by Chinese companies as well. Uh, I think also like being able to explore a fantasy universe and do things like this. We don't really even know what the the template of the game is, like the story of the game. So to just assume that it's all about glorifying Russia, I think is kind of ridiculous. Also, I don't think that it's unfair. I think it's unfair for people to say that the Russian people can't be patriotic about their own country, even in the context of the Ukraine stuff. The truth is many of them did not vote for that. They didn't want that. They probably don't care about it anyway. They might even know people in Ukraine. It's not even it, it's not their problem. This is something this is a decision made by the government. They, they didn't vote on this. So to, to categorize all of the people that live in Russia or that have Russian names as being like for what the Russian government is doing, I think is just so massively unfair. And it reminded me of like whenever, uh, what do you call it? Careful, wait, are people upset about this? Yeah, I'll take one. Well, no, no, wait, wait, was, was there anything that I said there that was wrong? Okay, yeah, no, okay, I, I didn't think so. Right, and, and so, yeah, a anyway, so yes, I, I think it's a, it's a ridiculous, a ridiculous thing to say. And, and it reminds me a little bit, this is not really the exact same, but it's like, remember during COVID, whenever people were blaming like any Asian person because they just thought they were all Chinese for COVID and like how much of the anti-Asian violence increased then? It's ridiculous. It, it was ridiculous then, it's ridiculous now. And any time that you blame an individual person, like how many of you guys, I use this example, right? It's like, how many of you guys are from the Middle East and you have a Middle Eastern accent and you talk in voice chat and some fucking idiot tries to put you on the stand and hold you accountable for something that your government did whenever you're 17. Fuck that. That's, that's ridiculous. It's not fair. It's not okay. It's stupid. And the worst part about it is the fact that the people that do this shit think that they're doing a good thing. That is the worst fucking part. Because it'd be one thing if they could just be pieces of shit and then say, ha ha, look at me, I'm such a piece of shit. But no, they have to do this and then pretend like they're on the right side. It's awful. Or having your accent be called racist. Yes, exactly. Yeah, be called racist. Like somebody is fucking with a southern accent. It's like, when did you fuck your cousin? Oh, sorry, I meant your sister. Right? That sucks. Or then somebody with an American accent, you have some, you know, like European that like that's trying to talk shit about you there too. Yeah. It's so crazy. Uh, yeah, what was this? Uh, we Americans are fuck if you're accountable in any way? Yeah, I mean, damn. We trained my southern accent out as a kid because of that shit. I think there were two good arguments. Some companies are connected to the game are really bad, like Gazprom and VK. The other one are Russian propaganda, USSR. Uh, just because they're Russian, they're talking again about restoring it. Just because in Russia, they're talking about, again about restoring USSR. Yeah, but like, were they talking about that whenever they were starting to make this game, right? Is, is, is this game like uh, coinciding with that or, or is that just a coincidence, right? Because of course people are going to talk about stuff like that. Uh, also, uh, the two bad companies, the VK thing, I don't really think that's a very strong argument either because it would go to, I mean, I, th I think anybody could, could logically assume that all of the large companies in Russia operate as an oligarchy. And there is like massive intermingling between the government and uh, the corporations in the same way that there is in China, maybe to like uh, one or two degrees less. So it's like, you, I, I wouldn't even really blame them.
Uh, and then also, oh, the person that was invested into it, uh, or sorry, the person that worked at VK doesn't work there anymore. This game shows how the USS fails, uh, though, no? Clearly, everything's falling apart. Yeah, I think so. They're already trying to disassociate with Russia. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And let's read a few comments here. So on Force Limit comments, is they're being somewhat botted by more faceless newly made accounts that anyone could realistically keep up with? I'm reading them, and I appreciate people take the time to, uh, to keep their thoughts and feedback. I hope you can understand. So this guy's limiting comments. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't... I, the thing is, like, so he's deleting comments that are disagreeing with him. Uh, I was under the impression the idolization we see in the game is a part of the end game propaganda. Clearly something went wrong considering there's an apocalypse. Perhaps the game story will reveal more. I guess we'll find out. I won't lie. You played me like a damn fiddle during the opening. Can't believe I tried to Google and Wikipedia yet. Yeah, the opening for this video was really good. Uh, great videos. Anything learned boy game uh, video game boycotts. Uh, they simply just never work. That's true. Whole game has been such a weird thing to follow. First, I don't give a fuck about any of this, but this does seem shady, so thank you for putting light on. I also got the people that don't like uh, politics play Fallout thing. I don't like politics, but I like Fallout and Skyrim. Depends on how it's implemented. Yeah, of course. So I, I think that obviously what happened is that this person got a lot of negative, uh, negative comments and negative feedback. And then they limited tweets or limited uh, comments so that nobody was able to make negative comments. Because you can set it for videos where... It only uh, publishes comments after you approve them. 115k dislikes. Uh, I don't have that bot. What is the uh, what? What's the bot? Yeah, can you? I'll, I'll link you guys a video. It has a hundred and six. People are saying it has 116k dislikes. So one uh, 46 versus 116k. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, fuck, man. Mm. I've got 116k. Got it. He's deleting comments. No, he's not deleting them. Uh, he set he set it to where no comments are published onto the video until they're reviewed. So like he is deleting them, but he's not deleting them. Uh, he he's curating them. One ironic thing to remove comments or video criticizing Russian propaganda. Well, again, and, and this is what's kind of like really disappointing about this is that, like, I don't want to be on the side that's like criticizing, you know, or like defending Russia, like Russian shit. Like I, and like, this is again, I'm not a big geopolitical guy. Okay. I care about issues in America and issues in America only, but from my very limited understanding and my personal viewpoint is that I think that Russia are the aggressors in the Ukraine, in the Ukraine conflict. I, I think that they are wrong. It, everything that I've read shows that they're wrong. Now, I don't, and again, I don't know everything about this, but I, I totally support Ukraine. I raised money for Ukraine in a way this guy definitely fucking didn't. I donated my own fucking money for it. And so I, I don't want anybody telling me that, like, this is not something that I care about. It absolutely is. So it, it's, I, I, I hate being in this position, but th these arguments and, and th this is just, this is fucking ridiculous. NATO did this? Yeah, but I don't, I don't run NATO. I didn't do NATO. But yeah, th like, I, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have anything to do with that. I didn't tell them to do this. USA did? I, what do you, you want me to make excuses? I, I'm not going to make an excuse for the USA. Yeah, what do you mean? Uh, I'll read a couple of things and uh, then I want to move on. Um, and, and again, like, uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I would say I like, kind of like, I don't, I don't want like any hate for like this, this guy. Like, I, I think his arguments are bad. I think the video sucks, but like, I don't hate the guy. I, I just think if you want to, if you want to come out and, and you want to tell everybody what they should do, you have to have an airtight argument. And this is just not that. It, it's just a, a horrible argument. What's this here? Girlfriend's you saw on my city. She said Ukraine started a war for eight years while she was in school and kept a, uh, and they kept going uh, in basements to get away from Ukraine rockets. Yeah, and I mean like that could be true, and I could be getting like uh, false information, etc. Again, 
I don't and, and like I don't want you to convince me of who's right or who's wrong. I'm just talking about my personal opinion that I do not I do not promote this opinion. I don't talk about this I, because I'm not educated in it. I don't know everything that's going on. And the only time that I did talk about it was whenever I was looking at at civilians being bombed. Anybody can look at that and say it's bad. It doesn't matter if it's Russia bombing them or the U.S. bombing them. That's fucking bad. So and, and we raised money for a charity that was helping people that were displaced by the war. You know, we're not raising money for a charity that's buying guns to shoot Russians. That's not what we did. Yeah, it's just crazy. And at the end of the day, developers just want to finish the game they started making seven years ago. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. And uh, propaganda comes from all sides. Yeah, that's why I, and again, like I'm, you know, I, I live in America. I understand American politics and American problems the best. And that's what I try to stick to because that's where I live. That's the country I live in. That's the language I speak. That's the culture I'm part of. And I don't do that because I don't care about Ukraine or Russia. I do it because I respect them enough to let them solve their own problems and not go into their world politics, their their problems and be like, oh, here, let me as an outsider who's never even been there, who doesn't even speak your fucking language, tell you how you should live your life. That's what I think. I have a question, mate. Yeah, I'm not going to answer too much. Russian propaganda is killing people, especially their own. Propaganda is bad. I'll say it. You guys too emotionally charged to apply much logic to anything regarded to Russia and Ukraine. Uh, that can be that, that can be the case. I mean, sure. Mm. The game might portray USSR as a baddie. Even if they don't, I don't think that's a bad thing entirely. Uh, I think you can have fantasy games that operate in different ways. I don't think that's that's bad at all. Well, the subject requires too much information reviewed. Yeah, I, I don't know about a lot of that stuff. Uh, is me, it seems like these game publisher developers are using bad publicity to advertise their game nowadays. Hogwarts Legacy and now this coincidence? No, I, I just think it, I think it's I actually do think it's coincidence. Um, conversation is uh, somewhat offensive to me. Uh, I being Russian, love USA, Ukraine, China, and all the countries. Of course, and ain't everybody uh, in Russia thinks like me, but I'm not the only one. My point is, in, uh, number one, people in all countries kind of represent the government opinion. It's totally okay just look in a mirror. People in Russia, not all of them, not even half. However, uh, a lot of folks in Russia think differently. A lot of people... Remember when I told you guys about how like stereotypes are dehumanizing? And about how, why it's bad to like stereotype people and say like, oh, well, because this group of people has this stereotype or this trend, that means every single person in this group thinks that way. Because like you take a person who's an individual and they have their own thoughts, their own feelings, their own emotions, goals, aspirations, you know, fears, you know, things that they like, etc. And, and you take them and you say, no, you're not. And you say, you are this statistic, which is, it's, it's fundamentally dehumanizing. So yeah, the straw man argument. Yes, guy's strongest argument was being emotionally manipulated uh, by inferring that you're a bad childish person if you don't listen to him and buy the game. Yeah, I thought that was a pretty bad argument too. Uh, that basically, like, if if you don't agree with him, you're a gamer with a capital G, as if that's a bad thing. Like, why is it a bad thing to be a gamer? Like, your whole channel is built around video games. Like why, why is this bad? Like what? What do you 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 can't be a gamer now? Like, what the fuck? You guys are mentally you think only Russia and China have propaganda, bro. Everywhere has propaganda. I I don't want to even get into that. Like the uh, the American military has made movies. I, I watched one of them with my dad. It was actually pretty good. Read the first comment. Um, oh, I already did. Oh, oh, yeah, I'll read this one here. Okay, here we go. Last one, then we're going to start playing Hogwarts. I completely understand this is coming from a place of passion and anger at the injustice of the war in Ukraine, but comparing COD players and the people who enthusiastically listen to Joe Rogan podcasts comes across as short-sighted or foolish whenever we've got important info like this to share with many people that will listen. 
I gave it the benefit of the doubt and listened to the end regardless, but I think a lot of people would have immediately thumbed down on the spot and moved on, not because they not because they don't care about politics or horrific war, but because they don't watch videos like this to be baselessly insulted while trying to become more informed. True. Uh, my point, it might be wise to take the ego out of the equation entirely here. The message is the only really thing that matters and what people need to hear. You'll likely reach a lot more people by avoiding being critical of their choices, conscious or otherwise, within the first few moments of your dialogue. Alienating the people that you're appealing to is ultimately self-defeating and could even trigger the Streisand effect, uh, as it has with a huge amount of people with Hogwarts. Thank you for informative breakdown regardless. It was well presented and I'm glad I stuck with it. Hope it reaches more people in time to have an effect. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, the, the, are there any lies there? So totally true and completely real. Base comment. Yeah. What a takedown. Yeah. Mr. Granian, I think this guy just wants everything in Russia to fail, which is understandable. Yeah. I mean, I can see why a lot of people in Ukraine feel that way. <clears throat> I mean, like, how, how could you not if you feel like, you know, this is like a country that's ruining your life? We had that same thing happen in the 2000s with like the Middle East. My phone is spying on me. My phone is listening to my conversations. Like, this is creepy. I was like, man, I really want some beer. And won't you know it, I got an ad for a beer company. Not one, but you guessed it, two. Has this ever happened to you? Have you had a conversation about something in particular with a friend in front of your phone, only for you to get a bunch of ads afterwards trying to get you to buy it? Wow, just by like just saying Just by it? talking, like I'm being spied on, just by saying it. Marriage proposals, proposals, how to propose. They're listening to your phone as you're having a conversation. You think? Yes. People ask about it on Google and Reddit threads. Companies have had to deny it. Uh, yes or no, does Facebook use audio obtained from mobile devices to enrich personal information about its users? No. Well, Senator, let, let, me, be, let me be clear on this. I mean, so you're, you're talking about this um, conspiracy theory that gets passed around that we listen to what's going on on your microphone and use that for ads. Right. We don't do that. And before us conspiracy theorists get carried away by this, experts think there's something else going on. Are people's friends listening to them? You know, the actual question is, 
Does it have to? <laughs> when we make a purchase, whether that's in person or online, they're collecting information. But there are also lots of other ways that they're collecting information. So what's the truth? I wanted to run a test to answer the question, is my phone listening to me? Hey there, Rob. Thanks for joining me. Great to be here. So Rob, it's a million dollar question. Everyone seems to have an opinion on it. Is my phone listening to me? Your phone is listening for you rather than to you. So it's listening for, hey Google, or hey Siri. So it's listening for keywords, not necessarily listening to your conversation. Now, is there a way I can test this? If I say vitamin C enough times, am I gonna see a vitamin C ad? Or is there more things that I need to do? No, I think we're actually doing it right now. So your phone's on the table, the phone has at various times been on and unlocked and waiting for an input. If vitamin C was going to be showing up in your any of your services based on this conversation, you would see it over the next two or three days. What's your, what's your prediction for this experiment that we're going to do? So my prediction is, as long as you don't get tempted to find out about things associated with vitamin C, you won't see ads come up. If, if I'm wrong, you'll start to see vitamin C ads in your social media feed, when you look on YouTube, uh, and when you surf the web almost immediately, but certainly within the next day or so. Okay, great. See you in a couple of days. Thanks very much. Okay, so I've just had a chat to Rob and I'm going to do the first check of my social media. So I'm just going to open up Instagram now and have a look at my stories. I've just had an ad for donating blood, but nothing on vitamin C yet. I've got an ad for your cat on your socks. So your cat on your socks, even though I don't have any pets. And I'm just gonna go onto TikTok now to see if TikTok is showing me anything different. I just found an ad for an airline, so it thinks I've got some disposable income to go on a holiday. Still looking through TikTok to see anything else. I've got a makeup ad, but no vitamin C. While we wait, let's look at some of the ways companies are known to track you. They're all involved in targeted advertising, trying to match ads to you based on your online activities. One key way they do this is through cookies. You'll often get notified about them when you're on a website. The site usually asks you to read its cookie policy, which, let's face it, who's ever done that, and says it'll be used to enhance your experience. But what are cookies? A first party cookie is sent from a website to your browser. It's stored by the site and collects data. You often need essential cookies for the site to work properly. So for example, the login information, uh, your preferences, your setting, your customized setting and so on. When cookies come from a place other than the site the user chooses to visit, they're called third party cookies. Imagine you're looking for a new t-shirt. You might have a look around, you might look at one brand, but end up buying another instead. Even if you were to close your browser and end the session, that data is still on your phone or your computer following you from site to site. The brand you didn't buy might still serve you up ads or emails, but it looks like third-party cookies are on their way out. Apple scrapped them in Safari, Firefox started blocking them in 2019, and Google's Chrome browser is promising to phase them out from 2024. Browser fingerprinting takes a look at your device and your other settings to create a profile about you. It takes things like the browser you're using, time zone, operating system and other facts to create a unique ID. It's so accurate, it's been shown to identify users with 90 to 99% accuracy. And then there's your location. Advertisers have been known to use your location to find out things about you. Just how insightful 
um, transaction data and location data put together. If you think about all the places you go and all the things you buy and how much you can learn about somebody um, from doing that, um, and then also match that with things like device identifiers that are co-located. Advertisers take into account whether you're connected to the same IP address as someone else. You were had lunch with your mum and she was telling you about uh, something that she bought or something that she was interested in. Um, you might think, oh, they listened to my conversation, but actually what happened was your mum had looked up something on her phone or had purchased something on her phone and they can say your phone was next to her phone for an hour in the same place. So they know that you've been together. So it seems like they're listening, but that actually there's a whole kind of range of technologies that link up together. They can also find out your movements through something called Bluetooth beacons. Bluetooth beacon technology has been getting a lot of buzz lately, but the area that is at the center of the heat map is their usage in retail stores. If you have your Bluetooth switched on while you're walking through an area with these Bluetooth beacons, they'll be able to identify the different devices that are in that space and where they go. Companies can also make assumptions about you based on the activities of your friends on social media. Uh, so if your friend likes something and just view the posts about it or like it or share it, uh, it will be appeared in your feed as well, without you know any interest from you, right? But uh, because the AI algorithms can actually build uh, a network, uh, your network, based on uh, the interaction that you have with people. Something I've noticed when I've been doing this story is that I've been paying extra attention to ads that I probably would have totally ignored in the past. Which got me thinking, is there something else at play here? Have you ever heard of the Bida Meinhof phenomenon? So if you are thinking about buying a new car and you've, been, you've got a few different brands that you've been looking at, you, when you look around, you'll tend to find all of a sudden it seems like those cars are everywhere. It's also known as the frequency illusion and frequency bias. The effect is actually that it looks like things are happening more often than they were before. Simply what's, what's really happening is that you're noticing it. There's also another part to this phenomenon, and that's confirmation bias. So we like to be right. And what tends to happen is that once we think, oh, this is happening more often, that's consistent with our belief, we tend to see information that's consistent with that. And we don't take much notice of information that's not consistent with that belief. I mean, tech aside, could psychology explain this as well? I don't know to what degree tech is actually using that information, but certainly I would think there could be a contribution uh, from, from this working memory driven attentional capture effect and then confirmation bias. And finally, the results. On day one of this experiment, about an hour after I started it, I got an ad for a chemist. On day three, I got an ad for multivitamins. And on day five, I got an ad for men's moisturizer with vitamin C. So what do we make of this? I, I'm afraid I, I'm going to stand by my position. It, it was listening for you, not listening to you. So broadly, you're in the demographic where those advertisements are likely to be fed in any case. Now, it's difficult though, because we did mention vitamin C a lot during uh, our first discussion. So. The one that's most interesting, I think, is actually the, the men's moisturiser with vitamin C. So, Chemist Warehouse, well, you're probably going to be advertised there. Turmeric supplements, perhaps that's related to your sports activities. Um, but the men's moisturiser specifically with vitamin C is the one that uh, just makes me slightly anxious about my assertive, no, it's only listening for you. So, are our phones listening to us? It's definitely possible, but most experts seem to think that they don't need to. Don't forget that companies have huge amounts of data about us, from where we go, who we speak to, and the things we buy. The real question seems to be, is all this convenience worth giving up all our privacy for?
right guys so probably you have the same problem wants to escape these lines but um, I found others I wanted to capture one is for you know uh, okay so how do you fix that well first of all you go to properties for each one of these individually and then you go to the XGI desktop duplication and as you guys can see now it worked and also uh, for the other screen you do the same thing you go and change it to the XGI desktop duplication so this is a problem I've seen uh, but how do you fix that well there is a quick solution for that and uh, in order for you to fix that you have to go to your desktop right click on it then go on um, uh, display settings I suppose yes it's focalizing yes all right and then you go to graphics settings and uh, as you can see it is still working and uh, wait I need to do something yeah okay so uh, okay as you can see we do have our OBS set on power saving okay now the screen that I'm recording is from the laptop and I want to keep that on power saving why is it like that I don't know but I suppose it has to do with uh, the graphics recording on that specific screen okay i mean amd radeon tm vega 8 graphics is by default on the laptop and uh, when i hit save it will record only my uh, laptop okay but if i change it to to high performance and then click on save and then when i minimize that and go and change that to display capture 2 it will still not work but this time as you can see it's a black screen in order for us to fix that we just have to restart the OBS and how are we going to do that well we just close the application and type OBS so that we can start it again and as you can see now I do have my